So which big fat Nazi of World War Two do you think grew up in this castle in Bavaria, Germany? There's some more pictures. The name of the castle is Weldenstein, another Steinzi of the Pharaonic stone builders. And of course, from the year 1000, when practically all European castles were built after the Pharaonic invasion of Europe, after the collapse of the Roman Empire, when the entire nobility of Europe had to leave Rome's Italy for France. Castle Weldenstein, the word Stein means stone, and Weld means field, meaning stones in the field. So this is the, um, it's, I could only find it in German, Castle Weldenstein. In German, it's Burg Weldenstein. And this is also in German, but I translated it for you. Or, oh, well, the Google Translator did it. I could have done it, but it's too much work. So remember this name here, Elisabeth von Epenstein. Yeah, like Epstein, right? And von, it means that they're from the nobility, like de in French. So this is the Burg Weldenstein, Castle Weldenstein. And I'll show you the translation. So here is the translation of that part I marked blue in the, um, the Weldenstein, um, about Weldenstein Castle. So I'll read the first part of it. You can read the rest yourself. After the death of her husband, the widow Elisabeth von Epenstein sold the castle in 1939 to Hermann Göring. So from 1939 onwards, it belonged to Hermann Göring. And here it says the self-proclaimed Reichsjägermeister regularly came to Weldenstein to hunt, etc. But he also grew up there, which I will show you now, which is even more important. So here's your big fat Nazi field marshal, Hermann Göring, or in German, Hermann Göring. Hermann, the not very German. Because Hermann, living in his castle, being raised in a castle, he was of Pharaoh's nobility. So let's say Hermann, the not very German. And here it says, here, i read it for you, here in blue. Ger Göring's godfather was Hermann Epenstein, a wealthy jaywalker physician and businessman his father had met in Africa. Epenstein provided the Göring family, who were surviving on Heinrich's pension, first with a family home in Berlin-Friedenau, and then a small castle called Weldenstein near Nuremberg. Oh, there you go, people. Castle Weldenstein, where Göring grew up. And Göring's mother became Epenstein's mistress around this time and remained so for some 15 odd years. Epenstein acquired the minor title of a Ritter Knight, the Knight von Epenstein, through servers and donations to the crown. 
So you see, people, this Nazis, you know, it's all the nobility. And this is because the Knights Templars, they come out of the nobility. As I've shown you in my film, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil. So I remember this name very well, Hermann Ebenstein. Oh, there he is. No, there's no picture. And um, very important, the Steinzies, the Pharaonic stone builders. Eh? Now, what is it with all that field stuff? Field marshal and castle stone in the fields. I told you that the concept of four is down at the pyramid where the grass grows and the sheep all are. So Weldenstein Castle is the, the stone is them and concept of three, just like the pyramid you see here. And the field is where the sheep all are grazing. Or they are the marshal, or field marshal. They are the marshal, concept of three. And the sheeple in the field, the concept of four. The field marshal. And this is a real picture of the pyramids in Egypt and a river Nile. So this is the stone. And here is the grass or the field, like field marshal. Marshal is this here, and this is the field where the sheep will graze. The Weldenstein Castle. So the Veld, the field, is here, and Weldenstein here, Stein is here. And they are the stone builders the Steinzies. And here is a more recent example of what I mean. Here's the stone and here's the field, Weldenstein. The castle stone in the fields, this is a stone in the fields. And it's it's all a reference to, to a pyramid, of course. And uh, because in the old days in Egypt, it was very fertile and very green or field marshal. Here's the field where the armies are gathered, Pharaoh's armies, and the marshal is in here, and he's looking down on his army, field marshal. And here, and then an example of the pyramid in Europe and the grass. I think this is in Scotland, where well, you can see that with the red hair. Eh? I'm sorry, I had to cut off the top of the pyramid because in what I'm telling you here the grass is more important than the pyramid <laughs> so you know again field marshal the marshal standing up there somewhere in a castle or in a pyramid because there are openings in it and looking down upon the army in the field and the word marshal marshal in itself, it carries the, uh, the, the pharaonic demotic word mer for pyramid, mer shall, marshal. So, you know, a marshal is a guy standing in the pyramid and looking down at his army in the field. Mer shall, marshal. Or the castle stone in the fields. Everything is from Pharaoh, people. Your whole existence is. This symbol here is not at all a symbol of the Jaywalker people, but it is a symbol of the Jaywalker nobility, and it is called the Seal of Solomon. King Solomon, that is, a Pharaoh. And the Weldenstein Castle belonged to the Jaywalker nobility of the Ritter von Epenstein nobility bloodline, whom you can see here together with Hermann the Not 
very German. And Ritter von Epenstein is where the name Epstein derives from, as in Jeffrey Epstein, Lord Child's Predator, for Pharaoh's worldwide nobility, providing the concept of three with fresh flesh of the concept of four. Fresh from the field, so to say. And did you recognize the colors of this building? A couple of years ago, when this all happened, I recognized it immediately. But I didn't have a place to make a video about it, as I am a homeless and the Frenchies are not very helpful. And also look at these two symbols. These two symbols here, it's probably a snake, although it looks like an owl. But the two symbols are on a mask with the same colors as this here, as in Pharaoh Epstein. There it is. Here are the exact colors, or well, almost exact, of um, because gold turns into white in the sun. That's why on Pharaoh's um, Epstein's temple on his island, on his Jeffrey Epstein Island, has the same configuration as this here. And these on his head are probably the two object, objects on the temple. And there it is, the two objects as on Pharaoh's temple on the Jeffrey Epstein Island uh, by the name of uh, Saint James Island, I think it was. But anyway, this island, it belonged to the Knights Templars and the Hospitallers, as I've already told you in another film years ago. And this is not a coincidence, because they're all pharaohs who do these things. It's pharaohs worldwide nobility with all the princes and kings who are raping children and all these horrendous things. And here it is again, King Tut's configuration on Jeffrey's pharaonic temple with the two objects, just as on the mask of Tutankhamun. And white gold becomes white in the sun. So that's why this here is white. I guess it would have become a bit expensive as well if it all would be gold. Anyway, the gold is here. This is King Tut's configuration. I must emphasize again that the jaywalkers also have a nobility, just like any other people in the world, who are not the same as the normal jaywalker tribes, just as well as an average Englishman, German or Frenchman is far from being an aristocrat. All peoples in the world have a nobility, including these ones here, whose name I'm not allowed to pronounce, otherwise YouTube will take my video down. So we all know these ones here, of course. This this is their their coat of arms, the Rothschild. Here we can see the uh, Isis horns <clears throat> and the uh, the unicorn, the lion. This is the uh, of course. Uh, this is the Order of the Garter, the unicorn together with the lion. It's the this is the new the old world the new world order, and this is the vertical old world order. And all together, 
they need the um, the order of the garter for that so let's have a look you see there's Austrian uh, nobility of the jaywalkers and I found this very interesting here so just look at the names yeah of course we got von Oppenheim well we know these ones hey Oppenheimer the ones who um, uh, you know here you got this thing with the banking and, and all this you know it's it's not normal jaywalkers no the banks are by the Knights Templars, and of course it's the nobility, you know, the way in it, just like Oppenheim here. And of course it's related to the uh, nuclear bomb. And I'd, I'd like you yourself to have a look at all these names, because I probably, you know, miss some things here. Here you got Ritter von Pravi, Ritter, a knight, yeah. This old jaywalker nobility. Hey, yeah, Goldberg, you know. So now you know where this name, you know, where it comes from. And um, I found this one very interesting. Zemlinski here. Well, where, what bell does the name Zemlinski ring, hey? Hey, come on, you hear him every day in the media, hey? President Zelensky of the Ukraine, there you go. Look at the guy, what he looks like, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's him, same bloodline. Look at that. Let's have a look, there he is. That's the same bloodline. We should compare the ears, I'm not gonna do it now, but just compare the ears, that that's what, you know. And look, he has a signet ring here on his little, this little pinky finger there, you know. That's um, that's what the uh, the nobility usually do. He's got quite round ears, like. So you tell me if Zelinsky uh, if he has the same. Yeah. Okay, right back here, Zelinsky or Zemlinsky. Look, another coat of arms of the. Uh, Jay Walker Nobility, here we got the concept of three, these things here. There's the Red Cross of the, um, well, of the, of the Knights Templars. And here the double, the double-headed eagle, or actually it's a falcon. Because this is the Old World's Order, the vertical rule, and here to the right is the New World's Order, uh, horizontal rule. They they put that a lot in their in their in their crests. So you have a look at the names if you can find something because um, I don't think I'll uh, you know I, I I don't want to go through it you know every name. Look here's the list of the British Jaywalker nobility. So you can look at the names yeah. And read it yourself here. A lot of marquises, marquesses here. Uh, Burnham, Bastard. Uh, here we got a Rothschild. They're barons, yeah? It's a baron, people. It's not the normal Jaywalker tribe. Just like Hermann, Hermann, they're not very German, you know, it's all, it's nobility in castles. And like uh, Hermann von Epenstein, Jaywalker nobility. They are the ones behind the genocide on the Jaywalkers, not the German people. They couldn't do anything, the German people, and they didn't even know what was going on until the end of the war, like, right? And uh, here's Atherton, Feltman. Oh, there was this guy with the funny eye, eh? The, the comic, uh, Marty Feltman. Yeah, probably of the same lineage. There's no, there's no picture, too bad. 
here Goldsmith, Godson, Watford, Jacob, Jakobovic, all nobility, Levi, the Levites, yeah, Baron Menohin. This is real pharaonic nobility, just as the European nobility. Serota, there's the word Sar in it, you know, for king or queen. It's a baroness. Not English nobility, Jaywalker nobility in England. Brimpton, Dulwich, Winston, uh, Tukaman, and uh, a baronet Rothschild. Yeah, uh, it's you know it's these ones. Okay, Stern, very well known Stern, nobility. Uh, these are the ones who give a bad name to the jaywalkers, and all people say, "Oh, look, it's a jaywalker again. They did it, eh?" Yeah, but it's going deeper, people. It's getting, it's all going deeper. You know, if we don't know this, you know, we got the wrong enemy. You know. So here, Belgian Silva Isolis. I heard that before somewhere. Marquis de Montfort. Oh, there was. A, oh, this is. There was a very bad one. There was Simon de Montfort. He did the one, the the the, the genocide and the um, the crusade on the uh, Albigensians or the uh, the Cathars in the south of France. Uh, he murdered them all. And Montfort, it means the strong mountain. Where's the strong mountain? In Switzerland, yeah, they they are the strong mountains. Nobody talks about it. And here, this is very interesting here. Lopez Suazo of the Jay Walker nobility, important role in banking. So, uh, whose uh, family, whose nobility was confirmed, and uh, and here one of the leading shareholders of the West India Company, one of the most ardent supporters of the House of Orange. <coughs> You know, that's probably the richest family in the world. Uh, um, yeah, well, that's interesting. And uh, this is uh, the French. There's nothing here in France. Interesting. Uh, various Jaywalker families with foreign noble titles live in France, but there were no Jaywalker families formally ennobled by a French monarch. That's very interesting. And um, well, we know we all know what happened uh, to the French king. He lost his head. Whereas all the other nobilities of Europe, they became the a um, constitutional monarchy. They took the, the constitution of the Knights Templars, and they make made an alliance with the Knights Templars. I already explained that to you. Here's Germany, Fürstenberg, Auerbach, Gerut, Gerold, Oppenheim, Rothschild, of course, another one. And um, I saw something else that was interesting, but I don't see it now. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Here, Italian nobility, uh, the Baron Lombroso, and said to be from Egyptian Jew um, Jay Walker origin. I almost said it. I almost lost my video. Eh? They almost censored it. Ah, yeah. So, well, they all are from Egyptian origin. There's only one who... Um, uh, who, who, who says he is, you know, the rest, they don't, they don't say it, or it just, you know, it just got out here somewhere, but they're all pharaohs. And of course they came to Europe because um, when the jaywalkers uh, did a runner, 
and uh, they um, the um, the Jay Walker nobility in the Middle East, you know, they uh, they didn't have any more um, more slaves to work for them. So first, the Jay Walkers did a runner. They, they they always run, and they ran from the um, the Roman Empire, just as they ran away from Egypt. And uh, this is this is the reason they are not um, Pharaoh God's beloved people anymore, because Pharaoh God is became angry with them, invested a lot of energy and uh, educating them. You know the tribe, the tribesmen. And uh, then they did a runner. Here's another one, Gunzburg. This it's interesting. Uh, Joseph Mengele, the um, the angel of death of Auschwitz. He was from a town called uh, Gunzburg or something like that. So he's he's also one of them, of course, of course. You know, it's a it's it's a billionaire family. You know, the um, the Mengele family making agricultural machines you know Herman de St Herman de Stern another another Herman de not very German and here's some more Jay Walker nobility's crests or well, we can scrutinize them eh? uh, what do I punching a snake here again the uh, the unicorn Well, it's very important to know of the existence of the Jay Walker nobility. So at least, you know, uh, people know that a Jay Walker is not just a Jay Walker. Right, and these are the these are called the Erev Rav. This is the Erev Rav. J Walker nobility. So here again is the Zemlinsky guy, the uh, von Zemlinsky, Alexander von L Zemlinsky, with his signet ring of the Jay Walker nobility. And I'll let's do a comparison with uh, uh, Vladimir, President Vladimir Zelensky. This is Zemlinsky. Let's go to Zel Zelensky. I tell you, it's all the same bloodline. J. Walker nobility, pure pharaohs, Erevrav. And here is Pharaoh Zelensky. Remember the Zelensky hammer, the pharaonic hammer? Well, the face looks the same. And look at the ears. The ears, well, you're not, you know, to do a, a real comparison, you have to look at the ears. And I tell you, the ears are very much the same. I show you the ears of Zemlinsky once more. There we go. And here again, Alexander von Zemlinsky. And look at the look at the ears. They're exactly the same as uh, uh, Pharaoh Zelensky of the Ukraine. And also the eyes. The eyes are very much the same. Just just think away the rest. You know, well the rest is similar as well. But look at the eyes. It's the same. Same bloodline. Zemlinsky, Zelinsky, you know, and there's also a Zelinsky uh, pharaonic uh, bloodline, um, which I'm going to show you now. So here is the royal Zelensky bloodline, uh, the house of Zelensky, Per Zelensky in, um, in Demotic pharaonic. And it is a Polish princely family, you see, and here it says, the um the surname Zelensky was first found in the province of Krakow. Yeah. Now where's Krakow? Yeah, it's next to the Ukraine. Okay. So here we see the coat of arms. It has a bull, and the bull is Apis. It's the um 
It stands for the protection of uh, ancient Egypt. Here we got seven lines. Uh, there's a square in it here. And here are circles. So it does say square and compass in the, uh, in the crown. A lot of red and white for the Knights Templars because the Knights Templars were in the region of Krakow in um, eastern Poland next to western Ukraine. And here's their palace. You know, the Zelensky family, the Zelensky bloodline, they have a palace, okay? So I have no doubt this is the origin of, um, of Glad Vlad. We also have Mad Vlad, that's Vladimir Putin, that's Mad Vlad. And we got Glad Vlad, you know, the comic, that's the other Vladimir. That's uh, Vladimir Zelensky, and uh, this is his origin, I have no doubt. And this is from Poland, but you know, I mean, the nobility doesn't know any borders, everything belongs to them. And um, the Zelensky family here, and I read for you, the F Zelensky Family Foundation has been recognized multiple times by the British monarchy for the humanitarian contribution, contributions, oh bloody hell, particularly in regards to the Princess Diana My Memorial Fund. And um, so they got... They're in contact with the royals in England, you know, they're all connected. So here are some notable Zelenskys, a composer and a writer and a lawyer, of course, a lawyer, of course, yeah. And some more here, the Zelensky noble family, Count Zelensky Countess Z Zelenska. And here, Count, oh, this is the same guy everywhere. No, it's all over the same guy. And um, Countess Zara uh, Z Zelenska. And um, so this is the royal bloodline of um, President Zelensky. I have no doubt. As everything is a lie, we have to find the things ourselves. And I tell you, you will not. And I repeat, not. You will not become the president of a country if you don't belong to the nobility and if on top of that if you're not a freemason to um to be part of the horizontal rule the uh, republic so you must be both because a nobleman he can an aristocrat he can also be part of the uh, still be a royalist and be of the vertical rule so he has to be a Freemason as well to make it clear for all of them that he's part of the horizontal rule of the Republic. And the Republic is being ruled by the, uh, by the worldwide uh, Freemasonry. So he must be a, um, he must be a nobleman. He must be an aristocrat. So the Zelensky palace, it doesn't exist here, but I'm sure you can find uh, some pictures of it uh, yourself. Yeah. Pharaoh Zelensky of the Pharaonic nobility, eh? With the Pharaonic hammer. Okay, here one more time. Uh, Zelensky, uh, Pharaoh Zelensky with the Pharaonic hammer during the inauguration in uh, uh, Kiev when he became the president. Uh, here, Pharaoh, exactly the same thing. It even has this little dot on it, like here on top of it and here as well you see all these pharaohs they all have this and this is so important for them and uh, the seal of the ukraine here with the three things here and here the sar symbol as well as here and this is the reed the pharaonic reed i've shown that in my film about zelensky hammer on my channel homeland security well it's the same as the fleur de lis it's the same origin eh? And it's tied together here as the SAR symbol should be tied together, like here. That's why it's like thinner here and here as well. And it has the same colors, yellow and blue, the same as Fleur de Lis. So here's the Zelensky hammer of Pharaoh Zelensky of the Zelensky nobility bloodline. And he, he looks very much and has the same ears 
as uh, Alexander, the composer, the nobility composer of the J. Walker nobility, Alexander von Zemlinsky. It's a whole bloodline and they're everywhere and they come out of Pharaoh, you know. Look at the hammer, it's the same hammer. It's the same fleur de lis, it's all the same, the same colors. Eh? Wakey, wakey, people. Look, here's Krakow, you can see it behind here, like here, Krakow, where the uh, Zelensky uh, princely family, where they're from, with the palace and all that, and related to the, uh, the royal house of uh, Windsor. And that's why we see today, you know, the cooperation between uh, uh, Windsor or England and, um, and the Ukraine um in relation to the ukraine war you know because this family here the princely family of zelensky where without any doubt the uh, president zelensky is um from you know so here's poland all this here here's warsaw here's the ukraine here we got uh, um, kiev here here's lviv well, Lviv is just next to the, you know, it's Krakow is next to, to the Ukraine, you know. So uh, there's these nobility, they, they, they don't have, know any borders anyway, you know, they don't know any nations. It belongs all to them, you know, and if, if a royal family here in Poland, they want to come over here, you know, it's absolutely no problem, you know. They just uh, contact um, the royal bloodlines here and they got all the papers, become a president and uh, whatever. So Zelensky here and Zelensky um, here. It's a royal bloodline, a princely family, Zelensky. In fact, this J. Walker nobility is being called the Erev Rav due to the censorship of this terrible dictatorship we're in i'm obliged to repeat every time that i'm forced to use the word jaywalker which is not at all derogatory nor do i have anything against the jaywalkers we the white race are terribly suffering under this J. Walker censorship, and also by the censorship, of course, of Pharaoh's nobility, and due to the fact that the normal J. Walker people wrongfully blame the Europeans for this terrible Nazi Templar genocide on their people during World War II in which they are terribly wrong, being entirely fixated with the idea that the white race Europeans are behind it all. If the jaywalkers were even near such a thing as being God's beloved people, then this God thing would have told them the truth and that the Erev Rav, Pharaoh's nobility, are behind this terrible Nazi genocide on their people. Just see how the Jaywalker Erev Rav, Ritter von Eppenstein, from Eppenstein, here on the left side, also called Hermann. Here you can see the two Hermans, the two Hermans. So the Ritter von Epenstein, just have a look at this, you know, how he had the top Nazi, Hermann Göring, grow up in their Erev Rav castle. And of course, the young Hermann Göring got indoctrinated with the ideas of the Erev Rav J. Walker nobility to perpetrate this so called final solution on their disobedient runaway slaves on the run for 2000 years. 
So here to the left, you can see the Jay Walker nobility, Hermann von Epenstein, who was the godfather of Hermann von Göring, living in a castle. So he grew up here, Hermann, Hermann, the not very German, he grew up in his castle. It's all the same bloodline, people. And this is the J. Walker nobility here to the left. It's all Pharaoh's nobility, whether they're, it's English nobility, French nobility, or German nobility, Russian nobility, or J. Walker nobility. It's all Pharaonic. And this one ended up in his bloodline in Germany because they found themselves with no more slaves. The runaway jaywalker slaves, they all hit the road, running away from the Romans, uh, which I must admit was a good idea by them, a very good idea. But, uh, well, they got them anyway in the end. And um, so this is the seal of Solomon. It has actually nothing to do with the normal jaywalker tribes, absolutely nothing. It's a symbol of a jaywalker king pharaoh's nobility so they were both living at the weldenstein castle the castle of the um the uh, the, the stone in the fields and of course the young herman here the not the herman they're not very german he got educated by the Erevraf, which is a Hebrew word for the enemy within, and um, which is, of course, the, um, the J. Walker nobility of Pharaoh. And um, he got educated, this one, this fat Nazi, he got educated with the ideas of the J. Walker nobility, by their own J. Walker nobility in a castle. Okay, so stop blaming the Europeans for all this. So we got here two times, Hermann, they're not very German. So why blame the Germans for it all, eh? So we got here, Hermann, or I say it in German, Hermann von Elpenstein. And here, Hermann von Göring. Two times Hermann, they're not very German. Therefore, Ritter Hermann von Göring, the German uh, field marshal, in his adult life married the Swedish Baroness Karin von Kansov, because Pharaoh's nobility only intermingles with Pharaoh's nobility. And it was Ritter von Göring's friend, the Swedish Count Erik von Rosen, who in his castle near Stockholm introduced the future Erevrav couple to each other. So here you can read it Karin Göring, uh, Karin Axelina Hulda Göring. The Countess von Kanzow was the Swedish first wife of Hermann, the not very German, the Nazi, the big fat Nazi who already grew up in the castle of Weldenstein by the Erevrav J. Walker nobility. So here you can see the Countess here. There she is. Well, she already looks very sick. She uh, she died, you know, a couple of years later. And um, so here it says Karin met Hermann Göring here at uh, Rockelstadt Castle. There you go. And again, another castles. They got so many castles, these Nazis. It's incredible. This is where they organized. This is, in fact, where uh, Hermann Göring, where he saw the uh, the swastika for the first place in this castle, Rockelstadt Castle. 
I think it was on the um, at the fireplace or above the fireplace. So while she was uh, visiting her sister Mary, four years younger than she, he was working in Sweden as a commercial pilot for the short-lived airline Svensk Luftraffic and was at the castle uh, because he had flown Count Eric von Rosen and the roses are red, yeah, it stands for the old world's order, the red house of Pharaoh, the Pertasser, her sister's Mary's husband there. Göring fell in love with Karen. Well, I guess he sort of more fell in love with the castle, didn't he now, eh? How can a man in like that fall in love at all? And uh, this is Karin Hall. The, he built another sort of a castle in, in, in Germany for her. Well, you can read it yourself. And um, So it's, it's all about castles and nobility, pharaohs, nobility, the aristocracy who are behind the genocide on the jaywalkers and the entire World War II, what I've been telling you. Um, and their base is, of course, uh, Octagon in the Alps. Now, I ask you, what do ordinary Germans have to do with all this? Castles, nobility, Nazism, uh, organizing genocides and wars. What do ordinary Germans, like this fatty here, have to do with all this, right? Nothing and nothing at all. The Germans are absolutely well portrayed by Sergeant Schultz here of Hogan's Heroes saying, I hear nothing, I see nothing, and I know nothing. They were just too dumb to understand what the nobility was lying to them. The people didn't understand anything and they still don't understand anything. I repeat Sergeant Schultz, I hear nothing, I see nothing and I know nothing. Just a bunch of sleeple or sheeple. And next to Hermann Göring's Weldenstein Castle on the German side as well. The Nazis used many castles like the notorious Wevelsburg Castle of the SS for Nazi Templars occult rituals to the public presented as honorable Germanic SS cult in reality, though, being very anti-Germanic. And very much related to this was Jörg Lanz von Liebenfels, who was one of the founding fathers of World War II Nazis, and who was a modern-day Knights Templar. And he was a genuine Cistercian monk with a white robe and all that, which you can see here, out of whom the Knights Templars rose, like aristocrats hiding in Cistercian monasteries, being the only monastic order legally having swords and by merely painting a red Templar's cross on their tunic, came forward out of their monastic hideouts. And the guy was also a baron, of course. It's all nobility, and Knights Templar needs to be of the nobility. So here you can see his white robe of the Cistercian order, who are the... Um, the uh, monastic order where the Knights Templars were hiding in. And here's his name, Jörg Lanz von Liebenfels. It means it's the nobility. And he's a baron. He claimed to be the son of Baron Johannes Lanz de Liebenfels. 
and began to call himself Baron Adolf Georg Jörg Lanz von Liebenfels, a PhD. I think he was, yeah, Austria. He was born in uh, Vienna or near Vienna. As a young boy, he was fascinated by the myth of the Holy Grail. Liebenfels became a monk in the Cistercian Order in 1893, assuming the name Georg and living in the Heiligenkreuz, that means the Holy Cross, monastery. In 1894, he claimed to have become enlightened and finding the tombstone of a Knights Templar and began developing his th theories of blue blonde Arianism and lower races. In 1899, he left the Cistercian Order, of course, to go on in the um, in the Knights Templars uh, stuff. And he died in 1954, because it starts with Cistercian Order, and it ends with Knights Templars, and after that come the Nazis. And this here is the uh, their their logo, the Order of the New Templars. And we all see the um, fleur de lis. It should be the other way around, yellow on a blue underground, as uh, King Louis the Fourteenth had it. And the swastika was um, um, Hermann von Göring, the Reichsfield Marshal, that what what he found in that Swedish castle of Erik von Rosen. Yeah, it says the flag of the Order of the New Templars. This is what he, uh, Jörg von Liebenfels, what he uh, what he founded. And here it says about the secret society Order of the New Templars. Uh, it was a proto-fascist secret society in Germany founded by Lanz in 1900. It was modeled, well, uh, the goal was to bring right-wing extremists together and mobilize them in favor of Nazism in Germany. Members used code names uh, so that betrayal was difficult. And uh, well, there's a lot more. You can read it yourself. I just wanted to show you this here. Um, after Austria was annexed by Nazi Germany in 1938, Liebenfels hoped for Hitler's patronage, but Hitler banned him from publishing his writings and copies of Ostara, that was his magazine, and were removed from circulation. After the war, Liebenfels accused Hitler of having not only stolen but corrupted his idea, and also of being of an inferior racial stock. So I guess it's true. It's not only a rumor, but this guy was, really was a baron. I have no doubts about that. And, um, and we can see the same thing here. That the Nazis, they used the uh, nationalists like this guy here. And just like what happened with Putin and Dugin. Already the daughter got murdered, Dugina, a couple of months back. Uh, what Hitler did in uh, with the in the Night of the Long Knives, what Stalin did using the Russian nationalists called the Bolshevists, and first they use them, and then they dump them. So uh, I think the fact that Liebenfels he he could live on through until 1954 is that he was part of the nobility, and uh, well, he didn't need to get killed and. Uh, he was lucky, I guess, you know, very lucky. And uh, he could, might have, just as well, might have been killed uh, during the Night of the Long Knives as the Nazis, they used the, nat the German nationalists, the national, national socialists, and um, in order to kill them afterwards and replace them. Infiltrate, kill and replace. And um, this is what they always do, because nationalism is a very big danger for Pharaoh, who want a, you know, a ein Reich, ein Volk, ein Führer, you know, one mixed race over the whole earth. And it's too dangerous for them, you know, people who say, well, okay, this is my country, I, I want my country back, you know, we're going to work for it. Uh, Pharaoh, the Pharaonic nobility, they don't like that at all. 
So they use them. It's a very dangerous uh, movement for Pharaoh and its nobility. So they infiltrate them, use them, and then kill them and replace them. And this is what we see the whole time. And so he was one of the first, Jörg Lanz from Liebenfels. And it's, again, it's all in castles, Knights Templars, Cistercians. I mean, I don't see any Germans in it, you know. Um, oh, you dumb slaves. It's so much easier to be asleep and follow the masses than to be awake and think for yourself independently. And on the other side of the war, in England, also a lot of castles, where the war and genocide of the Europeans was planned, just as it was the case in Germany and elsewhere. So here you can see Blenheim, Palace, you can read it here. That was where Churchill was born, the warmonger who helped genociding and putting South African children in concentration camps during the Boer Wars. He was there with Lord Kitchener and some other lords. So his father was a duke and he was born in a real palace here. Here you can see Mr. Churchill, here this pharaonic flag in the three pharaonic colours, red, white and blue. And this is Churchill, his castle, his palace. And in England, just as on the other side, uh, Hermann von Göring and his Weldenstein castle, the Europeans were pushed into the war by Pharaoh's nobility as always. And here, once more, the magnificent palace of Blenheim, which is a German name, by the way. Heim, it means home. Blenheim. And where, as a child, he was running around and, you know, pretending to be a field marshal, just as on the other side, Hermann von Göring in his parcel by the Jay Walker nobility the Weldenstein Castle. Both of these guys that were running around and pretending to be a, um, a Templar or something like, um, like Hermann Göring, Hermann von Göring, he was doing people. It's the nobility. And I can show you many, many, many more examples of all these warmongers but then this film will take too long again, as usual. So, well, I'll show you some other things now. Here, we've got the SOE for Special Operations Executive. Now, well, we hear the words Special Operations a lot nowadays, don't we now? Well, no wonder, because it's still the same ones ruling over us and pushing us in all these wars. And they're all in castles like the Zelensky nobility and the English nobility like Churchill and the rest. And um, Hermann von Göring in their castles. And, of course, the Black Prince, Mr. Putin, with his special operation. And here we got the Special Operations Executive. I mean, it's all Tavistock stuff anyway, the, um, where the Ukraine war has been um, sort of invented, you know, in the, uh, for the social engineering. So I'll read for you. The Special Operations Executive, the SOE, was a secret British World War II organization. It was officially formed on July 20. 22nd, 1940, on the Minister of Economic Warfare, Warfare, Hugh Dalton, from the amalgamation of three existing secret organizations. Its purpose was to conduct a spionage, sabotage, and reconnaissance in occupied Europe, and later on also in occupied Southeast Asia. 
against the Axis powers and to aid local resistance uh, movements. So this is the um, from 1940 on the um, it says it's a, it's a type of special forces which you would call nowadays special forces. And uh, I'll let you see some more of it. So special operations executive. Then nowadays we talk about they talk about a special operation. It's getting boring, guys. You know, it's it's always the same words. Why? <laughs> it's because it's the same people. It's a um, they are gangsters, you know, all over the world. It's one big family, the Per A, the big house of Pharaoh. And here is a list of SOE establishments. And there's something interesting about this, what I want to show you. Here are the active stations, station 53A, Grandon Hall, Pounden House. And here station six, station seven D, the Frith. And just just have a look. Look, that's a castle, isn't it? The Frith. They were mostly in castles, people. So you can have a look at it here. Yeah. The training schools. STS, it means uh, station station school and or secret station look at how many there are there are really many look at this that's a lot for a special operation right mr putin would be jealous on this look look what a special operation here mr putin look at this they even talk about the Spartan factory station unknown. Uh, you know, Mr. Putin, he gets his orders also from Tavistock. He gets his orders from Switzerland. He gets his orders from Pharaoh's nobility. And the SOE, safe houses or training centers, were nearly all in castles, like Walhall Castle, full of Templar crosses for STS 39, Station 39, Special Training School, number 39. So, and here it says, part of the building and estate was used by the special operations executive and designated as special training school 39 it moved to warhol in 1943 and was used as a finishing school for agents under the command of major john hackett and then major walt galley as part of the soe and political warfare executive Wow, this is really a PSYOP, political warfare executive. You see, they think it over, all these things, you know, it's all political. Agents were trained in various potential roles, including parachuting, radio operation, and weapons handling, along with propaganda and preparation for deployment in German-occupied Europe, particularly in France, Netherlands, and Belgium. It also provided a home for Joseph P. Kennedy Sr., the United States ambassador. So nowadays, they, um, there are Ukrainian uh, people in there being trained. Many of the Ukrainians, they, they are being trained in a sort of special operations executive in England in these castles i suppose yeah so nowadays the russians they have their special operations and the ukrainian agents they're, they're being trained and special forces 
They're going being trained by a special operations executive. Nothing has changed, people. Yeah. And look, this is Wall Hall Castle. Why, why in a castle? You know? Because they're being trained by the nobility. You see all these Templars crosses here. There's one here. There's one here. There's one here. There's one here. It's all Templar stuff anyway. Wall Hall Castle. Yeah, it says Wall Hall in Hertfordshire. Of course, this Wall Hall doesn't make any sense for a name except as a reference to Valhalla as in killing the Europeans into the Valhalla afterlife. The Valhalla murders, so to speak. Now, how come all these wars get organized in castles? To whom belong the castles? Yes, they belong to the nobility. So, who organizes all these wars? Yes, the nobility. <laughs> it's as simple as that. My grandfather, who was an officer in the British Naval Intelligence, worked with the OSSOE and helped founding 30 AU, and he died in 1942. Here, another SOE Special Operations Executive location, the STS-43 Special Training School 43 in the Audley End House Castle, where also English kings and queens resided, like for instance Henry VIII. So here we can see the castle. It's really a big castle. Looks a bit like Blenheim Castle by uh, Churchill's Blenheim Castle. Yeah. I mean, a castle is supposed to be expensive and, you know, something special. So why they use it for a war effort? Eh? Well, there's a reason for everything. So um here it says henry the henry the eighth oh, oh I didn't want to do that uh, henry the eighth there he is nice stockings eh? Uh, it looks like the order of the guards on his left leg eh? well, of course 1509 then the Order of the Garter got just founded, like in the 15th century. I think he even has it on his neck, something. And, uh, well, this is what we wanted to know. Audley End was offered to the government during the Dunkirk evacuation, but the offer was declined due to its lack of facilities. It was requisitioned in March 1941 and used as a camp by a small number of units before being turned over to the Special Operations Executive. There we go. The SOE used the house as a general. Well, our house is nice, eh? <laughs> they call it a house. Look at, look at this. Is, is that a house? <laughs> it's a castle. It's not a house. It's a house because a house in the nobility is a lineage, like the house of Windsor, the house of Orange, the house of Bourbon. It's the Per, which means the house in Demotic. That's what they mean with the house. This is a house next to it, which is quite big as well, you know. This is not a house, it's a castle. 
A house is a royal lineage. So where were we? Uh, here, the SOE, well, they use it as a general holding camp, whatever that is, before using it for its Polish branch. Designated Special Training School for uh, 43, the STS 43, it was a base for the Chico Chemnai. A war mem memorial to the 108 Poles who died in the service stands in the main drive. The Polish SOE War Memorial, unveiled on June 20th, 1983, was grade second listed in 2000. 18. After the war, the ninth Lord Braybrook resumed possession. <laughs> well, okay, so the SOE here, they were in it, the Special Operations Executive, again in a castle. It's an old tradition by nobility, by Pharaoh, to prepare the wars in the castles. I wish they could stop calling it a house all the time. Or here in Gorhambury House Castle for SOE Station number 11. No, a real castle. They put the SOE, the Special Operations Executive, in it. In the castle, it belonged to Gr James Grimston, 3rd Viscount Grimston, where the word Grim is in it. Um, and now Grimston's son was made, ah, he's now the Earl of Verulam, is a title in the peerage of the, uh, the United Kingdom is a peerage. <laughs> Um, well, this is a strange name, eh? Virulam. And the building is currently the home of the seventh Earl of Virulam. And what is Virulam? Yeah, th this is Virulam. Vi Verulamium, oh, whatever that is. It's a Roman, some, that's Roman nobility, you know, who were also pharaohs. Rome was led by pharaohs. You know, Caesar was married with Cleopatra. He was on the list of pharaohs. So, show it to you. A list of the SOE establishments. And we go to station number nine. You see the old Gohembry house near St. Albans, Hertfordshire. And, well, let's punch it. There we are. So, um, um, well, this is the old Gohembry house, and this is the new Gohembry. Well, new, it's also like 250 years old, huh? And, um, Well, this is it's uh, station number eleven, which we could just see. I can go back to this here. It's station number eleven, the old Cohembury House. They're all in cars. So here is the SOE finishing school, Beaulieu Palace. Beaulieu is French and means beautiful place where the first four letters in beautiful form the French word beau. As French was and still is the main language of the worldwide pharaonic nobility, where the English commoners and peasants just have to accept all these foreign names in French in their country which hasn't been theirs anymore since the Roman invasions 2,000 years ago. So I'll let you read the whole thing yourself. So this is Beaulieu Palace, Special Operations Executive, another castle. 
So here we are back at the list of SOE establishments. Now we go to Beaulieu. Where is it? Oh, there it is, Beaulieu. And it is um, special training station number 31 to special training station 36. Beaulieu, there it is, a real castle. Europe belongs to Pharaoh's nobility with our knights and castles and the white race are their feudal slaves in a very sly Templar Freemason system in which Pharaoh lets his slaves think that they are free, democratic, protected by some invisible god in the sky and whatnot and the dumb slaves even believe it all and on top of that the whole world hates the white man the jaywalkers hate the europeans because of the genocide of world war ii and the concentration camps. The Nubians hate the white race because of slavery into the Americas. And just read here for yourself here what Jamie Foxx actually said, which is no problem for the Justice Department and the politicians and whatever. The Arabs and Muslims hate the white race Europeans because of the Crusades against the Ummah. And this is what they say about Europeans. I'm not going to read it. It's pretty horrible. So you read it yourself. And again, this is no problem for our politicians if the Muslims say this about the white race. The Indians hate the white face man because of the genocide on the Indians. The Asians hate the white man because of the Vietnam War, the Korean War, the Opium Wars against the Chinese and because of the atom bombs on Japan. So when all these peoples hate the white man, then who in fact is here the racist? Yes, this is racism against the white man because of the things the European nobility of Pharaoh have done to other peoples in the name of the white race and also keeping the white man in slavery longer than any other people or race on this planet. Maybe only the jaywalkers have been slaves of Pharaoh as long as the white man, but the jaywalkers always run away from slavery. So that doesn't really count, does it now? They ran away from Pharaoh, then they ran away from the Romans in Judea, then they ran away from Spain and from Western Europe to concentrate in Eastern Europe, where Pharaoh's Nazi Templars finally got their runaway slaves. The path to Nazi genocide. And a path it is. Running away from Egypt, running away from Rome, then running away from Spain and the Inquisition. It is a long path. 
So when Pharaoh's Nazis on the right hand side, together with the Erev Rav Jaywalker nobility on the left hand side, came living together in their castles, they said to themselves, This time we won't let the Jaywalker runners slip away and really made sure that the jaywalkers had no death to fear by hiding their real murderous intentions until it was too late and making sure that pharaoh's nobility ruling over all other nations in the world wouldn't give a visa to the European jaywalkers who were 100% cornered and trapped. Not even America gave the runners a visa. Well, why should they then? With all Pharaoh's Freemasons ruling over the US, and with Swissy on all key positions. But were the jaywalkers really slaves that long? No, they were not, because they always run away, which has made the worldwide pharaohs really angry with them. In fact, Maybe I should call them the Jay Runners instead of the Jay Walkers. Let's call them the Jay Runners. And again, I've got nothing against these people. I'm just documenting history. It's only the white man being so dumb to stay an obedient slave for Pharaoh that long. Never before in history any tribe of this world has been attacked by such huge and organized standing armies as the European tribes were attacked, destroyed and conquered by Pharaoh's Roman armies who still rule over the white race to this very day. The pharaohs became Europe's nobility. The slaves of pharaoh ran away and the common people of ancient Egypt became the Italians, filling the ranks of the Roman legions. And 2000 years later, bringing Nazism into Europe, as the word Nazi is Italian, from the Italian word Nazionalismo by Mussolini, and written with a Z, a Z as the Americans say, and ransacking Europe once more, and finally getting hold of the J-runners so here you see the Italians 2000 years ago, the commoners of ancient Egypt, ransacking Europe and killing the tribes of Europe, the Germanic tribes, the Celtic tribes, just as they did with the Indians in Africa, now the, 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 and in Arabia, and now in Russia and Ukraine. It will never end. Only with information and understanding we can end this f and finish it once and for all. Here, have a good look at this boat here. They call it a sun bark, pharaonic. But of course, you know, they didn't build all this, you know, these Egyptians just for some mythology and, and never really use it. Of course, they really used it, and they still do so in Italy. You know, 
Pharaoh's people are the Italians. And uh, they're all over the world, uh, everywhere, with their mafia and all their crime syndicates and all that. So I have a good look at this boat here, the sun bark, and how it's like this part is coming out of the water and this here. Um, it's really a strange thing. And the Italians still use it today. They call it the uh, gondola in Venice. So I filmed this for you um, in this video here. Here's the title on my channel, Gatsefrats. And have a good look here, the rudder, or they, they row with it here uh, at the back. And they, um, the Italians still use the same system. So it's exactly the same thing with this thing here coming up here and, and here. So there it is. There is your pharaonic Egyptian sunbark, or whatever they call it. And of course they used it for daily life. It's not just some mythological sunbark, you know, it's more like a water, water bark. And they still use it today in Chetali. I call it, I call Italy Chetali. And it, it's, it's, uh, it has become very fascist again since the new government in, I think, 2018. They call up the cops when I was hitchhiking on the motorway. It's, oh, it's, it's horrible. Uh, it's a beautiful country, though, but uh, the system and the, uh, and the whole shittily, you know. So look at this here. This looks very pharaonic. And look how it's coming out of the water, just like that so-called sunbark in here. And they got this thing with the rudder, with the sunbark, has exactly the same thing at the back. And look at this t-shirt, they all have these, uh, it's called a gondola. A gondola, gondola, gondola. You know, they sing about it and all that. So, and this is in Venice. Here's another one, looking around the corner. It looks really like something from another era, doesn't it now? Something mythology, from, from the mythology, you know, mythological. And um, it, it looks pharaonic. Uh, we can all feel it, you know. It's not like for the tourists or something. And they all have it. This one has it and this one has it. It's a typical sunbark, you know. And look at this T-shirt. It's the same one as the mask of Tutankhamun or the, uh, the temple at the uh, St. James Island of Jeffrey Epstein. I'll show it to you in a moment. And what do we see? The Ferrani colors, red for the Old World Order, for the, um, the Lower Egypt of the Pertasser, the Red House of Egypt. And here, blue and white, blue for the war and white for the Berhet White House. I mean, uh, the proofs are there, people. You can see it. Isn't this a sunbark? I mean, open up your eyes, yeah? And there you go. There you got the gondola gondola in Chetali, which they call the sunbark in ancient Egypt. I think they just use it for daily life under the Egyptian sun. That's why they call it the sunbark, don't they now? And here's the same rowing or rudder and rowing system as the gondola boat, you know, with this here going up and here going up. It's lifted out of the water here and here for easier, easier steering, but it's a funny boat, eh? Just like the gondola. I tell you, the Italians, they are the people of ancient Egypt. That's why the Romans, they went there and they took it all over. And then the, the pharaohs, they, um, they took over the, um, the Roman nobility and they, they ruled over Rome. Rome was a, a, um, a horizontal rule republic. And then Caesar, who was married with Cleopatra, they, he made it a dictatorship, the vertical rule, pharaonic. Eh? And, uh, well, I mean, 
the slaves, the J, the J runners, they ran away. So these pharaohs, they still have the people of Egypt, who are not the pharaohs, by the way. And many of them, many of the people in Shitali, they don't even know it anymore because the people, they don't write things down. They don't have a tradition. Even after 20 years, they don't even know anymore what happened or what their parents did or grandparents. They don't know it. The, um, the dumb slaves and the, and the dumb people, you know. And it's only the jaywalkers. They know some things about the history, but not really very much. They don't even know their own history. Only because they're religious priests, the uh, the rabbis, they, they, they wrote it all. They, they wrote some things down. But of course, they wrote everything down in a religious context, which is, um, which is a lot of hocus pocus, of course, you know. So anyway, and the uh, the Italians they brought a lot of harm to Europe. Look at what the Romans did, you know, they they genocide on the Celtic tribes. So please jaywalkers and Native Americans or Nubians, they did the same on the white race people. They did the same, even worse. Even worse for the white man this is going on for 2000 years. We were the first, you know, to get terrorized by these gangsters, you know, and mobbed by the pharaonic mob. Today we got global mob rule. Well, this is the gondola. It's the same boat, the same rudder system. It's the people of Egypt. And then they, the Italians brought us again Nazism. The word Nazi in, in German, you know, you know, nationalism, you write it with a T, not with a, with, with a Z. It's from the Italian, nationalismo, with a Z or a Z, as the Americans call it. Uh, they brought, um, but it's, it's going deeper, you know, as I told you, we got Switzerland in it. And uh, the Knights Templars, and um, of course, it, it's a whole hierarchy. And on top is Pharaoh's nobility. That's how it works. And here is another Pharaonic sun bark, also called the gondola bark in Shitali. You see the rudder system. Here we can have a close pick, a close picture, screenshot of it. Exactly the same system as the Pharaonic sun bark. And there's probably a lot more to see like the ornaments here and here, you know, and this of course is in, um, in Venice. And Venice is very Freemasonic. And this is why no government in the world will ever do a single thing against the mafia. Because, um, well, I explained it in my videos already. A gondola, 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 gondola. Oh, uh, here we come. Let's row to Shitali. The pharaohs row to Shitali. And let's raise the Roman Empire. And let's destroy Northern Europe. Gondola, gondola, gondola. And, oh, tourists in Venice, well, come in my boat and I'll bring you to the underworld. Gondola, 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 gondola. Well, you tourist, I give you good price. You step in my boat, good price. I bring you cheap to underworld. Gondola, gondola, gondola. The gondola sunbark of ancient Egypt, the Romans destroying northern Europe, just as the rest of the world under pharaonic leadership. Gondola, gondola. And also Il Duce, Mussolini, whom you can see here, meaning the Duke, was living in a castle. Just like the German Nazis and the English warmongers, Churchill, Hermann Goering, 
all of them, because they're all of Pharaoh's nobility and lying to the dumb Europeans. So il duce, it's almost the same word as duke, you know, D-U-C-E instead of D-U-K-E. <laughs> It's a C instead of a K. It's the same word, a duke, living in a castle. All of them. The name of the Il Duce Mussolini castle is Rocca delle Caminate. Here, here it says Rocca delle Caminate. In 1927, the castle was donated to Benito Mussolini. Here. He also just got it, you know, just like Hermann Göring, because they're all from the Pharaonic bloodline. Here you can see the castle, which you could just see before in the other picture. You, we all saw the tower without this, you know. It's Pharaoh's nobility, people. And there has been found in ancient, from ancient Egypt, exactly the same sort of castles like this here like the so-called european castles well not european like the castle of buhan in uh, egypt which is now underwater and of course nobody talks about it eh? we're being ruled by pharaohs and they want to kill us enslave us take our women then as the jaywalkers now believe that the white race Europeans are the summit of evil after the horrendous events of World War II. They commit the lethal mistake by accepting the jaywalker nobility as theirs because there can't be anything worse as a white man, right? But it's not all truth, what the eyes tell you. And in fact, these Erev Rav of Pharaoh's nobility, whether Jaywalker nobility or other, are in fact pure Pharaohs and the true masters of crime who have managed to get humanity into this position where they are today thinking that the white men are the evil ones because through wars and rape pharaoh has now a predominantly white skin nowadays whereas the real white man has been diminished to nothing more than the eternal dumb slaves of Pharaoh's nobility and their per a big worldwide royal house. Now, what does this here have to do with white supremacy or whatever these obvious racists here? want to call it, who don't even know that it was Pharaoh's nobility who were the real slave drivers bringing them to the Americas. And the attacks on the white race continues to this very day with white man's children being kidnapped into castles by Pharaoh's nobility, where they get raped and abused in evil rituals by Pharaoh's nobility, as by Dutroux, Marc Dutroux, and Michel Fournier, with many white men's children disappeared in the Dutroux and Fournier castles and never seen again. And here it says once more about the Mother of Darkness castle, Le Chateau des Amérois, and they call 
uh, la comtesse, which means the countess, they call her Sar, as I already told you, which means in demotic, it means the king or pharaoh, like in a sarcophagus, which is a box to put the, the pharaoh in when he is dead. And in this case, as French, French is the language of the nobility, it's an abbreviation for son altesse royale, his royal highness, because they know exactly where they come from. And just as the word Tsar, the Tsar in Russia, or Caesar, the king of Rome, the pharaoh of Rome, and as he was married with Cleopatra, he was officially a pharaoh of Egypt, or Nebuchadnezzar, the pharaoh of Babylon. Um, they're all pharaohs. We all know that torture in Europe has always been practiced in castles with the various sophisticated torture chambers by the nobility, which the normal white race never did. And so was slavery, a pure pharaonic invention practiced by the feudal nobility on the Europeans. So I hope you can all see this. This is a red and white checkerboard configuration. White for the White House the, uh, of Upper Egypt and red for the Red House, the Pertasser of Lower Egypt, because they know exactly where they come from, just as we just saw before with the Tsar for Son Altesse Royal, His Royal Highness. Torture just automatically refers to castles and dungeons and the nobility, and not to some European peasants of the white race. The entire prison system has been invented by the aristocracy and their castles. So logically, this goes on with European children disappearing into castles by some Freemason aristocrats on key positions who want to revive the nostalgia of the good old pastimes of the total control feudal dark ages of the medieval era in their spare time. Just as the serial killer Patrice Allegre, who ritually tortured children to death, also in France, and also in relation to Freemasons and the nobility. France is really full of serial killers and people who like to torture and rape little children, bring them in castles like uh, here Michel Fournier, I just talked about him. Here's Patrice Allegre, I already told you about this one. A pink list killer, Pierre Chanal. It's, it's full of it. And I'm going to tell you about an actual case that just popped up two days ago. It's horrific. And of course, France is the country where the nobility really, the European nobility out of Pharaoh, where they got really, where they got really started in France. So it's absolutely full of castles, dungeons, and everything that goes with it. You can have a look at it. It's, it's and as, as I've shown you, I got attacked by a serial killer myself, uh, like 30 years ago or something. Um, I, I, I try to, to, um, uh, to, to tell it to the police, but they were not even interested. 
um, as I explained in that in that video I made about it. And it's the same with here. Uh, Patrice Allegra raped and strangled women in Toulouse and Paris. His cause, his case, caused accusations of a police cover-up. Uh, this is exactly what's going on. And it's exactly the same thing of the actual case where they found skeletons in a dungeon in a castle, uh, in a in a where the, where they had also a Freemason uh, lodge with with secret symbols and everything, which an urbex guy for urban uh, exploration, which he uh, which he filmed. It's it's just happening now, but already covering it up just like this here, just police cover up. Why? Because you know the police are taking their or their orders from Freemasons and 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 aristocrats, or, or or at least people who are from the bloodlines, the nobility bloodlines. Uh, it's all octogon. It's all it's it's their stuff, you know, their police. It's the whole system is by Pharaoh. So, of course, this goes on and goes on and goes on. France is absolutely full of it. Also, Dutroux, Marc Dutroux, he was a French-speaking Belgian. And um, horrific people, horrific. Things going on here, you, you can't imagine. And, of course, there is the Jeffrey Epstein case with Prince Andrew of the British Royals all raping children and young women, underage women in castles. Again, nobility, castles, and remember Epstein, and remember the uh, nobility of uh, von Epenstein, where Hermann Göring was living in one of their castles. It's all in castles, nobility, and uh, Pharaoh. It's not the white race doing all this. They might look white, these guys in their castles, but inside they are very dark and they are not white race at all inside. They come out of ancient Egypt and I've given you all the proofs. It's something very different and because of the use prime noctis, the rape of European women during the feudal times, going on for thousand years, you know, they took over our color, you know, they're inside of us. It's like a virus. It's uh, how, how can we get rid of them? And the white race, they get all the blames of everything because of these ones here in their castles with their medals and octagons and all that. And there are also many witness accounts of rape torture and pedophilia around the royal house of orange again horror from the castle and the pharaonic royals and now this horrific case two days ago and also in france on december the 4th 2022 where three young French urbex guys who in the night entered the castle of Trébon in southern France near Lourdes, where they found a Freemason satanic ritual cellar with human skeletons of probably children with ancient alchemy texts saying that one must kill humans in order to obtain eternal life with candles on the pillars yashin and boaz on which you can clearly see the black and white freemason checkerboard patterns on the floor around and with scalpels and ritual daggers all lined up when i was at the university 
uh, studying history, I st also studied a lot of ancient arms because I specialized in military history. And this to me, it looks like a very typical pharaonic knife. We also have this round, or actually the, the army, they have this round thing at the back. And uh, the pharaonic knives, they have this typical part here like this and here. And here the grip, which I'm going to show you now some examples of. So it looks remarkably like this one here, doesn't it now? And here it says Egyptian weapons at Le Louvre in Paris. And here you got this round thing, what we just saw at that weapon at the back. And here is a better picture of it with this round thing here at the back with a hole in it. So my guess is, well, it's not a guess, it's a certainty that these Freemasons in the uh, torture chamber, in the torture dungeon here in France, they try to copy an Egyptian dagger because everything they do and everything they have is from their ancestors from ancient Egypt. They have obelisks, the all-seeing eye, pyramids, the whole shebang from Egypt because that's where they come from eventually. Also the scythe of the Grim Reaper was found to scare the living hell out of the small child victim probably for the harvesting of the adrenochrome thank god the french police are working for us <laughs> also many different reanimation machines, medical machines, were found in the torture chamber of the Freemasons to reanimate their victims. And here another medical reanimation machine in the Freemason torture chamber. And here on one of the machines or part of the machine it even says so, ranima, as in French, to reanimate. It means in French, in the French language, the word is ranime. There were several jaw bones found, and some of the jaw bones were a lot smaller than the other ones. Children. They tortured and killed and murdered children. Now, why the reanimation machines and why children? I'll explain that in this video here I made 12 years ago, which got deleted and which I found again seven months ago. It's on the same channel, Gure, and here's the title. Code O2T Torture, Lifting Out the Soul for a Satanic Ritual in a Sacrifice to a Pharaonic Deity. These Satanists are soul grabbers, and in order to lift out the soul in a ritual, they must bring preferably a child at the edge of death, mostly through code O2T, oxygen deprivation, torture by strangulation, as you can see here. Um, yeah. In a, um, in a ritual that may take days, 
like inside a jolly good Freemason weekend in the dungeon. And when the subject crosses over accidentally, they need to bring the subject back. That's why the reanimation machines. In the end, you're so exhausted after a couple of days that with the help of demons and rituals, they lift out the soul and put it in a jar or something. Why children? Because children have less physical and less mental resistance. So you see, now 12 years later, after this video here, all the proofs are there. What I told you 12 years ago, what these Franks Urbex found with the reanimation machines and all, what I told you 12 years ago, it has been proven now to you all. And of course, the whole shebang you just witnessed in real life and the alchemy here is very much related to embryonic cells or stem cells with human beings, also called the youth elixir. What you can find here in my film here, Youth Elixir of Pharaoh's Vampire Aristocracy Masters of Alchemy Embryonic Cells on my channel Homeland Security. So you see, I have explained this to you and now you see the proofs of it, right? And because of the alchemy and the youth elixir of the stem cells, the guys, the urbex guys, they found these blood samples, which go under a microscope. And in the ceiling of the one of the top torture chambers, you can see the pentagram here in wood. And this is also a pentagon. Here, yeah, a pentagon, and this is a pentagram. You can see that, which is apparently uh, used for satanic rituals. And in the whole castle, there's no sleeping room, there's no bedroom, there's no bathroom, there's no toilet, there's no living room. There's, it's only full of torture chambers and full of medical instruments and skeletons and what not. The castle Trebon is like out of a horror movie and at the entrance, the main entrance, but these guys went through a little hole which you can see in the videos which I put in the, in the description for you. Um, there was this above the uh, the door, and um, and they said they couldn't really decipher it. They didn't understand it. Well, they recognized the square and compass here. This is the square, and this is the compass. And here they said this is the star of the jaywalkers, which it isn't. It's the seal of Solomon, and King Solomon, who was a pure pharaoh, who was a pure pharaoh. But what they didn't see, of course, well, they saw it, but didn't understand was the big four here, the cipher four. Now, you all know it now, right? Let me hear it. Okay, I'm listening, yeah? It's the concept of four. And the circle is the concept of three. And the concept of four, why do they put it in the circle? It's the same circle you just saw at the ritual place with Yashim and Boaz, there was a circle made with salt. Uh, this is That's the same circle as this here. And this means we, the concept of four, the slaves, they are encircled and enslaved by the concept of three, which is them. And I'll explain it one more time to you, for the ones who still don't know this, and maybe the Frenchies who's, who are going to watch this. The square is 90 degrees, and with 90 degrees you can make a square, which is also the 
uh, the downside of a pyramid, which has four corners and four sides. So the Freemasons, they call this the concept of four, where also the sheeple are, the people, and where the grass is. You know, down at the hierarchy, the, the, the pyramid of the hierarchy. The compass here, with which you can make a circle like this, is normally 60 degrees. This is a wrong one. This is, they didn't make this quite right. Maybe they wanted to make this square here with the, pent uh, the pentagram in it. But this should be like 60 degrees. And with 60 degrees, you can make a equilateral triangle, which has three corners of 60 degrees and three sides. So that's the concept of three. So the compass, the circle, is the concept of three, and which is them. Because the uh, equilateral triangle, that's the side of a pyramid, and they are at the top of it. That's the hierarchy. So the circle is always them. And especially here in this voodoo temple by the Freemasons, uh, the poor children, the concept of four by the slaves, they are really imprisoned by the concept of three, which you can see here, the circle. It's horrible. And they didn't understand... Um, oh, okay, this I filmed for you some time ago, this here. This is, of course, the horizontal rule of the Republic made by the Knights Templars, the New World's Order, as they said it, after the Revolution. And this is the old vertical rule. I, I filmed that for you uh, in Alsace like uh, last year and this is this means the feudal the old feudal rule which is the vertical rule like the king he decided all the way down to the last person in the people without any intermediary and now the republic they they talk you know so they're all together horizontally and they find solutions and with this system they they really have have total control because before, you know, there was a lot of internal, you know, um, strife amongst the aristocracy. They all wanted to be on top now. And now they're all like equals, you know. That's why they say égalité, fraternité, égalité, you know. Equality, uh, fraternity and liberty or freedom. That is this, horizontally. They all sit here equally at the same height, you see. These, of course, here are the cross bones of the Knights Templars who always buried theirs with their legs crossed. And that's why you can see that's a bone here, you know, and here as well. And that's why the Freemasons, they took it over, you know, the cross, the skull and bones, the cross bones with the skull. The um, P stands for pedophile. You don't believe me? Well, here is the FBI official symbol of boy lovers, of pedophiles. They see probably a little boy's asshole in it, in this thing here. You know. I'll show it to you in a minute. I'll show you the FBI files with the official pedophile symbol of boy's lovers. And here, of course, the seal of uh, Solomon. So what was it I wanted to show you? I'll show you this in a recent video. And I show you the FBI files with this in it, and which means that this actually, this P is in fact meaning pedophiles. Well, that's what they are. So this here is the uh, official file of the FBI, yeah, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Only apparently we have to do the investigations for them. So here is that symbol we just saw there, the pedophile symbol. It's it's absolutely this, and like this, I've seen it at um, at official um, shields of the uh, in in French towns. I already filmed that for you. So the Freemasons they know that in a specific town they can find this, you know, which means boy lover, and here too this means little boy lover. So this is a little asshole eh, for the little boys. They even make coins with it. Why isn't that fantastic? 
Well, it's so disgusting. I'm not going to read that for you. You read it yourself. Eh? So this is the official files from the FBI. Here's their seal, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So it's like, you know, it's the FBI. Get your hands up and pull your trousers down, probably. Because the FBI, they get their orders uh, from the Freemasons anyway, just like the French police, you know, so nobody's going to do anything against it. Eh? And there are many FBI agents and French police officers who are Freemasons, you know, they're everywhere because they come out of the out of the Knights Templars. So all military orders like police and gendarmerie, you know, they all come out of the Knights Templars eventually. And they have logos and, and patches that, you know, with the octagon in it and all that. Okay, I'm drifting off. Um, actually, I was doing another film. This this just came in in between. Um, actually, this happening now, and uh, so I thought I squeeze it into the film because it's yeah, it nicely fitted. But I don't want to do it too long. So here's your symbol eh, from the uh, Tribon uh, Free Masonic uh, Torture Chamber Castle. Oh, there you go. Let's send the FBI in, eh? Because the French police, they are not going to do anything, eh? Absolutely not. Then the very shocked urbex guys, which means urban explorer, called up the French gendarmerie police. And the case is momentarily hitting all the newspapers in France. Pharaoh's newspapers have been immediately announcing that the French gendarmerie police already officially declared that there is no crime involved, even before they've done any investigation at all. I don't really know why we liberated these Frenchies in 1945 with all this going on. So many good Americans and English Canadians, my grandfather, died for this year. For this year they died, I tell you. It says in French, Selon la gendarmerie, l'hypothèse criminelle est peu pro probable by Le Parisien the Parisian, French newspaper from Paris. Oh, how dare they? The police are a danger and a menace to our children and to our freedom. They are a menace to justice. And it's about a time we get rid of them. They are of no use at all. So, if anyone still cares to watch the videos, this is half an hour. So, here's the title. So, you just mm, copy paste the title and put it in the search, search bar of YouTube together with the, uh, the channel name. And this is the one of the newspaper, Le Parisien. And now we're going to watch this here what YouTube says about Freemasonry. And of course, Foktube immediately diffusing this very serious crime by making Freemas Freemasonry look as if they were a harmless Boy Scouts club with that blue warning under each of the videos. I guess, in reality, the whole Boy Scout tour went missing and ended up in this Freemason torture chamber inside the French castle of Tribon. So the third video can be seen here, this one here, and we can perfectly well see underneath here the, um, the black and white um, Freemason config configuration of a Freemason lodge on the uh, on the ground there, and in red there are already people making videos about it, and it says there this is only four days ago. It says four days ago. 
So here we see the uh, the Freemason configuration. And uh, well, as the authorities say, there's nothing going on there, no problem, no crime. So authorities are always right, aren't they now? Eh? Urbex means urban explorer or urban exploration of guys and girls going into abandoned castles and spooky houses. The very thing I also used to do and of which I made many videos here on YouTube, only making it more difficult for me to go in through small holes as I carry my house with me in the form of two huge and heavy backpacks. So from the actual French Freemason torture castle back to Pharaoh's SOE special operations executive castles. And there uh, was the SOE castle, the Frith, with the code name Station Number Nine. Uh, here you can see it's a real castle and where they made uh, weapons. You know, th this is the real James Bond stuff here. Yeah, they made all sort of weapons like this here. And the well rod pistol. And uh, so here it says SOE station number nine. The Frith was commandeered in August 19th. 39 by the British military intelligence, the MI5 and MI6. Um, during the Second World War, it became a secret British special operations executive factory known as Station 9, making commando equipment, secret research, including military vehicles and equipment, explosives, and technical sabotage, camouflage, biological, and chemical warfare. In the grounds of the Frith, small cabins and barracks functioned as laboratories and workshops. This is like, uh, what's his name, Q or something in the James Bond movies. Uh, it, it really, you know, it really all happened. So this is, um, and again, um, special operations executive, all in castles. I mean, this is a castle, isn't it? Hey, look, it's already from the year 1500 here. Uh, so this is today's entrance of the Frith. Here it looks like a coat of arms here. And it has a tower. Well, to me, this looks like a castle. Next, Inverell Lord House Castle of the SOE. Special Operations Executive. Now, I really wish they could stop calling it a house all the time. Now, why are all these castles called house? As they're definitely not ordinary houses, but real castles with towers, crests and Templar crosses. See, this, this is a little castle. And the, the other ones are really big castles. Why do they call it a house? You know? uh, first here, during the um, Second World War, Inverell Ort was one of a few mansions in the area used as a training base by agents of the Special Operations Executive. Here, British agents were taught ruthless techniques of intelligence gathering, sabotage and survival lately directly adopted by the American CIA. One of those based there was the actor David Niven. Oh, really? That's part of the SOE as well. Oh. It looks like a James Bond. Um, this was uh, requisitioned by the War Office at the end of May 1940 for use in the training of irregular forces of the Special Training Center. Initially, this was operated by MIR, 
military intelligence R, but became part of combined operations. Yeah, combined operations. We got the, the pharaonic falcon in it again. Same thing the Germans had, eh? Uh, many techniques of guerrilla and irregular warfare were developed there and training techniques which were adopted for commando training. SOE training was centered on nearby Ari Zake House. Um, is that Ari Zake, you know, it has A, Ri, like an aristocracy, eh? And A, it means big or pregnant, and Ri is the sun, meaning born out of the sun. You know, with their sun god, Amun-Ra. The army moved out of the house on August 20th, 1942, and it was taken over by the Royal Navy. Now, what's the Navy doing in a house? You know, it should be on a ship. When it became HMS Loch Ort, and used for the training of naval cadet ratings, well, etc. So, again, why do they call it a house? You know, like here, in Varel Ort House. And funny, in German, Ort, it means a place. So there's maybe some old Germanic in here. Ort is a place. So why is it a house? So here is a list of noble houses. You know, United Kingdom, France, Holy Roman Empire, Arabia, here, yeah, Albania, Russia, Bosnia, Croatia, Africa. I don't see Asia, but uh, so well, all these castles with towers and crests on it, they just call it a house. Well, because why do they do this? because of the various nobilities royal bloodlines also called houses from the demotic per as in per het per tasser or per a meaning a royal pharaonic house as the white house the red house or the big house where the word pharaoh comes from, the big house, etymologically speaking. Here it says, out of it's, the, the, the term pharaoh comes out of the Kemetic term per a. Uh, Kumet, it means Egypt. And per a, it means the great house or the big house. That's why they call all these SOE castles, they call it a house. And then you also know who is behind the SOE and the killing of Europeans. <laughs> it's Pharaoh and the Pharaonic nobility ruling over Europe and their castles and what not. And here, for instance, it says the Royal House of Savoy in Italy, but they were ruling over most of Europe at a certain time. And I hope you all see the sun hieroglyph here, one here and here of Pharaoh. So when they call a castle a house, they don't mean the building or the castle with that house, but they mean the people living in it who are the house. All these SOE castles, are something straight out of a James Bond movie. For the secret wars against humanity by Pharaoh's per a nobility. Next SOE castle was Rhinefield House, also called STS Rhinefield Finishing School of the Special Operations executive the next soe castle uh, was inverlochy castle also called station 46 it is inverlochy castle now it's a hotel 
all of this is part of the secret war against the Europeans. And all European secret agents of the SOE got betrayed by their own, even before they parachuted on Nazi occupied territory, where they got brutally tortured by the Gestapo. And then afterwards, slowly finished off in some Nazi concentration camp, where most SOE agents ended up, due to betrayal from the top down, where the SOE castle guys work together with the Nazi castle guys. Well, what else can you expect? A guy in a castle is a guy in a castle. Doesn't matter what country. Go on, wake up. We are a bred race. Humanity is being bred. And the main aim of Pharaoh's nobility is to breed out the warriors, just as it is one of the purposes of today's Ukraine war to which I'll come back later. The next SOE spy castle was Hethrop Castle, or Station 45. The next SOE spy castle was Hethrop Castle, or Station 45. Here you can see it, Station 45 Hethrop Castle, in Fairford, Gloucestershire. And here is station 44, Water Eaton. Look, another castle. I give you a better picture. It's cutting off half of it. So here's a better picture of um, Water Eaton Manor House in Oxfordshire. They got the two pillars, Yashin and Boaz. And they got obelisks on the on the roof, and a crow. And here are three for the concept of three, maybe. But look, this looks like a temple, you know, the entrance. It's definitely a temple, you know. And here it is, Water Aiton in Oxfordshire. It doesn't say in Wikipedia about the SOE, but as you have just saw, it is. Um, Station 44. A castle is very badly isolated, or not isolated at all. They're just solid walls with no isolation, and not really fit to live in. And due to its big space, impossible to heat and keep warm. And as the nobility do not want to destroy them, out of nostalgic reasons. They use them according traditions for military purposes like the SOE or Hermann von Göring, for traditional parties like weddings and the various rape parties, preferably raping children, as in the French Trébon castle and its Freemason tortured dungeon. All wars are wars by Pharaoh's nobility, just as today's Ukraine war and the Afghanistan war and the Russian invasion. Oh, jolly good fox hunting in Afghanistan. Oh, we had a splendid time with the lads, didn't we know? And here we can see William Wales on the left hand side and Harry Wales on the right side. Oh, Harry, how many confirmed kills did you have? Oh, William, I had about 113 confirmed kills. Oh, Harry, 
I will buy you a beer. You've won. I'll buy you a beer in the mess, in the officer's mess. Here on Brighton.com, there are a lot of interesting videos about the Ukraine war and um, with raw footage, as it says. So if there are any scavengers amongst you, you see a lot of dead bodies here, a lot of them. So, well, I didn't see them all, but uh, just uh, two actually, one or two, three. And uh, so I saw this video here uh, by Pure Trauma 357. A 357 is, of course, a 357 Magnum. Maybe that's a scavenger who wants to see some dead bodies. So it was this video here I saw on Brighton where I saw Ukrainian women in Lviv in 2014 in Western Ukraine defend their men and sons from being taken by the Ukrainian army to go fight in the Donbass, Eastern Ukraine, against the so-called separatists. And here, on top here, below the line, uh, which appears, this is the title, you know, here, Ukraine without censorship, mostly raw footage. This is the title of the uh, uh, Brighton video, which pops up when I punch pause. You know, otherwise I can't take the screenshot, you know, and also this blue line, so I'm sorry for that. But below here, it says, uh, new Ukrainian democracy forcefully, and here it goes on, driving cattle for slaughter. And here you can see the N, new uh, Ukrainian, here you can see the U, and, the, and here you can see the D of democracy, and here the F of forcefully. You can see the Y here, and so you can watch it yourself, you know, when you uh, watch the footage your, yourself. I'll put the, uh, the, uh, the link of the video in the description. So you can see the Ukrainian women here saying, well, you're not going to get my man. They're not going to get killed, and, I, and we don't want them to go and kill other Ukrainians. And this is the Ukrainian army doing this you know, to their own people. And of course, these guys, you know, trying to get all the men, just like Putin is doing now, you know, with the um, conscription in uh, forced conscription in in Russia, the Ukrainians already did it in 2014 here. And these men getting all the soldiers, I'll tell you, this is Pharaoh's uh, nobility, you know, and they're not going to fight themselves, right? So these Ukrainian women, they block the army and they're shouting like, we will not give away our children, not for anything in the world, probably. These women are, or they were resisting, and this is something that Pharaoh doesn't like at all. Disobedient women with whom they can't make the alliance you know, for the Horus Matrix. And they're shouting here, we were not looking for war. We did not want war. Let those go who were shouting there on Maidan. But we were not looking for war. Still shouting here and the army on the other side pushing. We are all one village. We are all one big family and we will not let anybody go. That's what she's saying here. So here we see a perfect example of Pharaoh's nobility pushing the Europeans into another bloody war so they can kill each other off and then replace them after the war, the war with uh, half of the other world and, uh, you know, to uh, follow their agenda. Um, as Mr. Hitler said, ein Volk, ein Führer, ein Reich. One mixed people all over the world. 
and still resisting the army nor my husband nor somebody else's like will go into this war nor sons nobody we won't let parents go or it's probably bad translation uh, we parents we won't let our children go so still it's still the same brightly on video eh? and here you can see the uh, the number 25 minutes 19 seconds of a altogether 20 second 27 uh, minutes and this one says they started this so let them deal with it themselves and this is big mama here so you better watch out eh? yeah big mama shouting or saying let them leave us alone over our dead bodies we will lie on the road now she's saying we won't give our children anywhere so they get it and not come here with military summons so can you imagine eight years ago some ukrainians they filmed this and did a lot of work put subtitles under it translate it put here ukraine crisis in the hope the world would see it and europeans and americans would see it but probably no what nobody saw it on brighton they get only if you look at it it's only 340 views this video so i hope now with my video that these ukrainians against the war who are against the war that some more people will see this even if it's eight years ago so this was in Ternopil, western ukraine mothers are against sending their sons to the meat grinder in donbass mobilization i can't read this word but they're against the mobilization well we don't see these things now in russia eh? they uh, but the ukrainians try to stop this and and uh, but well what do you do against organized pharaonic nobility there's nothing you can do eh? unless the whole world will understand this so here again you see the women resisting and here you can see the ukrainian flag so there was the ukrainian army you know, this here but it's pharaoh's nobility they're pushing the europeans to kill each other right but the ukrainians resisted here maybe if they wouldn't have resisted like here the war would already have started in 2014 but due to the fact that the ukrainian people resisted this uh it, it needed a mr putin you know to do it on the other way around and invade the ukraine so they had to do it and had to go into the army a thing they didn't want to do now here again you see the um, the uh, the lorry of the ukrainian army I don't know why it's blue blue for the war yeah of course ukrainian flag here an apartment building here behind here here uh, some women they are being pushed away here by little fair pharaonic gestapo guys this is pharaonic ss here pushing the europeans into another bloody war in order to replace them afterwards and again ukrainian flag on the army truck you know to um to charge the uh, to put the cattle in there the european cattle here they, uh, or uh, yeah, probably hiding here in the in the apartment buildings to load them up into the uh, the cattle wagon here there you see a cool little pharaoh with his sunglasses with his shades on and you see if you resist and if you hold together you know they they just melt away you know these little pharaohs they're just melting away by hunt by a bunch of women who are resisting and and keep together if you're alone they'll crush you if you if you keep together and resist they just melt away these pharaonic boys eh? here you can see the crimes of the ukrainian army and not even on the eastern part and donbass and the Krim, the crimea and you know th this is western ukraine you know it's not even the the, the separatist region here you can see the flag again the ukrainian flag on the car 
So they're, they're committing crimes against their own people. Who are Ukrainian speaking people here? Uh, here it says that they took our people as volunteers. Why were they taken? So obviously these people are resisting. They, they don't want any war. The Ukrainian people don't want war. It's only Pharaoh's nobility who want war and those who believe the propaganda as apparently in Russia. There's a lot of Russians who believe the propaganda and they think it's good to kill a couple of people in the Ukraine. And she's shouting here, you are watching as they're being driven and you weren't watching us when we talked about it. Huh? So these women, these Ukrainian women, didn't want their men and their sons to go to war and die, which is a rare sight in the West, where in two world wars, the Western European women just said to their men, you go fight in the war and become a hero, thinking by themselves, I hope he'll die and won't come back so we can do the Horus Matrix with our masters and raise our sons new from scratch without any father to son tradition. It says, women of Britain say, go! Here they stand here, you know, they're all like together, you know, like the hanging on to each other, like in a conspiracy, you know. And here's the little boy. He sees his father going away, who's going to die. And he will brought up after another idea. The man will be raised new from scratch, not anymore after the image of God, but after the image of the evil ones. The very same thing we can see the Russian women do today as well. If you listen to the intercepted phone calls, all of this I recognize very clearly as the Horus Matrix. Kill the fathers and raise the sons as obedient servants. I'll explain the Horus Matrix in my film part one of the Swiss Beast series. And here you can see a Ukrainian woman and mother, or maybe also grandmother, asking herself, why are the Russian mothers still silent? She recognized it as well. You know, and as the Ukrainian mothers, as you just saw before, they were resisting the Ukrainian army. They wouldn't give away their men. So these Ukrainian women here, they're asking, well, what's wrong? Why are the Russian women, why are they not protesting? Well, I'm telling you people, it's the Horus Matrix. They want this war. They want their men to be killed. So I definitely recognize the Horus Matrix on the Russian female side of the war. So there are lots of phone call interception here. This is a SSU interception by the Ukrainians, the security service of the Ukraine. It says Russian women call on their husbands to bring trophies from killed Ukrainians. So M is man, W is woman. And she's saying like, you'll bring me lots of military tunics from someone's head. So, you know, this means bring me lots of military tunics. I mean, the guy, he must be dead. Otherwise, he wouldn't give away his tunic, you know. She wants, she's encouraging the soldiers, you know, to go and kill. She's encouraging and cheering on the, the Russian man to go and kill for the Horus Matrix. You know, so it's about time we stop seeing the women as something innocent and harmless. You know, that's, it's over, you know. Here, so here's the title. And here's the channel 
uh, name of this here. Unfortunately, they have a, a Templar's cross in it. Well, it's, it's another color. They don't even know. Well, um, so these women are far from being innocent, and uh, uh, we we should change the mindset. You know, bring on a little bit more like a Muslim mindset, and you know, uh, stop these women from encouraging the man to go and kill other people and other races and other whatever you know they're not harmless at all so in this um intercepted phone call by solovyov konstantin solovyov this guy here a nice family father talking with his wife solov Solovyova Golov Golovashkina Tatiana, and um, why he's um, talking about the uh, the most horrific torture he's doing with the FSB, the Russian nowadays KGB, and um, he says he has no more conscience. I'm not going to repeat it for you. It's horrific, really. And she's saying they're not human, the Kokols, which is the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians are not human. So she's hoping this guy has no more like um, uh, aesthetic or boundaries or no more conscience. I mean, they're not human, you know. So she's putting that in his mind, you know. Go and kill them, you know. And she's laughing and she's really sly with him, really sly, you know, really encouraging him to to go and murder ukrainian civilians so the guy he looks like a baby to me it, it, it doesn't look like a man it's already a product of the horus matrix you know ready to obey and, and look at this one here look at her eyes you know i mean she's definitely evil and, and to me she also looks evil and but the things he is saying, you know, this this is the Horus Matrix, eh? And uh, so I'll, I'll put the links of these videos, and there are many more, you know. So here's the title: Russians are torturing Ukrainian prisoners under FSB oversight. So it's eighteen plus, you know. That's why I'm not repeating it. Channel Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, Ukraine Form TV, and. Um, horrific it's it's horrific the things they're doing and this is just the tip of the iceberg and the the females the russian females are even more the tip of the iceberg and an iceberg she is oh boy horus matrix people kill the patriarchy as the pink list killers say who also have an alliance with the masters in order to kill the patriarchy which the pink list killers advertise about everywhere on their pink t-shirts they've got this here to execute their mission to accomplish their hate speech an obvious appeal for violence on normal persons i guess we all know what the unicorn represents having the right angle of 45 degrees upwards and with the right direction pointed forward when looking at the badge so i'd rather not imagine this horse standing behind me <laughs> So you can read it yourself here. I'm not going to read it anyway, you know. And here's the, their badge. And it is from here, June 2022. And here, you can read it yourself. I'm not going to do this. I don't want to take all these words in my mouth. And I don't really would appreciate to 
need to take the soap afterwards to rinse my mouth. So the Ukrainian army, they have an official pink list killer battalion or regiment inside the army, a thing which would be completely impossible and forbidden within the Russian army, I suppose. Funny, huh? They never talk about this in their BBC, NBC, CNN or Sky News propaganda. Are you sure you still want to join Ukraine's foreign legion? So this guy here is an American with lovely earrings and a jolly good moustache. And he obtained the Ukrainian nationality because he is in the uh, in the Unicorn Legion doing the Unicorn stuff in the Ukraine. So here it says, my favorite season is the fall in black here of the patriarchy. Well, I don't even know if there is a patriarchy. It just means kill the man, kill all the man, because uh, it's not allowed to say kill the man. So they write it in this way. I don't want to know what all the tattoos are. So these Western witches and their Russian sisters who have made an alliance with the masters of Pharaoh's nobility must feel a deep hatred towards those Ukrainian women who do the exact opposite and protect their man from their own Ukrainian army who want to put their sons into the war. This is one of the reasons that entire Ukrainian towns full of civilians and so-called recalcitrant women towards the witches of the Horus Matrix are being flattened and totally destroyed by Putin and his Russians. It is a dirty war indeed, with a secret invisible war incorporated, just like the SOE castles of the Special Operations Executive and the Nazi castles in Nazi Germany, waging a secret war against the Europeans. Here, I'll read it for you. The hidden war, the secret agenda to enslave our children in the name of liberating them. I explain the Horus Matrix in the video here called The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, Part 1, New World Order, Nazi Templars, on the same channel of Gyuri here. And there are nine parts now altogether, lasting about 50 hours, which you'll find in the description. So here you see part of the description underneath the video uh, where you can find the uh, URL, the link and the title of all the other eight parts. So here you'll find the Horus Matrix, uh, one of the reasons of all these wars and now the Ukraine war. I mean, the proofs are there. It's so obvious, actually. And equally to World War II, in the Ukraine war, the enemy within controls both sides. Where Pharaoh's nobility puts on a Ukrainian uniform, shooting their cannons in eastern Ukraine at the separatists in 2014, who then start hating the Ukrainians together with the rest of the Russian-speaking world. 
Then eight years later, in 2022, the other way around. Pharaoh's nobility puts on a Russian uniform and kill thousands of Ukrainians from far away with cannons. So nobody could really see it. Neither in 2014 in the Donbass, they also shot with cannons and missiles from far away. So nobody really knows who did it. These are the typical false flag attacks used by Pharaoh's nobility on both sides by putting another man's flag on the battlefield to put the responsibility of the attack on the flag and colors of another army or another nation. History is full of these dirty tricks by Pharaoh's nobility who seek to divide and rule and sow hatred into the hearts of man in order to dominate mankind and to total control all peoples of this prison planet. And it's no coincidence we see here the Freemason skull and bones symbol on the false flag. So now Russians and Ukrainians will hate each other for the next hundred years. As you can see in this picture here from the video from 2014, from the attacks by the Ukrainian army on the Donbass, and from the same Brighton film, and where it says here, Poroshenko, you're a murderer and a scum. That's a, a Russian speaking Ukrainian is saying this. So this is not Poroshenko, this is a, um, a victim of uh, the Ukrainian attacks in the uh, Donbass uh, region by Poroshenko, who was the president at the time. And he's, of course, he's another pharaoh, just like Putin and, and Zelensky uh, and Biden and Macron. They're all friends with each other. They're just playing a game. It's all theater, you know. So here you can see former President Poroshenko with his pharaonic hammer during the inauguration in Kyiv, uh, his inauguration for becoming the president. And he was in fact um, responsible for the death of that man you just saw before in eastern Ukraine. Just as Putin, he's doing the same things today, you know, they're all pals. And just carefully watch this pharaonic hammer, because they're all pharaohs. And here you can see Pharaoh with his hammer bashing on to some slaves here, some disobedient uh, commoners. Uh, that's why the president uh, of the Ukraine is having the very same hammer because if the people are not obedient, you know, they're going to use it. So what proofs more do you need? This is Pharaoh's nobility. Oh, look, this is the same thing that was on the gondola, gondola. Yeah, look at that. The, um, the sun bark in, uh, in Venice. And here, once more, you see Pharaoh walking around with his hammer and a whip. You know, so they better be careful here. Same hammer as in the Ukraine for the presidents, all pharaohs. And here again, pharaoh with the Ukrainian hammer. And they do false flags operations, uh, killing first the, 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 the Russians or the Russian speaking people, and then they they bombard the, 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 the Russians are doing the same thing. The people will hate each other and nobody will think of these guys here. You know, this is how they do it. 
right? Look, and then the same picture, here's the hammer, you know, it's the very same picture. The other pharaoh here, or maybe it's his general, he has a pair of binoculars around his, uh, on his neck. Here you see the straps of the binoculars. So the pharaoh, pharaonic generals are sitting on a hill. First, the, uh, the Ukrainian uh, pharaohs bombarding in Donetsk in 2014, the Russian-speaking people, and they're sitting on a hill and watching from 30 miles away how the... Uh, how they uh, shelled the uh, the people, civilians. And then in 2022, the same guys with the binoculars, the same pharaohs, well, they do it the other way around. And the Russians bombarding the, um, the Ukrainians from like 30 kilometers away. And so nobody ever saw them, you know, and they're sitting there with binoculars on a hill, just as Napoleon and Hitler and uh, all of them in all these wars. Nelson, all of them. And um, so this is what's going on. It's, it's the enemy within. And they are Pharaoh, the same binoculars, the same hammers, the, it's, it's them. You know, and this picture, you know, you, know, you can find it on uh, Wikipedia here. Yeah, well, this is a part of the uh, Wikipedia. It's, uh, I had to cut it, but uh, well, you have to believe me. So here you see former President uh, Poroshenko together with the Pink List killers because this is their agenda and they need a reset, a, a total reset for the Russian and the uh, Ukrainian people who are not really much into Pink List killers. And this is uh, one of the issues for which ordinary Ukrainians and Russians have to die for, the agenda by the Freemasons. So here you see the pink list killer doing the Freemason sign to the whole community of them. And he's just there, you know, probably right after, in the same time that this guy gave the order to. Um, kill ordinary Ukrainians in the Donbas. But this guy, he doesn't really care about that. You know, he's only, he only cares about, um, about the rights for his, um, let's say, clan, you know, for his equal-minded ones. That's all he cares about. Doesn't care about people getting murdered. And um, so, you know, they are, it's a conspiracy, you know, they need a reset on the Ukrainians and Russians who are not really very much into pink list killing. It's, uh, it's quite forbidden there. So, and there are more parts of the agenda, but this is one of the parts, yeah. So, it's the Freemason sign, eh? he's giving it away, he's one of them. As we know now, all these pharaohs here, they all give the Freemason hand sign, just as the pink list killer before. This is Merkel here. I, don't, I forgot his name. This is Erdogan, the president of Turkey. This is the, uh, the British prime minister. Uh, I don't even know her name. Not important to me. They all do it. And she is doing it as, as well. Another prime minister of England, isn't that May or something? And here again, Merkel. Mer, it means pyramid. And he's doing it. I forgot his name. He had a German name. I think he's from Luxembourg, the former president of the European Union. I just remember he was drunk all the time. They all do it. They all do it. And of course, here he is doing it. They're all part of the same pharaonic clan. Well, maybe it means I've got a tiny arsehole. Please be gentle with me. Oh, yes, very gentle. And in fact, we have been far too gentle with them for far too long time. 
and it's getting completely out of hand. You can see it's a real conspiracy. They're talking with real presidents and politicians and presidents of country doing this sign here. And there are real wars, real people are dying and getting tortured, children are dying. It's, um, it's order out of chaos, you know, ordo ab cao. Something must change, you know, it's a conspiracy. They're hiding it, you know, with secret symbols like this one here. The whole thing is a lie. We have been far too gentle for far too long. So we've just witnessed now how Elton John's little conspiracy talk with the Ukrainian president Poroshenko has led to this here. And uh, for which normal, ordinary Ukrainian citizens need to die for, like in the Donbass, to replace them with this here which they call nowadays Ukraine's rainbow soldiers. Normally the rainbow comes after the deluge, but I guess in this case the deluge will come after the rainbow and the rainbow soldiers of the Ukraine. The deluge was about sin and the divine reset, eliminating the sinners. Then, after the deluge, the rainbow appeared as a divine promise to never punish humanity again by means of a deluge. Therefore, the sinners became overconfident that they would never be punished again by a deluge, as the rainbow stands for the word of a promise. That is why today, in total arrogance and under a general feeling of impunity, they defy and challenge the inevitable by taking the proverbial rainbow as their token. But there are other ways of punishment than the deluge. For the obvious and growing need for a new reset. I'll let you read this here. Yeah yourself. Well, the first I can read, make Ukraine a safe place. Well, the rest you read yourself. Eh? And because of YouTube's censorship in our fine democracy, total dictatorship, the next pictures will be shown with none or very few words. Because I'm already blacklisted, and in this case also pink listed, which is basically the same. When seeing pink list killers in an obvious conspiracy with President Poroshenko of the Ukraine giving out the secret hand sign and whatnot. The rainbow symbol is a token of defiance presumably under alleged total impunity. The rainbow symbol is a token of defiance, presumably under alleged total impunity. The rainbow symbol is a token of defiance, presumably under alleged total impunity. The rainbow symbol is a token of defiance, presumably under alleged total impunity.
Did you hear the silence of censorship? It was awfully loud, wasn't it? Here it says again, destroy the patriarchy in union with a unicorn and a rainbow and uh, pentagrams here all over and look at the red eyes so can you imagine how much hatred this unicorn gang with their rainbow must have and openly using social media and their t-shirts for their hate speech in order to organize the next genocide on humanity and in particular on the normal males calling them the patriarchy and i risk going to prison for a long time here in europe just by criticizing their hatred and their obvious appeal for violence on the internet and you see it says here slay the patriarchy another word for murder and kill the the males so and here there are three swords into the physical human heart so they really want to do it in 3d and murder people you know this is a physical heart and this is the concept of three for the masters in the hierarchy you know standing for the compass because they definitely have an alliance with the masters and the masters they want to control and uh, destroy some part of uh, humanity you know that's part that can fight back that would have the ability to fight back and who has the ability to fight back well that's the males the patriarchy so there's definitely this alliance with the pink list killers and uh, our masters as we've seen like sir john with that uh, poroshenko um, ukrainian president together and having a having a good time there together conspiring against humanity i guess they're already calling up their members of this violent unicorn gang who work inside the police and justice department infiltrating key positions for the unicorn rainbow gang or even call up befriended pink list killer politicians like sir john with president poroshenko to silence up sean ross who's pulling away too much of the veil of secrecy the pink list killers even advocate burning the patriarchy as burning in auschwitz concentration camp i mean why showing us a skeleton i mean you don't need to, to show a skeleton you know for if you want to burn somebody so you know it's definitely a reference to uh to auschwitz you know and i mean this really is a physical death which is related here on this t-shirt with burning and the patriarchy so this really means and it really says they really want to have a physical death for the males and the patriarchy i mean what what's the use at all to put a skeleton on a t-shirt eh other than that it means death murder killing eradicate 
and which is uh, here associated with the patriarchy. So it really means here, you know, it's, they, they say it's openly killing the, killing the patriarchy, killing the man physically. This is, this is the male, a man. So they really want to burn the physical body and murder the males. That, that's what they openly say here, right? And here it says, scorch the patriarchy. Same Auschwitz model as a reference to the Orthodox jaywalkers, I suppose, whose religion strongly condemns pink list killers and consequently forbidding their sexual aberrations. Scorch the patriarchy as with a flamethrower or like so many men that got, that got scorched and burnt alive in the Ukraine war. The rainbow symbol is a token of defiance presumably under alleged total impunity. We can all see that the Pinkless Killer conspiracy against what they openly advocate as the killing of the patriarchy has reached the highest levels of power and its politics with this picture here of uh, President Poroshenko and Sir John Elton, where it says here Poroshenko and Sir John in Kyiv, Ukraine. It says Poroshenko and Sir John, which is from the Pharaonic Tsar. So he's one of those pharaohs, otherwise, as a simple musician, you won't get knighted, you know. And here, Kiev, Ukraine. They only knight themselves, you know, part of the bloodline. Tsar, like in a sarcophagus, meaning a box to put the king in when he's dead. And, or Caesar, the king of Rome, or the Tsars. And this is like sire, the word sir, it comes from sire. It's all pharaonic. And we saw Poroshenko with the pharaonic hammer. Now we got Tsar John, pharaonic, all pharaohs. And we can all witness the killing of the patriarchy by their hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian and Russian man in order to execute the Horus Matrix. So the Horus Matrix is actually very much the same thing as killing the patriarchy. I give you all the proofs here. So what more proofs do you need? huh? So here you can see them together, here Putin, here Poroshenko, the guy who was responsible for the death and of many more people. And here you can see him putting his little Freemason finger on the inside of the wrist here, under the white here. So the finger is all the way here, which is a Freemason sign. And look how he's smiling, you know, look twinkling in his eyes, you know, they got something together going on, you know, like, which they are not allowed to pronounce, but you can see it all over his face, you know, it's written all over his face that there are pals, you know, it's just a game, yeah, and they all, these got their blue ties for the war, this one got a red tie for the old world's order, the Pertasser, the red house of Pharaoh, him too, but he's got a lot of white dots in it for the New World's Order, the Perhet or the White House. Just look at him, look how he's smiling, you know? A little fox, you know, like, oh yeah, he's playing the game, yeah? And then put the little Freemason finger there. And Pharaoh's nobility will profit from the created situation 
to rob these two countries and the two peoples of Russia and the Ukraine. And then consequently stash the accumulated wealth in the Swiss base. And have you noticed that the real harm on civilians and cities gets done by cannons and missiles? So Pharaoh's nobility won't risk their necks and can eliminate defenseless civilians from a safe distance. So I was wrong. I said 30 kilometers. Well, it's 37.5. It's almost 40 kilometers. I guess I was still used to the old cannons we had. Well, that's 30 years ago. Um, 40 years ago. And this is the Russian Malka 203 millimeters. It goes 40 kilometers. And don't you think that anybody can get near to these cannons in a radius of 10 kilometers? So how the hell does somebody in Donetsk know that the Ukrainians did it? And how does somebody in Kiev or in Bucha knows that the Russians did the shelling? I tell you, it's pure Pharaoh. It's Pharaoh's nobility doing the shelling at both sides and a normal person. It doesn't get near to these cannons like in a 10k or 20 kilometers, 20 clicks radius. So nobody can know who really did the shelling. Okay? When I know, it's Pharaoh's nobility doing the shelling. As usual, it was always, you know, they always get do the harm from far away, so they don't risk their own necks, you know. And I'm willing to go even that far as revealing to you now that the shelling being done on the Russian side and the Ukrainian side, on both sides, is being done by the same team it's, there, there isn't any ukrainian well there is but not these ones here from far away it's 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 one team and they just put on a ukrainian un uniform and then they put on a a russian uniform or, or they don't even bother because nobody gets near it to them like in a in a in a, like 20 kilometers you know and I can promise you it works like this because I, I saw it happening in wars. This really exists. It's one team. So there, there, are, there are three parties. There are the Russians, there are the Ukrainians, and then there's Pharaoh's nobility who is killing both peoples on both sides and betray them also on both sides, just like the SOE did. So this here, where the shelling goes on, here by the Malka, uh, 40 kilometers range, it's a secured area. Nobody gets near to these cannons. You, you won't even get up on the hill here, what we see here. I think it's a hill. You won't even get that near. It's a secured area and Basically, nobody knows who did the shelling. People are just guessing that, well, okay, it must have been the Ukrainians. Or, okay, it must have been the Russians. But nobody has seen them. Yeah. And this is how it works. You know, divide and rule. Divide et impera. It has been going on for 2,000 years, people. This is what Pharaoh does in every war and just change uniforms to sow their divide et impera strategy, divide and rule. This here is still the same Brighton film as before, Ukraine without censorship, mostly raw footage, war Ukraine. So here is just seconds before the guy's gonna lift up the veal or a jacket before you can see a completely wasted body. Things 
that YouTube uh, won't show. And if you show it, or if I would show it, if I would turn on the video like here, then I will have my video removed. So I will not do that. And this is why an honest video platform like Brighton shows the true horrors of war with blown up people, splashed brains, crushed bloody skulls with eyes hanging out, wasted children and torn off limbs. And why the political YouTube social engineering forbids you to show the true horrors of war. Because when you've seen the true horrors of war on Brighton, you don't feel like it anymore to go and fight in Pharaoh Zelensky's foreign legion with that great Ukrainian seal on your shoulder patch, the seal of the rapist king Volodymyr the Great. So here as well, in one second from now, here you can see the hand, and here's also a hand, you will see the guy uh, lifting the blanket and you will see the true horrors of war which is good because then you really don't feel like going there and risk your life and and risk the life of others and go and kill because it looks very disgusting and that's good that it looks disgusting so you know so we don't see like the um people th thinking that it is like in a hollywood movie and go into the war and you know the whole romanticism about it this is like what you're gonna see here is just the straightforward truth the hard shocking truth whereas on youtube they merely show the bright side of the war the glamour side as we can see here the hollywood side and instead of writing here fight for ukraine and list to the volunteer legion now they should have written here die for ukraine because that's the reality which you can see on brighton and this is the reason why we are not allowed to show bloody and torn up bodies on YouTube because it's all social engineering. Fight for Ukraine. You know, they only show the survivors who don't have a scratch. Look, they're all clean, you know, they're actors, you know. It, they should write die for the Ukraine because this is a lie. It has a lie incorporated in it. You know, it's all doctored out here. It's all psychological analyzed how they're going to write this down. They have been thinking in a think tank, you know, for months about it, only about how they're going to write this down and what colors and what actors they're gonna take what sunglasses what shades and, and what not you know <laughs> fight for the ukraine in reality you die for the ukraine you know and that's what war is about you die and you're gonna die randomly in modern wars you die randomly you won't even have the time to to pull out your gun and become a hero you won't have the time and look here why do you think they put the pyramids here in ukrainian two times and why there's the sun hieroglyph with the dot in the middle this is the official sun hieroglyph you know this is all social engineering people and this is what youtube does they don't show the real face of the world of the war 
Otherwise, they they couldn't, you know, seduce people into the war trap by who are looking, you know, for some Hollywood glamour or whatever. And here, once more, this is YouTube, this is Google, you know, it's social engineering by Tavistock, the Royal Institute in London, or next to London. And here again, you know, the pyramid in Ukrainian and the sun hieroglyph in legion and here both in in the word action is both in it you know so they transmit the information amongst each other that it's all being done by pharaoh you know it's like a secret symbol here as well or the secret symbols are in the word you know why, why rape the letter a into a pyramid i mean it's fine to me the normal letter a it's a fine letter why, why make a bloody pyramid out of it, eh? Well, it has a bloody meaning. It has a reason. They're just tra transmitting information. And you're not going to be a man, you know? You get out skinny and shaky with PTSD, with a couple of bullet holes and hopefully not in your head. But uh, it would be very likely that, you know, you're going to have it in your head. Uh, and probably not even a bullet because you're going to die randomly. And how are you going to die randomly? Well, this is how you're going to die randomly. Most of the soldiers who die in the Ukraine, they, they're getting done with the Malka. This is 2C7M Malka. And it has the syllable Ka in it of Pharaoh. Mal, it means bad. You know, in, in Latin or in French or in Spanish, even in English. And ka is the word for the soul. So it says here, bad soul. They're going to take your soul, you know. Ka is the living soul when you die. Uh, when you, sorry, when you live. And ba is the soul you take with you when you die. What the pharaohs are believing. So this is bad living soul. So apparently the living soul is bad and, 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 and they're going to kill it, you know. And um, so from uh, 37.5 kilometers, you're going to be killed randomly. So you might just as well jump off the bridge, the nearest bridge in your hometown and get it over with. You know, the result will be the same. Get it? Secret wars, people. Secret wars. Secret wars. Let it sink in, in your mind. Secret wars. YouTube only shows the glamour side of the war and how you can become a hero and get a medal by Zelensky. Yeah, he's got a medal in his hand. He's got the rapist symbol of Volodymyr the Great on his chest. But people don't see this. So YouTube just showing the glamour side of the war, the clean side, no dead bodies. So in fact, YouTube is prostituting herself to the powerful of the, and the masters so they can seduce you into the war and in fact this is a sort of hate speech you know i mean people are talking and trying to seduce you into the war like come and join the foreign legion or the russians doing the same like come and join us you know the come and join the, the wagner group or whatever this is hate speech isn't it hey eh? it's all upside down it's just a, a prostituting video platform, if you ask me, doing very bad things here. YouTube's wars are clean, heroic, without blood, without people dying, only people getting medals. Which, funny enough, on the other hand, real killing is being shown on the various US police videos shooting down 
heaps of defenseless citizens on YouTube. Oh, but uh, okay, that's Pharaoh's blue army doing that. Oh, that's okay. And also this. So why are we not allowed to show something like this? I mean, if I would show something like this, you know, somebody getting gunned down, my entire channel would be taken off. So how come in the war, the Ukraine war, they don't show this and uh, it's all blurred out, but then, and we cannot do this and show this, but uh, these police videos, they can show it, how innocent defenseless people are being gunned down. Well, the important thing is that this also is social engineering. On the other hand, on the, in the Ukraine war, they want to show you a clean war. You're, you're not going to die. You, you, you will definitely get a medal and shake Zelensky's hand. So they cannot, for the social engineering, to lure you into a deadly war, they're not going to show any dead and, and bloody bodies. But here, on the other hand, they're going to show you this. Because the social engineering here, they want you to think that you must obey the police, that they are dangerous. So you see, it's it's twisted, you know, it's completely, it's completely twisted. And here, look at the title, California cop shoot suspect who allegedly attempts, well, teen killed in police shooting, man jumps out of truck pointing gun at deputies prompt police shoot out they're all getting killed americans getting killed and most of them they are defenseless yeah texas woman being shot by officer well it's just like that uh body cam shows police shoot man with pointed who pointed a cane at the officers mistaken for a gun yeah yeah they're just trigger happy uh so th they want to transmit the information uh, not to um, that it is even dangerous if you if you point a, a a long object towards the cop. So we all understand the uh, discrepancy, you know. So here they they show people are getting shot shot to pieces, while in the Ukraine war they don't. It's a total discrepancy. <laughs> it's sick. It's really it's sick. You know, yeah, again, you know, it's, it's raw vi video po police shooting of Alan George. Here, he doesn't even have a gun. He has nothing. He shoots a man with a knife here. The New Orleans police. You don't say New Orleans. It's Orleans. <laughs> yeah, police shooting. They just shoot a woman here sitting in the car. Bang. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Okay. You can't come home for dinner. Okay. See you in the next life. Yeah. Victor Gonzalez getting shot, etc., etc. There are thousands of videos uh, here. So, why the discrepancy? Well, I just explained it to you. It's all social engineering. And it depends what kind of social engineering they want to transmit into our stupid slave brains. That's it. Yeah, International Legion of Ukraine. Well, oh, this looks really masculine with letters like this. You know, they're like sprayed on it. You know, with a uh, with 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 a mold. You know, like uh, like they do in the army. Wow, that's really tough, isn't it? So YouTube's clean and state censored war footages are clean. Social engineering by Tavistock, who inform all YouTube's official television media only show it to show some blurred out piles of clothes with something in it, or maybe not even that. So this is the Tavistock Institute. It's again like sort of SOE, James Bond, you know, and the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations is a British not-for-profit 
Oh, it's not for profit. So, I mean, it's by the state, you know, if it's not for profit. Eh? Organization that applies social science to contemporary issues and problems. It was initiated in 1946. So that's right after the war. And we all sense, you know, that the SOE, the uh, Special Operations Executive, after the war, they didn't have anything to do. So this is definitely a non-profit extension <laughs> of the SOE, you know, so they've got something to do after the war. Eh? When it developed from the Tavistock Clinic, you know, where they do experiments on humans, and was formally established as a separate entity in September 1947. The German Human Relations is published on behalf of the Tavistock Institute by Sage Publications. The Institute is located in G Street, uh, the G, Freemason G, you know, in Clerkenwell, London, so they are in London. The early history of the Tavistock Institute overlaps with that of the Tavistock Clinic, because many of the staff from the clinic worked on new large-scale projects during World War II, I told you. It's an extension of the SOE, there's no doubt. They even say it here, you know. So all the personnel, you know, or you know who were working in world war ii and soe they uh, some of the best personnel uh, they they went from the tavistock clinic they they went over to the tavistock institute and it was a result of this work that the institute was established well this is definitely an extension of the soe so it's like a red thread the soe going all through this video here eh? this was not foreseen actually but well i'll let you read the rest uh, yourself so here is the town of tavistock and what i wanted to tell you and uh, show you is their coat of arms i always look at the coat of arms people so we see a sheep you know like the sheeple and tavistock it really does sound like human livestock doesn't it by these ones here the red house with their lions, a symbol of the aristocracy. And here, yellow and blue. This is correct, as it should be. As Louis XIV had it on his coat, you know. And like the Ukrainian uh, trident, which is not a trident. So this is the human livestock. And Tavistock, it started, you know, right after the war for the Europeans who didn't die in the war and to indoctrinate them and manipulate their minds, you know, like the uh, extension of the secret war the, of the SOE. Yeah. It's going on and it's going on, people. So they got a more, let's say the Tavistock is the more peaceful branch of the SOE. If you could call the results of what they do peaceful, which actually, um we shouldn't actually because it leads into wars and slaughter and uh, the whole freemason agenda of our pharaonic masters so youtube's socially engineered war videos just show a ball of fire which looks pretty nice Pretty fun, doesn't it? Like fireworks on a national holiday. YouTube just shows some destroyed tanks, which looks quite exciting as well. You would like to go there and stand on it, wouldn't you now? Or YouTube shows a chopper shot down and of which one doesn't really know if it's photoshop or not so why no real and brutal war footages on youtube and on all the other states media well 
because the real and ugly face of war would scare off too many wannabe warriors like these baby-faced wannabe warriors here for whom the war must be presented as an opportunity to become a genuine hero and here it says i read out for you glory to heroes ukrainian military tribute to finally get loved and respected by everyone after having been excluded by society for such a long time and in the propaganda by the media they even say it here you know with the baby face soldiers behind or whatever they are boy scouts boy scouts baby faced boy scouts here and it even says in the propaganda here foreign fighters find purpose and cause in ukraine so go to the ukraine and you finally find a purpose and a cause to your life you know your empty life you know it's all this is tavistock social engineering it's um they they it's insinuating things that are not it's a complete lie the, the picture is a lie you know well they, they really are there but i mean the way they put it together with this text it's a complete lie it's it's complete indoctrination they want you to come join the ukraine war be in the spotlight and either get a medal by zelensky or by putin depending on what side you're on look they announce everything on their t-shirts here it says the vegan witches <laughs> they don't even hide it anymore you know here it says destroy the patriarchy so the vegan witches they want to destroy the patriarchy yeah and why the nazi letter types well that's quite easy because the nazis they were the nazi templars and what did the templars do as the french king so rightfully said and truthfully he and of course also his uh, uh prosecutor um guillaume de nogaret they said that they and they gave all the proofs that the knights templars they were sodomites and they were satanists and also in the nazi era there were many pink list killers you know doing all this you know i can't even pronounce it because of the censorship but the letter type anyway it's because of the nazi templars and they survived putin he's one of them he's part of the the teutonic knights which is a the nordic baltic branch of the knights templars and it's also a very swiss german speaking branch remember the priest who attacked me in burn in the uh, at the uh, teutonic knights uh, church with the uh, with the black cross in front remember well it's them and they even announce on the t-shirts that 2022 is when they're gonna destroy the patriarchy so what happened in 2022 exactly at the beginning of the war of the year well the russian invasion of the ukraine started in a huge war the, the biggest war in europe since world war ii uh, started off so you think that's a coincidence that you know that they are announcing 2022 in the pharaonic colors red white and blue that they're gonna destroy the patriarchy huh you think it's a coincidence huh and they openly do it which is no problem for google for youtube and for the authorities for the police the justice department because everything is infiltrated by them you know 
It's no problem at all. And then they talk about hate speech. If you tell the truth about something somewhere, you want to show it. Okay, then you do hate speech. But this here, it's no problem. You know, it's absolutely no problem for them. I mean, if I would do this, I'd, I'd go like 10 years in prison if I would say a thing like this, yeah? So the Western witches of the Horus Matrix know very well that modern exclusion by wives, family members, and society in general makes potential wannabe heroes for the meat grinder of the Horus Matrix, like these homeless veterans here. Uh, here it says, Homes for Heroes. Or do you really think that it's by coincidence, eh? That they became a homeless? You, you really think this, eh? That there is no psychological aim behind it, eh? You really think that? In our times, a guy who has risked his neck, you know, for the nation, ended up, ends up in the streets. You, be, you really think it's a coincidence? It's not on purpose, like, that he ends up in the streets? Eh? No way. No way. Or like this Canadian guy on this YouTube channel here called Ukraine TBIC. A loner spit out by society and looking for acceptance somewhere, which he even says so himself. Or like this English loner here, all in their midlife crisis, just like the other one before. And here's the title of his interview Back from the Front a British volunteer in Ukraine. There it is. And if you've seen this, you think by yourself, wow, that's great fun. And he doesn't have a scratch. He came back alive. That's where the action and the energy is. That's where I can become a real man accepted and loved by anyone finally away from this misery of social exclusion and they even admitted themselves what i'm saying here and that social exclusion fills up new armies for the meat grinder in which you won't even get the chance to become a hero who heroically eliminates dozens of enemy soldiers together with his best mate in caliber 308 or whatever. No, in modern war, you die randomly picking up a lost bullet somewhere, a bullet which doesn't even have your name on it, as they say, because that wouldn't be random anymore, would it now? And the cause of death statistics of the Ukraine war show that 99% Point nine percent of the soldiers killed on both sides get randomly blown up by cannon shelling, get randomly killed by drones and the explosions of bombs by the drones, get randomly killed by missiles, get randomly killed by tanks and by tank shelling, or by mortars and a mortar round, making them die randomly from far away without the slightest chance 
to become a hero. You just get a bomb on your head, and that was it. Killed by the machine, and party is over. And just read here what the Russian soldiers say. This was intercepted by the security service of the Ukraine. It's a disaster. They just approached us, dropped the explosives, and our tank blew up by a Russian soldier. It's a disaster because they die randomly. And why all the fancy uniforms and the fancy weapons? You know, if 99.9% .9 of the soldiers, they don't even die by a gunshot. They die randomly by a missile or a bomb explosion or a drone explosion. <laughs> Why all the fancy weapons, you know? Well, that, that's part of the social engineering. So people think, well, this is Hollywood. Let's, let's go and become a hero. And then... The Ukrainian officers of Pharaoh's nobility help out to make it easier for the Russians and order you to all sleep together in a barracks for the foreign legion, all piled up. So it'll cost Pharaoh's friends on the other side no more than one bomb or missile to eliminate 200 wannabe heroes with one single bang. Kaboom! Bye-bye. It was nice knowing you. And this really happened on March 13th, 2022. Here it says treason, with the T being formed by a royal sword with diamonds in it with a king behind and as i told you pharaoh is on both sides both russian officers as well as ukrainian officers here it says the war within it is a dirty war against the patriarchy to eliminate all European men who would still have the ability to fight. So in the post-war era, when Pharaoh and his EU, European Union, will impose their full agenda upon the Ukrainian people, there will be no more real men left to defend the family, which has been already a status quo in Western Europe after two world wars of the Horus Matrix killing the patriarchy. As it says here, the invisible war. And Pharaoh's agenda consists of mass immigration into Europe, the pink list killer agenda, forced bug war poison into your veins for birth control, making you sterile, and chipping humanity for the electronic money. And again, I have nothing against other races, other cultures and their various oriental religions. I'm just documenting here. So please don't execute all your terror laws and censorship laws on me for just historically documenting the situation. And here it says on the t-shirt, I'm a documentalist. I solve problems. That's all. I don't mean any harm. I'm just a bystander and a mere visitor in this life 
due to the deliberate exclusion that made me a non-person and a mere onlooker because no nation will give me a passport, no bank account, no more family, no driver's license, no nation that wants me, a homeless without existence, just passing by and documenting what I see on my way through on this prison planet. The Visitor So the evil ones can't call me a nationalist because I don't even have a nation. I'm just a nothing who sticks out his head for a better view of things and a sort of shadow doing my time on this prison planet and just documenting what I see and what's invisible to y'all. That's all. So, in fact, one of the ingredients of the Horus Matrix is exclusion, like a total exclusion from all sides. And if you stick out your head too far and see more things than allowed, you'll get blacklisted and pinklisted and put on the list for the next Horus Matrix. Chop chop, it's harvest time, killing the patriarchy for the next human harvest on Pharaoh's agenda. And I mean, the pink list killers are even saying so openly, kill the patriarchy. And they use social media to organize this genocide on the man. This is an open appeal for violence by the pink list killers to go kill the man and make something else out of them through the Horus Matrix. And what we see happening today again during and through the Ukraine war. Here you can see Ukrainian President Zelensky with the same pharaonic hammer as the pharaohs here and here and here and here. So it's definitely the same offspring and descendants of Pharaoh's nobility. The proofs are all here. And this here, the, uh, they call it the Ukrainian trident, is of course another version of the fleur de lis in exactly the same color. And our masters of Pharaoh's nobility who have made an alliance with the pink list killers and with the western witches want the same social setup for the Ukraine and for Russia as in the western European model where as a man you need to have yourself attacked by some hysterical western European witch or female pink list killer covered in tattoos saying I hate man without having the right to defend yourself or retaliate because of the female alliance with Pharaoh she has always right and beforehand the man is always aggressive per definition when the police comes or when one has to appear in court exactly in the manner they openly display kill the patriarchy for the horus matrix 
and here you can see a fine specimen of the North American Karen walking around in the wild in American towns. So I read for you, this is the North American Karen, genus Blanco Feminus Obnoxicus, found on every continent except Antarctica. A Karen can be aggressive and will attack for no reason. Here, for no reason at all, I got attacked and scratched by some aggressive Western women. And I stayed calm and didn't defend myself because I know that it is an organized war against the patriarchy in which a man has no right to retaliate against a Western woman. And afterwards, the police came and they took me with them in the police car. I got aggressed, which you can see here. And I was the, like the criminal afterwards, although I didn't even defend myself. You know, they would have liked it, you know, but I know how the system works, yeah? I'll put the link and title in the description. So it's on the same channel, Female Alliance with Pharaoh's Authorities and British Petrol, Karen Aggressions by French She-Males. You know, it's not really a she, there's a lot of male in it, you know, they're not really women anymore. It's not a female, but a she-male. Here, for no reason at all, I got attacked and beaten by an aggressive Western woman. And I stayed calm and had myself abused as usual because Pharaoh's system would have put me in prison for a very long time if I had defended myself. Here you can see her fist really punching me. You see that? And um, that was four years ago. Same channel, Gure. I entitled it Bienvenue en Alsace. It means welcome in Alsace, which is an eastern region, which is, uh, it used to be uh, German speaking. And um, so this is in French, welcome in Alsace. <laughs> Quite cynical, isn't it? You see her punching me. It's unbelievable. And here, all on the same channel, Gure, here, I got severely harassed and threatened by aggressive Western women, who then, for no reason at all, called up their protectors in Pharaoh's uniform of this widespread kill the patriarchy horus matrix conspiracy and as you can see in the video i was just eating a sandwich you know and, and drank a beer with the food i just bought legally and honestly in in the lidl shop behind there's no reason for this behavior other than the secret region um, reason and the secret war which is going on so this is two years ago and um, oh, this is not valid anymore and here's the title i'll i'll put the link in the description and this is just the tip of the iceberg i, I it's just only three times or that I, I could get my camera, camera in time. And I thought about it to get my camera, but most of the times this is happening, you know, uh, and it happened to me, I, I didn't even grab my camera, you know. The Western world is so incredibly sick. 
and it's everything is the other way around you know and it's this system they want now for the ukraine and for russia i stayed calm and had myself abused and humiliated by this organized evil calm as in lao chu's teachings the best fighter is never angry but one day in your life you realize that your garbage can is full and my personal garbage can is really full filled up to its neck with the garbage from others in ukraine or russia this what i just described before is not the case yet but it's on the political agenda of both putin and zelensky to install their ordo ab cao or order out of chaos through this dirty war and its secret agenda as objective and just look how they're all smiling Zelensky is smiling oh he's happy Putin is smiling he's so happy to be among the among friends and Macron is smiling even more because he's sitting in between two males probably they're all friends you can see this they're all friends they're all, it's all pharaonic nobility this is the prince of andorra it's a principality between spain and france the moment he becomes the president every french president he becomes automatically the prince of andorra they're all friends and they all have the blue war tie for Pharaoh's war crown, with which they transmit informations, especially on a political gathering as here. I think this was, of course, in Switzerland. Here we see the Ukrainian flag, the European Union, Russian flag must be here as well, somewhere. Look at this, how happy they are together. Like good old friends of the same bloodline of Pharaoh, the Per A, the great house of Pharaoh. Therefore, I was pleased to see at the Brighton video platform how ukrainian mothers and wives resisted the ukrainian army from grabbing their man so the ukrainians are squeezed in and do not only have the russian enemy but also the us the nato and the european union enemy with their various divide and rule agendas in order to install the total control system of the western world for which it needs to kill the patriarchy look it looks like a happy party you know like cheerleaders with flags and all that probably thinking Oh, thank God he's gone now, eh? And it's probably the officer and Pharaoh, you know, for the alliance, for the Horus Matrix. So in the West, such women as the Ukrainian women protecting their sons and husbands against the Ukrainian army and their enlistment never existed in the West where in two world wars western women as you can see here look at the the gun here yeah? 
the Western women put a flower in the barrel of the soldier's gun at the railway station. Some kisses to seal the Horus matrix and off you go, on to France. Go kill the enemy and don't come back. And this here was of course from a newspaper and that's why it says New Hope. They selected this particular railway station because it says New Hope. This is very important. Always look at the words and the numbers, the secret symbols in any picture you find in the media. Because New Hope definitely is a reference to the Horus Matrix and to reshape in a huge world war reset the males knew from scratch without their fathers telling them how life is gonna be. They're gonna be raised by the state, by Pharaoh and by their mothers and into a completely different thing. Obedient, pink list killers, whatever, you know, and that's why it says new hope. New hope for the hopium and the Western women being lured in by Pharaoh's nobility. New hope, the hopium for the Western witches, which is the essence of the snake on Pharaoh's head, like the mask of Tutankhamun. This is the proverbial snake talking to Eve, and the snake is giving hopium like in new hope here you can see some more happy western women as you can see they're all smiling here oh look at that you know and sending their men off into the horus matrix killing the patriarchy you know and the proofs are there hey i'm not it's i'm not sucking it out of my thumb right you see all the proofs of this. So they're already thinking of the power that they will get in the future and getting nice, obedient, Horus Matrix men, soy boys and pink list killers and whatever. So they're already thinking and smiling about the idea that Pharaoh, Pharaoh's nobility has presented to them and i mean why do they have to integrate women in all these go to war propaganda pictures the war is about man you know what you see here why integrate a woman you know well it's quite easy because it's the horus matrix it's the alliance the western witches have made with Pharaoh. So please, dear Ukrainians, don't believe the European community. Don't believe the Americans because they will let you fall down. They are lying. You know, they just want their agenda. And of course, they're very good people in Europe. They're very good people in the Americas. It's not about that, you know. And, you know, again, the uh, horizontal stripes in the United States flag is because of the horizontal rule in the Templars colors, red and white. That's why they are there. There's no other reason as opposing the old feudal vertical rule. And um, here you see the soldiers marching in fours which is, of course, the concept of four, which is us, the people. I mean, we are going to die. 
yeah which is the base of a pyramid so i ask you where is the concept of three the usually there must be the concept of three yeah well, i see two concepts of three yeah i see here his head which is a circle and an oval like the oval office that's why it has to be neatly on the on the american flag and especially on the horizontal rule templates colors the oval you know because of the um uh, the vesi capisces uh, one for all and all for one and this is the concept of three but we can see it somewhere else as well so can you tell me well here it is this ball here i mean why, why do they put it in the picture you know <laughs> it has a reason yeah it means the world domination and of course a ball is also a circle you know if you put it in 2d and with a circle you can draw a circle with a compass and underneath is a square which is the base of a pyramid and the concept of three is the hierarchy of the pyramid that's them which is above the base of the pyramid which is the people you know where the grass is the concept of four you know it's everywhere kill the patriarchy and then you rule over mankind and she seems to be begging like oh please do it for me i'm so scared please do it for me yeah look at look at her face i mean this is the typical begging face the women do eh, when they want you to do something i mean look at it hey eh? with the eyes up like this you know and like like a little baby he doesn't even see it you know and it is also an historical fact that all world wars and all the really big butchery butcheries of the meat grinder have been done under the horizontal rule also that's why they put it here by the republic never a king a real king you know i mean not a um, constitutional monarchy like today no a real king the real feudal king he never did any you know uh, world wars and these really huge butcheries the, the the real big butcheries came when the republic came after the american revolution and after the french revolution right after those revolutions we had two world wars knocking at our doors you know oh please can you do it for me and die so we can do the horrors matrix bye bye off you go in rows of four and exactly this is how women have the capacity to seduce men in going into war and pharaoh's nobility with their analysis over mankind they recognized this and they found a way how they could use the women to obtain their goals which is total control over their slaves over their white european slaves for the last 2000 years and in germany the same thing the women or the girlies here seducing the man into war like into a mass history and don't be mistaken by their age i guess they might be like 14 50 maybe 16 but on most occasions the western witches they initiate the girlies into their craft like by the age of 12 or 13 then they already know what's going on you know these ones here they know what's going on it's not like oh it's fun you know with the no no this um, in a initiation progress uh, project process has already started here and just putting it into practice 
And in, again, in Germany, total mass hysteria. They are smiling here uh, for the Horus Matrix. And as a man, of course, this is the thing you want to follow, you know, and join up with, won't you now? This is the type of club you want to join, ain't it now, guys? With all these sexy blonde girls and all that, you know, seducing the man into war for the Horus Matrix. And then it's a little trap. Ma the mouse coming. Oh, looks like a nice little cheese. Chop, 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 chop. And chop, gone he is. And some more girlies for the mass hysteria, for the Horus Matrix. And don't you think this is about gymnastics? No, it is not. It's about the legs, people. And uh, this is the sexual ingredients, you know. So subconsciously, it works on the minds of the warriors. I mean, this is the club you want to join. And this is worth giving your life for, you know. Do you think they were looking at the gymnastics? No. They were looking at the underwear, like here and here. It's already the mini skirt from the 60s, like. And then all the guys raise their arm up, like saying, up and take off the rest as well, up here, you know, raising the arm like high, you know, because here it's already naked. And otherwise the Nazi, you know, if it would be the other way around, if they would be naked, like on top, and if they would have trousers on, then the army salute would have become a, a downward raised uh, arm, or not really raised, but the arm going like 40 degrees downwards. But as the naked legs are here, and here the clothes are still on, it finally became a 45 degrees upwards Nazi salute. Like, Heil, take your clothes off, girlies, for the horrors matrix. Oh, that was the girlies thinking, eh? Uh, Heil, girlies. And when the Nazi sporting guys, ready for the Horus Matrix, were looking at those lovely naked legs of these Nazi girlies, they raised their arm like in 45 degrees, as if they were saying to their female counterpart, girl, this is, I got a stiff one, which is going 45 degrees up. I really dig your legs, eh? So here we can see some more sexy Nazi legs in order to seduce the man into this mass hysteria, in order to induce them into the Horus Matrix using the sexual ingredient. Kill the patriarchy in progress, so to speak. And when those dumb little Nazi boys, thinking with their small head, saw these sexy Nazi legs of the female counterpart, all Nazis around automatically raised their upper right limp in an angle of 45 degrees, as saying, I also raised something else in an angle of 45 degrees. You sexy little Nazi girl. Also, my fifth little Nazi limp has been raised in an angle of 45 degrees, girl. Heil Dickler, oh boy, do these sexy female Nazi legs give me a hard one. So these are the true tales of the Third Reich and the fifth little Nazi limbs inside the Nazi Templar Eighth for Octogon. In reality, 
wasn't it just this here you wanted to join up with hey guys and just be part of this sexy nazi legs hysteria wow nazism is so sexy no wonder all these guys followed this is the same old essence of the Joan of Arc history in France, that it needs a woman or more women to lead and seduce the man into battle. Cheerleaders for the Führer. Wow, Nazism is so sexy. It really gives me a stiff right arm going up 45 degrees all by itself. Just looking at them sexy legs here. Those sexy Nazi legs for the Horrors Matrix. Oh, I just can't control my stiff right arm going up 45 degrees, eh? <clears> Heil <throat> Horus Matrix. So you all see this symbol here. It's not very clear. I showed in the other picture I've just shown you before. Here it comes. So there she is again, the sexy little Nazi lady with these sexy Nazi legs. And but anyway, it's about this here. This is the logo and the symbol of the Bund für Deutsche Mädels, the BDM, which means the Organization of the German Girlies for the Horus Matrix. And please do excuse me. I, you know, in order to get this here right for the YouTube screen pixels, I had the choice to either show her head or either show this part here. And so I know that for you guys, this is the most important part. So excuse me, I had to cut off her head. But anyway, the Horus Matrix is about this here. So the man followed this here, and uh, this part here is not really important, is it now? So, but anyway, it's about the logo, which I'm going to explain you now. So bye-bye, sexy Nazi legs, and go to the boring logo. So here it is, the League of German Girls. The League of German Girls, or the Band of German Maidens, and in German, the Bund Deutscher Mädel, the abbre abbreviated as BDM, was the girls' wing of the Nazi Party youth movement. So it was the, uh, the female uh, Hitler youth here. This is for the boys, and um, this one here is for the girlies. And um, due to compulsory membership of all young women, except for those excluded for racial reasons, the League became the largest female youth organization at the time, with over four and a half million members. Well, that makes a lot of little sexy Nazi legs, doesn't it now, eh? And four and a half million members, can you imagine? the influence these sexy legs had on the men and the boys until they grew up. And it started um, 1938, no, no, it was before. Uh, an, an incredible influence, incredible. Now here it says, in 1938, the BDM was founded. So over 10 years, imagine these little boys, 10 years old, 10 years later, from 1930 to 1940, when the war broke out, 
you know, 10 years, you know, to indoctrinate them with all this, you know. So by the time the boys got like uh, 20, from 10 to 20, you know, they, they were still having these legs in their mind and, and the whole hysteria and the whole indoctrination. This is a psychological operation, you know, as we call it today. And which is interesting, the leaders. I'm going to tell you some more about it. You know, this is Baldur von Schirach. So it's Pharaoh's nobility, well, of course. And he was also the leader of the Hitler youth, the boys. And we got this one here. I'll tell you more about it. And this one here. So you can see this one here was a psychologist. Can you read that? You know, yeah, it says psychologist. Well, of course, you know, it's all, it's a psyop. It's psychology. And then going down here, I mean, I do it slowly. So you push pause and you can read it yourself. At a certain part, the leader was Clementine to Castel Rudenhausen a countess and member of the higher Franconian aristocracy. I was appointed leader of Gau Unterfranken in 1933. Unterfranken, well, that's in Bavaria, so it's going direction Octogon, Switzerland. So, of course, again, it's not only Baldur von Schirach, but it's also Clementine to Castel Rudenhausen. Pharaoh's nobility is in it until over their necks they are in it, you know. Of course they are. Yeah. Look at those sexy legs. Ah, eh? oh, here's the symbol again. Yeah. I'm 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 gonna show you this. So no, don't look here. You must look here at the symbol. Don't look at these legs here and the you know whatever. Okay. So, you know, look at the symbol and don't look at their nice, nice, sexy Nazi asses, eh? Because before we know it, we got another world war going on, eh? If you do that, guys, you're not going to follow these, these nice, sexy legs, guys. Stop it now. So, you can read it all yourself. So. What I wanted to show you is the symbol. This is the symbol. This here is what you saw here. Of course, you didn't see it. Eh? You were looking somewhere else. So this here with the swastika in the middle. Okay, there we go. So let's have a closer look at it. There we go. First of all, it's in red and white Knights Templars colors because the Nazis were the Nazi Templars and they still are. And Mr. Putin is one of them. So then, if I would tell you in here, in this whole logo, there's the square and compass in it. Would you believe me? Okay, as I already told you before, in the swastika itself, there is four times a square, like in the square and compass. Here's one, here's two, here is three, and here's number four. And a lot of little ones, but they don't really count. They are black squares, yeah? So, now we're going to look for the compass. So this is 90 degree squares. And the compass usually is like 60 degrees. And um, in the Freemason logo. And where do we have it? Oh, look, here it is. Look, it's about 60 degrees, just like the, um, exactly like th this way, because it looks like a pyramid as well, of course. This is the angle of the compass in red. Why in red? Because it's them. The concept of three, which is the side of the pyramid, which is the hierarchy, 
and it stands for RAD, which is the old world order, the old feudal system of Pharaoh's nobility. And the white is the new world order, the Perhet or the White House. This is the Red House. Just like they put out the red carpets, you know, they're inviting the president on the on the tarmac. So it does say square and compass, right? So but okay, I guess you don't want to see this. I you, you were looking at the other thing, I eh? Okay, well I'll let you look at the other thing. Yeah. There we go. There. There's the other thing. You, know, you, you go and have a long look at it and look at the nice asses and the nice legs. Uh, this is the mere thing the German man did in those days. You know, the, the, this is what they were looking at. Yeah. And it's, um, it's the, uh, the sexy ingredients, the sexual ingredients. You know, it's, um, it makes the man follow. Well, I guess nothing much has changed nowadays. Has it now? Look, and here they are again, the Bund Deutscher Mädels to lure the man into the Horus Matrix and the old geezer himself, you know, having the alliance with these ones here, you know. This is all Pharaoh anyway. And um, a Swiss sleeper agent as well, because that's Pharaoh's base. But have a look at this logo here. So I don't know really where it's from. But anyway, we can see four times the square. And this here is a perfect square, this here. You can compare it to the swastika here. And you can see it makes a perfect square. So the square is here. So where's the compass? Oh, it's a circle. With the circle, you can make the compass. So it does say square and compass, you know. And with the death, death skull and skull and bones of the SS, you know, the uh, the death squads, and it's it's all Freemasonry symbols all over. Uh, just as um, this uh, logo here. And next, we got this one here. Oops, oh, this is a little mistake. This, I was not supposed to show this to you. This is from my own personal collection. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Go away now. Next one. <coughs> okay, uh, back to the serious business here. No more distractions. Uh, the League of German Girls. The uh, Bund Deutscher Mädel. So this is what I wanted to tell you here. The leaders, Baldur von Schirach, Trudemore, and Jutta Rüdiger. Now, let's have a look. So there he is, the aristocrat Baldur von Schirach. Von, it means he's of the nobility. And here it says, a member of the noble Shirach family. Shirach or Serach, well, we know that's from the Sar, Sarach. And they talk here about the Sorbian language, was also the, the, the syllable Sar, which means in Demotic Pharaonic King Pharaoh, just as Shirach. And um, it says of the Sorbian West Slavic origins, of which probably also Putin is part of. And three of his four grandparents were from the United States, chiefly from Pennsylvania. English, English was the first language he learned at home, and he did not speak, uh, learn to speak German until the age of five. Okay, on March 31, 1932, Shirach married the 19-year-old Hen Henriette, uh, Henriette Hoffmann, the daughter of Heinrich Hoffmann, Adolf Hitler's personal photographer and sometime friend. Shirach's family 
was against it. And Georg Strasser, another Nazi who was murdered during the Night of the Long Knives, he described von Schirach as a young, effeminate aristocrat. So it's Pharaoh's nobility, you can see here, you know, it looks like a pink place killer. And he's effeminate. He probably just married, uh, you know, to the daughter of Heinrich Hoffmann to, um, to get up the ladder, you know, and to be accepted by all the Nazis and all this, you know. So we see this again. And, you know, what do the Pinklist killers say? Well, they say kill the patriarchy. And what do, did he do? He was the leader of the Bund Deutscher Mädels. You know, who were luring the man into the Horus Matrix, where they would find a um, some horrible death. You know, uh, kill the patriarchy. Oh, another leader of the Horus Matrix girlies with the nice, sexy Nazi legs was Trude Moore. Moore. It means a carrot. <laughs> okay. So in 1937, after marrying Obersturmführer, which is the um, which is a general in the SS, Obersturmbahnführer and Obersturmführer, Wolf Bürgner, she became pregnant and resigned her duties in 1937. At the time of her re resignation, the organization had grown to 2.7 million members. And as I said before, uh, that's a lot of Nazi legs, eh? sexy Nazi legs. Um, in June 1945, she was captured and briefly imprisoned by the British. In 1953, she went into politics again. And, um, well, you know, she never went to prison, basically, you know. So these are really the minds and the brain behind the raising the, of this psychological operation, the PSYOP, of creating millions of men to go into the war, and they hardly got punished. Well, the other one, uh, Baldur von Schirach, he did 20 years of prison. But as being a, a pharaoh's nobility, I doubt it. He did uh, more than one or two days in prison, you know. They just let him off the hook, probably, and hid him somewhere, you know. That's what they always do. And here, Reichsreferentum des BDM, der Bund Deutscher Mädels, you know, with this symbol here, you can see here, with the square and compass in it. And she was in office from 1937 when the other uh, um, resignated, as you saw before, and um, so that was Trudemar just before, and from 1937 to 1945, that's, uh, that's a long time, was that, eight years, right? And she was a psychologist, you know, a psyop, yeah? So, Let's have a look at this here. And uh, you know, short hair. You know, she really looks like a uh, like a pink lace killer. So here it says, arrest and later life. Uh, Rudiger was arrested by American forces in 1945 and spent two and a half years in detention. I doubt it. Uh, Rudiger was not charged with any specific offense. No, no, no. She, she really, as a psychologist, she really helped, you know, preparing and, and founding a huge standing army, you know, and was never brought to trial. Of course, you know, they don't want to speak about it because this is a secret war. You know, you, they don't want to bring this to trial. Upon her release, she resumed her ca career as a pediatric psychologist in Dusseldorf. According to a recent story, she remained an unreconstructed Nazi. Uh, of course, once a Nazi, always a Nazi. In a 2000 
interview, she said National Socialism is not repeatable. One can take over only the values which we espoused, comradeship, readiness to support one another, bravery, self-discipline, and not least honor and loyalty. Blah, blah, blah. I don't think she believed in any of these values. Apart from these, each young person must find their way alone. Well, that's what she said. From 1940 to 1991, that's 51 years, the rest of her life, you know, she lived in a, uh -uh, I can't say this word, in a pinkless killer relationship with her cooperator, Heidi Boehmer, who was also a leader in the Bund für Deutsche Mädels. She died in 2001 at Bad Reichenhall in Bavaria. Oh, what happened? Okay. So, she was a pink list killer, and of course, that's why she resumed a career as a pediatric psychologist uh, to get as near as possible. Oh, I can't even pronounce all this due to the censorship. So, this is what I've been telling you, you know, what's, what do the pink list killers say? They walk around with t-shirts like, kill the patriarchy, you know. And how kill the patriarchy? Well, is to, um, to put up the whole mass hysteria by all these nice little Nazi female legs by the Bund für Deutsche Mädels to lure them into a war so they die in the Horus Matrix. And they have this alliance with the nobility, which I also just shown you. There was this Countess just before, there was uh, Baldur von Girach. It's exactly what I'm telling you. I mean, what more proofs do you need? So I show you once, once more in relation to the pink list killer Horus Matrix, and their alliance to the, to the pharaoh's nobility, what the pink list killers actually say, what they want to do. So how was that again with the Nazis persecuting the pink list killers? It looks more that the Nazis were pink list killers, which is also very logical, as the Knights Templars were sodomites and Satanists, what they still are today, and who became the Nazi Templars and having all the power in the world today, who therefore made it forbidden to contradict what you can read here, which I better not pronounce here, because any denial of what you can read here is punishable with many, many years in some high security prison, in spite of the overwhelming evidence that true history provides us with. As for instance, this huge and extremely dangerous Nazi, Utah. Rudiger, who for eight long Nazi years was the head of one of the biggest Nazi organizations in history, with five million members being a pink list killer herself. How is that possible? I mean, so there she is. Again, extremely dangerous. I mean, influencing five, at least five million uh, young girls um, of the Bund Deutscher Mädel directly, and all the uh, all those stupid men around it. You know, being one of the biggest uh, preparers of uh, Nazi Germany and uh, uh, all, all the horrors that happened. So here it says, from 1940 to 1991, 
She lived in a Pinkless Killer relationship with her co-operator, Heidi Boomer. What? You mean there was another one as well? It's not only one. How many are there then? It's probably the tip of the of the iceberg. What? As how, the way these people are hiding, you know? And how come we never heard of this? And they're telling us that the Nazis were persecuting the Pinkless Killer? Well, it says the Pinkless Killers were the Nazis themselves. You know, look at that. Looked like a Karen with the short hair, you know? Well, what's going on? Yeah, and we're not even allowed to talk about it, you know? Because they're everywhere in key positions, you know? These Nazi Templars. The Nazis won the war. So, you know, dear jaywalkers, you know, wake up. Why are you protecting these people? These are the ones who helped in, in this genocide against your people, dear jaywalkers. Why are you protecting them all the time? What's going on? Don't you want to know the truth? Well, how the hell does this fit together with the compulsory narrative, huh? That a pinkless killer was the biggest Nazi herself, this Jutta Rudiger. And they want to make it all compulsory that we cannot say anything against it, that the pinkless killers, they were persecuted by the Nazis. Well, how does that fit with this compulsory narrative that we have to repeat like a parrot without thinking ourselves? So, first of all, I believe that this word here, starting with the H, that it really happened. There's no doubt about it. Uh, unfortunately, due to the uh, laws and the censorship here on YouTube, I'm not allowed to pronounce this word. Uh, otherwise, my video gets automatically deleted by the um, uh, by the machine. And it, it already happened to me once or twice. Uh, you can believe me. You know, I had to appeal. Once I lost, and the other other time I didn't lose. Although, as a historian, I believe this happened. You know, there's so many proofs. Yeah, why shouldn't I? And I have to tell you, I, I also lost my grandfather due to these horrible Nazis. Uh, he died in combat, combat in 1942, as being an officer in the Royal Navy Intelligence. So I miss my grandfather all my life because of these damn Nazis. So, you know, so don't put anything on my back which shouldn't be there, right? You understand what I mean, right? Eh? No, like, this word terror on me and my family and, 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 you know, with lawyers and all this because I repeat, I believe it happened. Yeah, so leave me alone. Don't attack me, don't terrorize me. So here, the, they talk about, in this thing here, this center about the H and, and the flame, or we know why the flame. It's about the female Hitler youth, what I'm talking about. And the League of German Girls, Bund Deutscher Mädel, the BDM, was the female section of the Hitler youth. His role was to indoctrinate girls by a pink list killer, right? into the beliefs and ideals of the Nazi regime. And what are the ideals? Is to kill and burn these people here, who are behind this word here, which I can't pronounce. So the BDM focused on developing girls into women who were dedicated to Nazism, dutiful housewives, and whose role within society was to become a mother. Girls were to grow up with an unquestioning understanding of the intended role of women in the Third Reich. You know, concept of three, it was them, and not the Germans. Otherwise, it would be the Fourth Reich. Yeah? The concept of four, which is us down at the pyramid. The third, it's them. I've already proven you, it's them. It's our masters behind it. Pharaoh's nobility. 
and the BDM members were required to have German parents, so no jaywalkers, okay? Yeah, they, so the female Hitler Youth, the Bund Deutsche Mädels, they were against the jaywalkers. So, and being good health and conform to Nazi racial ideals. Yeah, no jaywalkers. So why in the hell these jaywalkers, they always protect the pink list killers? Where the biggest Nazis, they were pink list killers like Jutta Rüdiger. And why, for instance, a Hollywood star Roseanne Barr, why is she always protecting the pink list killers? And even criticizing me that I tell the truth about them and how they helped murdering the jaywalkers in this terrible genocide of World War II. I, I, I just don't get it, you know, why? So just punch pause so you can read it yourself. And this is official by the jaywalkers themselves. Yeah, um, I didn't even read it all, you know. Um, I mean, if they like censorship, why should I read it, you know? Oh yeah, here you can see that uh, it's symbol of the, the, the Bund Deutsche Mädels. Jawohl. And you can read that again. So I'm fighting against wars. I'm for justice. I'm for peace. Uh, I'm against dictatorship. I'm against censorship. And we must be able to talk about this because now is the time we, we never had this era where we can talk about it and investigate and analyze history, you know? So why censor us, you know? I'm also censored here. I can't even say what the hell I want to say, yeah? So here, the leadership, Baldur von Schirach, nobility. Jay Walkers never talk about this, that he's from the nobility. And here, after more, you know, the, the carrot, <laughs> I told you, uh, more, that means the carrot, married in, maybe she was missing like a male carrot or something, you know. After more married in 1937, the BDM was taken over by Dr. Jutta Rüdiger. Well, the umlaut is missing, the double, the two dots on the U, which is important. Which is important, because in German, eine Rüdin, in German, with the umlaut on it, where it should be here as well, it means a bitch, a Rüdin. A female uh, dog um, who is... Um, uh, ready to conceive, like, you know, need, uh, looking for a sexual partner, which is a name which is quite uh, applicable, sort of, to this one here. Eh? Who had a close relationship with both Baldor von Girard, you re remember what they said, how effeminate he was, you know, and Atu Axman, Jutta Rud Rudiger was a deeply committed Nazi. Not just committed, deeply committed who continued to lead the Bund Deutscher Mädel until his dissolution in 1945. Not a word about um, her being a pink list killer. Not a word. And it's so important. It's so important. Just as I already made a video about it, how all the actual Nazi leaders of today, they're all pink list killers. So why can't you jaywalkers see this? And instead of doing something about it, you know, terrorizing the white race and the Europeans with your with, with all this censorship going on. It's everything is the, the whole is upside down, you know. And why? Because it's hidden. It's just as hidden as the Nazis. They they hid what they wanted to do, you know. They even had the, the jaywalkers send postcards, which they could send to Italy and Greece, like saying, you know, we're having a good time here in the concentration camp, you know, because a couple of hundred, hundred were put in a nice uh, part of the concentration camp where they had everything, and then they gave them postcards. And they, they, they you know, they, they covered it all up until the last moment when it was too, too late, you know. Even then they said, oh, go and have a nice shower, you know, nothing will happen to you. Uh, we want you to be proper. And then chuck, chuck, gone they were. Hey. 
So it's all hidden, just like this here, about Dr. Yuta uh, Rudiger, the bitch. It's all, it's all, it's all hidden. You know, it's a secret war, you know, and it's all from the Knights Templars who are sodomites and Satanists and who come out of Pharaoh's nobility. So if the Jay Walkers are supposed to have a, a direct line with a, some some divine energy up in the sky, so why do they know why don't they know this? Why do I, you know, me, simple historian, why do I have to tell them this? I I don't have this this direct red line with the with the divine or maybe i do sometimes maybe <laughs> so here in google search machine i inserted Jutta rudiger spartacus spartacus and here it says spartacus education spartacus education about Jutta rudiger and here, Jutta Rudiger, Spart Spartacus Educational, uh, Jutta Rudiger. Oh, they're even advertising for a book that she wrote. Eh? And here, the German League of Girls in Spartacus Edu Educational. Here, more Spartacus Educational. Here, Spartacus Educational about Nazi Germany leaders and, and main events. Revision. So they are revisionist? I guess they are. We shall show you a moment later that they are revisionist. Hey, Jay Walker, you know, open up your eyes. So, and this is why the notorious international pink list killer magazine, Spartacus, is even honoring their own pink list killer Nazi Jutta Rüdiger, as you can see here. I won't open their website because I don't want their cookies and consequently get loads of their pink list killer spams publicity. No thank you, it's not for me. So look, this again is in Spartacus Educational, you know, just like the Bund Deutscher Mädel, they try to educate us just as they educated the little Nazi girls with the sexy Nazi legs, eh? Same thing. And I mean, why is Jutta Rüdiger anyway at all in this Spartacus Educational? Well, because she was one of them, otherwise she wouldn't even be in there. So there's no doubt at all that, you know, uh, for instance, Wikipedia is not correct about it, you know, if some people might say this or, you know. So, and here, the SpartacusEducational.com, they say about the German League of Girls, the Bund Deutscher Mädel, Jutta Rüdiger, who was later to become the leader of the BDM eh, for eight Nazi years, killing loads of people, and loads of jaywalkers killing, yeah, six million or something in this era. And she was the leader of the of the Bund Deutscher Mädel. Uh, Jutta Rüdiger claims that the organization of the Bund Deutscher Mädel did not promote anti-jaywalkerism. She claimed that she told the members, you know, blah, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. Did you do anything against any genocide or against the genocide against the Russian people, against the jaywalkers, against the Europeans in general? Did you do something against it? No, nothing. Nothing. She, she, she was just interested in her own organization, in her own clan of the, of the Spartacus thing. And why do the Pinkless Killers? hate the the orthodox jaywalkers that much because the orthodox jaywalkers they're very sincere in the fact that the guy the divine bloke up in the skies he has forbidden the uh, uh the sexual relationship between a man and a man and a woman and a woman so they reject this sexual practice 
completely, 100%, entirely. So this is why the pink list killers like Jutta Rüdiger, you know, they did promote this anti-Jaywalkerism. Of course they did. I mean, so the Spartacus education, you know, they're lying. <laughs> they're lying. And what else are they lying and hiding and, and you know? So, so I'm going to show that one more time again in this um, Jay Walker website about the word with the H, which I'm not allowed to pronounce. What the Jay Walkers themselves say about the Bund Deutscher Mädel and about Jutta Rüdiger, you know, which is in fact on the contrary, uh, as, as they're saying here, you know. What else? What else can you, can you expect? You know, in the middle of Nazism in Germany, the country itself, the center of Nazism, an organization with five million girlies uh, walking around with swastikas, and uh, you know, for eight years, you know, making the man crazy that they are. No, that they are in fact uh, not anti jaywalkerism you know <laughs> you know it's ridiculous how, how can you say such a thing so we're back again at the um, the beginning of this text about the uh, the female hitler youth the, the bunt deutsche mail uh, on this website here with the word we cannot pronounce so look here it says BDM members were required to have German parents, so no jaywalkers, right? Be in good health. Well, I mean, so, uh, talking about the pink list killers, uh, I mean, is it healthy or well, you can speculate about this. I'm not allowed to do so. And conform to Nazi racial ideals. So. In fact, the, um, the Spartacus uh, organization of the Pink List Killers saying a thing like this, you know, I think the jaywalkers uh, should uh, sue them in court for <laughs> this word here with the H, <laughs> denial. I really think they should do it. And, um, and I also think they should give the... Um, the freedom of speech back to little stupid neo-Nazis, you know, because they are stupid, these neo-Nazis, and we should help them, you know, we should help them find the way, find them, help them find the real truth and everything, which I'm doing, instead of uh, hitting them the, over the head, you know, like a Nazi, you know. Uh, nowadays, you know, there's a lot of hatred growing again, against the uh, jaywalkers, um, you know, because of this here, the <laughs> denial, and it's growing. So, you know, if you want to, um, to censor freedom of speech, you know, it is, and it will always be contraproductive. Don't do it. Now's the time to talk. And, you know, I want to know what little stupid neo-Nazis are doing and what they're thinking what they're talking about it and now because everything is censored we don't even know this anymore and now it's getting really scary especially for these here with with the <laughs> center and all this you know so use your brains you know like a tactician or in a in a game of chess can't you even think two moves ahead or something or or, or imagine the consequences of censoring freedom of speech can't you even think about it the bdm bunt deutsche mädels was a sorority also called sisterhood after the model of the fraternity of the knights templars and if you want to be high up in the hierarchy of a sorority or even be the leader of a five million member BDM sorority like Jutta Rüdiger, then you need to be 
a pink list killer. There's no other way. This is the rule of the Knights Templars, where it all comes from. Which is also the rule in the consistory of the Freemasons. And a consistory is a place of standing or staying together, hence any solemn assembly or council. So you see here at the right hand side it says consistory. The consistory are the top levels in Freemasonry beyond the 30th degree because all the 30s degrees have the number 3 for the concept of 3 in their number of the degree in it and that means them are masters the concept of 3 which stands in fact for the compass and in the consistory of the 30s degrees all the military degrees are starting with so-called crusader crosses that are almost as a Nazi swastika if you reposition four lines just a little bit. So these are crusader crosses and it's all related to the Knights Templars anyway. If you move this line here a little bit you know to the to here and the other one too and this one too well you get a perfect swastika once you know and of course the nazis are the nazi templars so 33 de, num, degree number 33 32 31 it is called the consistory and i would say number 30 as well and maybe yeah, anyway, number 30 as well. Although they call this the, the Council of Kadosh. Where there is the word Ka in it, which means the, say, the soul when you're alive, like the, the intrinsic energy of the Japanese, the Ki, it's the same as Ka. Um, the, the Pharaonic Ka for the soul in it. And here you see the pentagram, which you could just see in the image of that house um of the sorority they had a lot of of these uh pentagrams in it if you saw it if not just go back a little bit so these are in fact nazi templars and it's here in the consistory of freemasonry where the real military fraternity of the knights templars really starts and where you need to need to start looking under the hood if you want to become a real brother brotherhood brotherhood see it's the same cross as in the consistory of the freemasons and it's almost like a swastika you just pull the line here a little bit more down and here to the right and here up and here like this one you get a perfect swastika in the knights templars colors red and white white a lot of white for the new world order the horizontal rule which they created with all these fraternities uh, which it needs and uh, red because they come out of the old world order the old feudal vertical rule of their ancestors of pharaohs nobility of the pertasser the red house of pharaoh and white is of course the white house the perhead and as sodomy is being practiced within the top concept of three degrees of freemasonry's consistory and the world is being ruled by freemasons it is fair to say we're basically being ruled 
by Binkless Killers and Satanists. They sell the uh, Freemason cross of the consistory and the various different names nowadays in order to give it a religious context to better hide it, you know. So here they call it the Jerusalem cross. Here's a coin from uh, the kingdom of Jerusalem of those days. Here you see the king. I think that's uh, Godfrey, oh, it's James II. And here is the, uh, the, the cross of the consistory of Jerusalem. And um, so here they call it the Jerusalem cross. And here they give it yet another name. Here you see the, um, the consistory cross and they call it the Order of the Holy Sepulchre. And the sepulchre is where the uh, descendant of King David of the Pharaonic lineage, where he's buried in Jerusalem. And here it, um, so the founder here is uh, Godfrey of Bouillon, Godfrey de Bouillon. I went to his castle in Belgium, remember? And they found they, the formation is in 1099. The crusade started in 1095 with this guy, Godfrey of Bouillon from the south of Belgium, where I went filming the Mother of Darkness castle and I also filmed that castle of his. And what happened in 1099, on the same date as the French um, national holiday, so on, on July the 14th, well, there was the, the big massacre of uh, Jerusalem, where the Knights Templars they, and the Crusaders, with this cross here, you know, the red cross of blood, they were walk, walking up to their knees in, in blood, you know, killing jaywalkers, Christians, and also uh, Muslims, um, apparently. So... This is the name here in uh, Latin, Ordo Equestri Sancti Sepulcri Jerusalemitani. Jerusalem is, of course, it is uh, Jerusalem. And uh, so it's got many names, the Order of the Holy Sepulchre. And, um, but the best, and also the, the, the cross of uh, Jerusalem, but the best is to call it, you know, like here, call it the Crusader Cross. That's the easiest thing. And this is, of course, um, Godfrey of Bouillon, the, the king himself, with all the, uh, all the fruits he just bought in the supermarket on his head, eh? And he got, he got the pike, the Swiss pike here in his hands, which the, uh, the Templars brought to uh, Europe this, this is the Swiss pike, and with which, with which simple Swiss peasants who never waged any war really in 1291, which was two and a half months after the end of the Crusades, they could miraculously defeat the huge army, uh, Austrian army of the um, of their adversary, you know. Uh, so of course they got a little hand, and the the bike got exported with with a new uh, technique by hiding the the bike. Uh, it was a really long pike, a bit longer even than this one, two or three times as long, and they were hiding it in the sand in uh, during the Crusades, and at the very last moment they they pulled it up like forty five degrees, and. Um, so the, the horses ran into it and uh, they could defeat the army, you know. And because of this technique, which the Knights Templars, of course, who founded Switzerland, they brought into uh, Europe, they could um, defeat the, um, the very powerful empire of uh, Habsburg. So just call it the, um, the Cross of the Crusades. And of course, these ones as well, they were there 
and found it, uh, as they say in uh, here, in, 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 in this place here, Jerusalem, in 1119. And the other one was uh, 1099. So there's only 12 years difference between the Knights Templar's cross, I mean, what they say, and the, uh, the Crusader cross. And, but there is a slight difference, you know. The knights, although they're all the same nowadays and they're all together and they're all pals now, as the Knights Templars, they wanted the horizontal rule, you know, in 1119, but they were founded much, much earlier. I, I can promise you that. And the other one, the, um, the, the Cross of Jerusalem or the King of Jerusalem, it's the old world's order and the vertical rule. Yeah. So, and this is why the top of the of the consistory of the Freemasons, they show it in the very top. But because in the very top, they are really the Pharaoh's nobility, you know, of the uh, old world's order's uh, vertical rule. Who, of course, who have taken over nowadays, like a, the cons constitutional monarchy, they have the constitution of the um, of the Knights Templars, although they are from the um, Pharaoh's nobility of the vertical rule. So, and they all uh, apply the the rules and the and the constitution of the uh, of the Knights Templars and the uh, and the Freemasons. So there is a difference between the two crosses, but they are the same people or the same bloodlines and they're all friends now together. And this is why the, um, the cross of actually the old world order in Jerusalem is on the top of the uh, horizontal order rule, um, uh, rule in a Freemason lodge. And here, we can see the, uh, of course, this is uh, Jerusalem. It's very similar here with these bows here, as I filmed in the uh, the Freemason Lodge in uh, Colmar, in uh, in Alsace, uh, recently this summer. And here says the poor fellow soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon. Poperes comilitones Christi templict Solomonici Jerusalem Tanis. Uh, they only forgot to translate this here. Jerusalem, Yerosol, it's of course Jerusalem. So it says here the Temple of Jerusalem in uh, of Solomon in Jerusalem, which they forgot here. So maybe somebody can. It doesn't really matter. Who cares? Uh, so this here uh, can be found um, in Jerusalem somewhere on a very ancient wall. And uh, this is the old world's order by the king, the Crusader Cross of um, Godfrey of Bouillon. And this, of course, it's Freemasonry, the crossed um, limbs as the Knights Templars did. Interesting thing is that this one is uh, doesn't have a jacket but this one does uh, there is a meaning to this so of course this is the right hand you make it dirty so you don't want you to have your clothes dirty and this is the left hand and uh, that, that's why they always hide the uh, the right hand of freemasonry and uh, so i guess there are a lot of jaywalkers passing here passing by here and they see the same stuff as the Nazis, you know, the SS or the Totenkopf stuff. They had, um, uh, you know, the, the crossed bones with the, with the skull of death on top of it. You know, and now that because it's the same, they're the same guys here. You know, so here's already the union, you know, between the old world or the vertical rule. And the new world or the horizontal rule of uh, Knights Templars and Freemasons. And this is the royal, this is uh, King Godefroy de Bouillon. So here you can see it. Templars versus Crusaders. And today there is no more versus. It's just Templars, 
together or and crusaders so here you can see the king which is probably or king james or king uh, godfrey de bouillon this is the vertical rule with that uh, the crusader cross or the cross of jerusalem Jerusalem in latin and here is the uh, the templar's cross for the horizontal rule and this is why the Knights Templars, in order to beat these guys, they made, and now listen very carefully what I'm going to tell you. This is why the Knights Templars, they made the alliance with the uh, Hashashin sect of the Muslims and also with the Caliph of Jerusalem, uh, Salahedin or Saladin, in order to beat this guy here, who finally had to leave Jerusalem and uh, go back home. Yeah? And um, these guys stayed on a little bit longer because they wanted to get that treasure, treasure out of the pyramids. So this is the reason here, the horizontal old world order, the, the vertical rule of the old world order, that these guys here, they made an alliance with the enemy of these ones. So they made an alliance with the Muslims and with uh, Salahedin and with the Hajjajin in order to beat this guy here and this is why one of the reasons we have all the um this incredible invasions of uh, invasion of muslims all over europe and this is why the german nobility you know uh, they uh, organized two world wars in order to set it right again you know to um um as as they think it's right you know and and get rid of these and um and and have only their german people as as the commoners and as their feudal slaves and not a mixture of jaywalkers and now muslims and and, and whatever this is the reason of two world wars and of course, again, these ones here, they had to do again the alliance with Octagon. As I explained in my film, The Nobility World Wars, they got betrayed again by Mr. Hitler. And uh, well, nowadays in Germany, uh, one out of each two, uh, out of two Germans um, uh, is an immigrant. And uh, it's all because of this here. Vertical, horizontal, just as the Pope is doing, like, Vertical, horizontal. Amen. So this cross here, which they call the Jerusalem cross or the cross of the Holy Sepulchre, sepulchre um, but it's easier to just call it the Crusader cross. It's related with the um, the vertical rule of the king, the of the old world order. And this is why we find it nowadays in the top brass hierarchy of a Freemason lodge, which is in fact a horizontal rule, the whole Freemasonry. But as the top brass, so to speak, or the top degrees, they are pure pharaonic nobility of the old world order Red House. That's why we find them in the consistory of a Freemason lodge, which is basically the same idea as of the constitutional monarchy. So they're actually monarchists on the top in a Freemason lodge or royalist, but they abide by the constitution of the Freemasons and the Knights Templars who got hold of the whole idea in the first place. So here are the Cistercians, and I wanted to show you the um, the coat of arms. Yeah, you see, it's uh, by the nobility. You know, this is the coat of arms of a religious order. You know, why do they have the uh, fleur de lis of the uh, the French royalty in it? Okay. So, and here are the colors, red and white, of the Knights Templars. This is a square, and here's a circle for the compass. So it says square and compass. Of course, it's a bit deformed like this, but you know, it's a, it's a hat. You know, in um, normally in 3D, this is a perfect square here. So these 
are the predecessors of the uh, the Knights Templars, and uh, this is where they were hiding. And you know, it's called the Rule of Saint Benedict, and by Saint Bernard de Clairvaux. Uh, I went visiting and filming for you the um, um, the monastery in uh, Clairvaux where there's the Lake of the Templars and the Forest of the Templars. And here it says, um, Saint, Ber Saint Bernard was an abbot, a mystic, and a co-founder of the Knights Templars. And this was the only religious monastic order that could carry a sword legally. And um, the Pope said it was okay. If you look at their, the date when they were founded, uh, 1098, exactly in time for the Crusades, which started in 1095. So it's it's because of the Crusades. And then only 21 years later, the Knights Templars were founded officially in 1119. But as you can see here, Saint, 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 uh, Saint Bernard de Clairvaux, He's a co-founder of the Knights Templars. So that means that the Templars, they were not founded in 1119. They were founded already in 1098 when the Cistercians were founded. And actually they were founded way before that. The idea of the horizontal rule was way before 1119. That's just, it's uh, officially, you know, that so they can say they were founded in Jerusalem and they were the good guys defending Jerusalem and all that, you know, it's, it's, all, um, it's all wrong. The Knights Templars were founded way before the beginning of the Crusades. And, um, but anyway, this date here of the founding of the Cistercians, um, 1098, it's the same date as the Knights Templars were founded in 1119, which is a very important thing to know. The sorority equivalent of the consistory is called the Sisters of Isis, who are based in their main base in the Alps of their octagon, Switzerland. So pink list killer sorority leaders like the Nazi Jutta Rüdiger of the BDM Nazi movement of Bund Deutscher Mädels do not want to hear about a silly thing like a creation to which the jaywalkers adhere to and like to believe in a creation of a man and a woman. Therefore, the fanatic anti-jaywalkerism of Jutta Rüdiger, whom you can see here, and her various Nazi sorority pink list killer conspirators. So, here you see a Jutta Rüdiger, well, it looks almost like the face of a man, eh? Like in the, uh, the the Statue of Liberty, like sort of, and this one too. This is probably this Heidi Bömer, wasn't it? And together with the, uh, the Reichspropaganda minister, uh, Dr. Josef Goebbels, who was always hysterically shouting, kill the jaywalkers and we kill them all, these jaywalkers. And now here they're standing all together. They're all pals, you know. So here you can see some of the cons main conspirators of World War II and the various genocides. Uh, here's Mr. Hitler, the man himself here, uh, from his grandfather Frankenberger in Vienna, who was also part of Pharaoh's nobility. Here, Baldur von Schirach. He was the head of the, um, the Hitler Youth, von Schirach. So it means he was also part of the, the German high nobility. This one here, also German high nobility, so not just nobility. And her name was Countess Clementine to Kastel Rudenhausen. 
And Hausen, that's like house, it means a house, but of course a royal house or a, a nobility house. And Rüden, just like in her name, which is Jutta Rüdiger, Rüde, that means a dog, uh, a male dog. And Rüdin is a female dog. So they probably have a dog in their coat of arms, you know, some of these like pharaonic dogs or maybe the, uh, the that pharaonic dog of the, un the underworld, like, you know, so they even almost have the same name. They have the same jacket here. here uh, I don't know what kind of a symbol. So it's these three here. It's all nobility and this one probably also. And this is a pink list killer. So this is a... Um, a, a true uh, conspiracy and this pink list killer conspiracy with pharaoh's nobility finally leading to this terrible genocide on the jaywalkers and their children on the russians and their children and even on the germans and their children and for all these genocides the ordinary German people should not be blamed for, like for a hundred full hundred percent. As also the ordinary Germans are also the victim of the laws of silence by these ancient pharaonic sororities and fraternities with all their unholy pink list killer practices ruling over humanity. So this was of course the leader of the BDM, Jutta uh, Rüdiger, a pink list killer, and who, who, got, who didn't even get punished after the war, nothing, this one either. She lived until uh, 2008, can you imagine? This one too, he lived a long life afterwards, but he went well, I already told you. So the pink list killer, Jutta von Rüdiger, together with Adolf Hitler, and then claiming after the war, after the war, no, 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 I was not anti-Jaywalker. Of course not. I'm so innocent, you know, never did anything. And neither Pharaoh's nobility with their, with their Anubis pharaonic dog in their name, you know, like um, von Rüdenhausen, uh, Castel von Rüdenhausen and this uh, Jutta Rüdiger. That's probably a reference to uh, Anubis, the uh, the pharaonic dog. Well, I mean, it's it's a dog conspiracy anyway, the whole thing, you know. And um, they are so successful because they got the laws of silence. They lie so good, you know, and they, they trick us with all the nice images and look at it. Look what a lovely smile and him here and, and him, you know, all these nice fancy uniforms and logos and badges they're wearing, you know, they, they just trick us into the whole misery. So, pink list killer together with three of uh, the high nobility. And this, the pink list killer, probably also nobility. You know, it's it's all pharaonic and with all their unholy practices, uh, tricking into us into a um, into a terrible war with all the genocides and and now it's happening again in the Ukraine, right? So this is a very important picture, you know. So here you can read some about the Countess Clementine, Clementine to Castel Rüdenhausen. Unfortunately, it's all in German because the world uh, doesn't think it's important enough to put it in English. Uh, I think it's very, very important. So her name was Clementine Erika Hedwig Mertilde Ottilia Marka Martina Helena Gräfin to Castel Rüdenhausen. So that, that's a whole lot, eh? And uh, here, you know, it's, it's uh, in 1938, well, I think actually it was 1937, the BDM, Bund Deutscher Mädels, you know, and she was even Jutta Rüdiger, you know, the, the, um, the pink list killer. Uh, it's, they, it says here, 
uh, they had a very close personal friendship and they were even living in a house together in Berlin, Fronau. That's where they're north of, of Berlin. They were living in a house together. You know, they're, they're all the same anyway. You know. And she was Obergaufuhrerin, you know, next to the Führer, to Kastel Rüdenhausen. And, um, well, there's a lot more here. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to read it all. Eh? So, um, here it says, here's a cross. She died on October the 12th in 2008. Well, that was not very long time ago. Eh? So she had a, she had a lovely, exciting, very long life, almost getting a hundred years, just four years short, eh? just four years shy of a hundred years. Look at that. Eh? Born on January 30th in 1912 giving such a misery to Europe and the world, a misery to the, to the white race, to the jaywalkers, to all the tribes in the world. And they just live a hundred years, can you imagine? And there's not even an English translation of this all. Oh boy. This is on the, uh, the German high nobility. Here it says, Hohen Adel, it means high nobility of the um, the royal house of Castel. And Castel in Italian or Latin it means a castle. So well. And this is the uh, the coat of arms here with the um, the red and the white house of Pharaoh. This is the Pertasser of um, Lower Egypt and this is Upper Egypt, the Perhet, also called the White House. And because they have the two crowns, the red and the white crown on their head, on their head, we can see here in on this hat the two colors of Pharaoh, you know. And um, here four circles. Well, the circles is the concept of three. Four of them is the concept of four. All right. And um, so again, it's a, it's only in German because the world doesn't think it's important enough to show this in uh, in English. There's a lot more you can read about them. Very interesting. So this is the castle here of Rudenhausen. Yeah, there you go. That's that's her name, Castel Rudenhausen. It's it's a fairly big castle as well. Uh, we can have a look here. Are there any more pictures? Well, not really. So, and here is Schloss, uh, the castle of Castel, also big. And from what here is this one? Doesn't say here. Um, yeah, you see, from the year 1258. It's always around uh, like uh, the year 1000, as I told you. It's always the same, yeah. And here, uh, Schloss Burg Haslach, Mittelfranken. Franken, that's the north side of um, of Bavaria. And here, Schloss Twickel. Oh, that's a big one. In the Netherlands. You see, you know, they're all one big family. Uh, they're one big uh, clan. You know, how was it again? And you're not part of it or something, right? They're one big club and you're not part of it. So they even have a bank here. The Fürstlich Kastelsche Bank with the coat of arms. It's a, um, it's a, it's a, oh, they got their own bank, you know, their own Castel Bank, only for them. And here we got Karl Fürst to Castel. Um, right here, this is about the Hitler Jugend. Oh, uh, well, that's probably a lot more. Oh, the, the, the sons Albrecht and Philip, they, um, they joined the, the Hitler Youth. Uh, well, of course, yeah. So and then all the, um, all the dumb German slaves, they just ra ran after that, eh? That's how it's going. Heinrich IV, um, another count, and... Uh, well, they they even have uh, kings in their in their in their lineage. Here, the Wasserschloss Rudenhausen. Okay, Rudenhausen. So, very important Ferrang um, 
Pharaoh's nobility lineage here. Very important, very powerful, very uh, influential, and they still are. And, and you should have a look at it, what they're doing today. Eh? So here we can see those evil Nazi pink list killers once more. Like, and here is their logo in red and white of the uh, Bund Deutscher Mädel. This is Jutta Rüdiger. And uh, she's look, look at her face, the expression. You know, look how how much evil, how devilish. She's probably thinking, oh, let's destroy humanity and let's destroy the creation and kill the patriarchy and do the Horus Matrix, girlies. Show your legs and and pull the man into the war so they all die at the Russian front, at the Eastern Front. We're gonna do this. We're gonna have all the power together with our masters of Pharaoh's nobility. Kill the patriarchy. Hail the pat hail the kill patriarchy. Hail, hail. This is what they were doing, people. What an evil bunch. And there she is again in the middle, the evil pink list killer Nazi, uh, Jutta Rüdiger, with some more pink list killer Nazis around here. Let's kill the patriarchy and do the Horus Matrix. This is what our masters want to do. Eh? We're going to rule the world, us pink list killers and pharaonic nobility. And maybe with all their black magic. Now, 80 years ago, she's thinking by herself. In 80 years, we know this, what's going to happen with our black magic and voodoo and the Erev Rav magic. There will be a homie Ross of the Gure channel, and he's going to understand and make videos about it. Hey, ladies, what are we going to do about it? Hey, it will coming. It will be coming. Our downfall is coming. I just saw homie Ross in my dream. And there they are again, the Spartacus Nazis, Jutta Rüdiger, uh, Baldur von Schirach. Baldur, that's a typical Nordic name. I wonder if it's his real name. I, I don't think so. Uh, this one looks also like a typical pink list killer. I like to dress up, you know. And Anyway, the uniforms were by Hugo Boss, you know, and he's also working with pink list killers, you know. The, Haute Couture in Paris, you know, like, um, you know, the Spartacus guys, you know, in Paris walking uh, uh, on the, with this special marching way on, you know, and, and the, taking glamour pictures. It's all the same bunch. Hugo Boss, you know, with, with a double S, of course, with the SS at the end. And I wonder what she's reading here. Uh, she probably got a letter from another pink lace killer girl, eh? The Jutta uh, Rüdiger. And he's looking at us. Oh, oh girl, what are you getting here, eh? No, I know it. Oh, I wish you all the happiness. Look, he's only pulling his, his face on one side, you know. He's a one-sided puller. That's what I've seen as well, you know. I tell you, be aware of the one-sided pullers. Uh, he's a right right hand puller. You know, girls are left hand pullers. Uh, there's something wrong with it. You know, I already saw that before. So pure evil, pure evil. Kill the patriarchy stuff, the Horus Matrix stuff. Uh, against the creation, they they want to grab all the power. You know, but. Uh, Homie Ross will change something in this, you'll see. A few years back, I made this video here about it, but it got immediately deleted uh, by um, YouTube. So, but I recently uploaded it again, or last year, on the uh, Brighton here. Support your freedom to speak, that's what they say. So I'll show you the title. Here's the title. I'm not. I'm not allowed to uh, to uh, pronounce everything, but it's about the pink list killers and the alliance with the Nazis. 
and um, well, this is what they don't want you to see, right? And it's also, I'm talking about there was a Swiss serial killer in the US. So it's on my channel here, Gure Group, International Group, Group inter of International and United uh, Rescue of Earth and Humanity. But, well, there was no more place here, to, so I, I just put this here, Gure. Um, it has hardly any views on Bright Hill. But anyway, the, the video is there. And um, it's just a short video, actually. And you can look up this here. Oh, I talk about this, uh, Leibacher. And uh, what Swiss ice hockey fans, uh, they, uh, they put this up here. But um, I'll explain it in the video. So this is what they say, you know, this is the their pink list killer female symbol with this thing in it, which we've seen all over. Remember this symbol? It's the um, the Delta symbol and the uh, the Delta Force uh, thing, you know, of the uh, and I've filmed it everywhere. It's a part of a pent pentagram. Remember? And they say these ones here, they say kill the patriarchy i mean so please don't censor my video and take it off because i'm not saying this i'm just documenting what's happening because i don't want another world war okay is that clear so i'm not doing anything wrong um i don't want all these wars and they are preparing it and we can see it happening now again and these ones here with kill the, the patriarchy we just saw how they are at the head of a five million girly uh, organization the bund für deutsche mädels who really helped setting up the second world war and put all this mass hysteria into the heads of the men who were all crazy you know they were all indoctrinated and and had their heads filled up with with all these mass hysteria and 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 they're using the uh, the uh, sexual ingredient to do this i mean it's very simple it's quite freudian you know Freudian. And here, once more, a charming pinkish t shirt where it says, Smash the patriarchy. And here we can see the ovary, ovaries of a, of a woman and the womb here with this, I don't know, it's like a red flower, you know, where the sexual organ is, you know. And red, why red? You know, that's the old world's order, you know, they're, they're, and it's also, well, probably what it looks like, you know. So it's, it's an appeal for violence. I mean, how in the world is it possible that these ones here do not get punished, you know? And after the Second World War, they hardly got punished either. So, of course, it's going on and it's going on and it will never stop. This is very old, people. This is this has been going on for a very long time now, and it's again, it's the Republicans. You know, it's the Republic with that democracy. So it's the Republicans and the, and the Democrats who are behind all these world wars, and not in the American sense of the words, of course. And here again, destroy the patriarchy by whom? Well. Here you see the female symbol with a fist and the upside down cross, the inverse cross, of course. We know it's all, I can't even say it. And here again, the rose, the red rose. You know, they see the vagina probably as an opening flower, or, you know, just as we saw before. So they're really showing it, you know, and there are eight flowers, you know, for octagon. Are there really? No, there are nine. Well, maybe because there were nine original Nazi Templars in the beginning, and then the nine 
um, original gods of ancient Egypt, the Aeneid. And um, so they're really showing it here everywhere, you know, what's, what they want to do, what they're preparing, what they're organizing, what they already did and what they're going to do again, what's happening now in the Ukraine war. I mean, the proofs are here, people. And here you see another two pink list killers saying this awfully weird things, you know, which they understand. It's all secret language and, 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 and you don't understand it. I mean, it's awfully strange. They say here, women need more sleep than men because fighting the patriarchy is exhausting. exhausting. There probably is a, a second or third, even third meaning behind it uh, and, and some sort of a, a transmission of, of an idea or, or, or what they are planning to do. Anyway, it's off. It, it's again, you know, fight the women, fight the patriarchy or they should do it. And, and it's the Horus Matrix. And we saw it happening. The Bund Deutscher Mädels, they're in it. The Pink List Killers are in it, just like on all the um, uh, the actual uh, leaders of all the today's Nazi parties. They're actually Pink List Killers, which I made a film about. Um, well, I'll show it to you once more, and I'll, I'll put it in the description for you. For you, these are facts. Um, you know, you can verify it all yourself these are our facts uh, we can see it you know it's 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 not black on white it's white on black you know it's we can't miss it you know so now you know even better with what i've shown you before about the connection with the nazis why here destroy the patriarchy on the t-shirts it is written in this nazi type letters because it's fully related to the second world war the nazis the bund der deutschen mädels and, and the leader were even pink list killers in it you know what more do you need it, it even says here the vegan witches i've shown this before but that was before I've shown you about the Bund Deutscher Mädels and the sexy Nazi legs and all this. So now you understand this even better, what I've told you before. They are the ones who helped uh, making and organizing World War II. And it's an alliance with Pharaoh's nobility. I've given you all the proofs and you know they do an, they say destroy the patriarchy with this hate speech it's obvious hate speech and me they're probably going to take my film off because of hate speech it's crazy and here some more color pictures of the the bunt deutsche medals and the uh, kill the patriarchy thing led by the pink list killers you might even say that the nazi templars here they were far ahead of their time with the uh, the mini skirts here which came like more than 20 years later actually 30 years later and also in organizing the European Union which is in fact a Nazi idea or a Nazi Templar idea and today in Germany we can witness that history is repeating itself with the uh, the Bund Deutsche Mädels uh, today you know for the Horus Matrix either neo-nazis fighting in the ukraine or whatnot and this is repeating itself because um, the idea is actually much older and this organization 
than we th the people think about the age of Nazism. They think that Nazism is like from the 30s, the 1930s and the 1920s and 1940s, the Second World War. But this is actually way older, and I'm talking thousands of years. It's the Horus Matrix from Egypt. And look, they've got all these symbols here. It's a sort of a square with a triangle in it. So that's square and compass, concept of three and four. Yeah. And these ones here, they got three triangles. And uh, one triangle is the side of a pyramid, which is a concept of three, which is our masters, both the concept of three and the it's the side of the pyramid, it's the hierarchy. So I have no doubt that these girlies here, that they are Pharaoh's nobility and they uh, they tried to um to achieve that um other girlies would follow just like uh, with the Bund Deutscher Mädels in the uh, in the pre-World War II uh, era, the Nazi era, but um, apparently only a few did so. Or maybe these two, they're all pharaohs, nobility and pink list killers, right? because they're the ones behind it. And um, so first they import like two million Syrians in, um, in Germany. And uh, right after, and at the same time, they, they come up with these sort of things, you know, to, uh, to, to provoke another war. Yeah. And actually, nowadays, uh, the statistics, the immigration statistics, uh, they officially say that from one out of two people in German, uh, one uh, is an immigrant. So 50% are not Germans in Germany nowadays. So, yeah, you know, they, they are they're preparing it again. They're setting it up again, another world war and a racist war. And they are the ones behind it, you yeah? And here you can see the original of the World War II Nazi era. You know, with the same black skirts as in the picture you just saw before, with the same nice shirt on top of it with a tie, so it looks really nice. Oh, here they even got the inverse pyramid uh, on their backs, as in Auschwitz. And uh, so here it's probably in August or in in uh, in winter, so they uh, have to put on some more clothes and uh, can't walk in their mini skirts as um, all the um, the Horus Matrix girlies um, were showing just before in all the pictures. So you see, this is exactly the same program, exactly the same clothing as in the pictures uh, just before of what is actually going on today. Uh, in Germany, and not only in Germany, but the whole of Europe, and uh, because it's an old program, and it's the same people behind it. You know. So here you can see what I've been telling you. So the girlies in Berlin, you know, they're dancing here, and the soldiers are marching, you know, to impress the girlies how male-like and how strong they are. So there's a lot of a sexual attraction um, in the whole Nazi setup, you know. And so in the beginning, it's like a game and the men, they are showing off and the girlies are showing off like cheerleaders, just like before an American football match. And the moment they're at the front, like in the army, then there's no, no more way back. You know, they're all lured into it, into a war. The Horus Matrix killed the patriarchy and the whole thing. And uh, so you, you just saw it, you know, the male like soldiers. I mean, what, what's better to impress a, a girly than having a gun and a uniform, especially in those days? You know, you were nothing in those days if you didn't have a uniform and a gun. Like, you know, it's, it's a very complex setup by uh, one of them she was a psychologist i mean and a pink list killer you saw it you see all the proofs and it's nobility uh, pharaoh's nobility 
you know, they, they all get lured into it. It's like a game. Oh, look how nice it is, you know, and some action and you know, the sexual attraction. And at a certain moment, it's too late. You, you just can't get out of it anymore. They're doing it. It's Hollywood, you know. So it is, in fact, in this video here, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, Part 2, The Occult Origins, in which I show and I give all the proofs and names of all the pink list killers being leaders of the actual Nazi parties. Just as in World War II, as we just saw, this lady psychologist pink list killer she was eight years long, the head of the Bund Deutsche Mädels, you know, like uh, putting all the garbage like in the heads of uh, of these young girls and, and young men, you know, to to lure them into the war, to kill the patriarchy, because that's this is what they want and they show it. So the proofs are all here. And I did this recently. Here you can see uh, the part of the description here. Uh, all the nine parts, so here you see part number one, all the nine parts, I've put them in the description. So if you can't find them, uh, just um, look into the description. The titles and the links, they're all in the description. Here you can see it's all the same. Here's the same, here's the same. And here are some other parts you can see of the Swiss B series. Here's part nine, here's part four. And you see every time the same as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're all in the description with the URL here, the link, and here the title. But the proofs of what I've just explained to you of the um, about the pink list killers being uh, at the head of all today's neo Nazi uh, fascist parties. Um, is in this uh, three hour video here, or three and a half hours. The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, Part 2, The Occult Origins. I'll put the link of this video in the description of this video here, which you're looking at right now. So here it says the pink swastika, and interesting, the car. Is in a different color so this must be somehow an initiated person knowing that Ka is the pharaonic soul while while alive which they were killing with the swastika you know the life and pumping the life energy out of people so and here it says here pink list killer practices in the nazi party so apparently this is a book and I would really like to read this. So if there's someone who can send it to me, I would be awfully glad. My mail is in my channel in the about section. So as I told you before, and I shown you in that, um, in those videos about the actual neo-Nazi leaders that they're all pink list killers. So I'm asking myself that with all the actual Nazi leaders of today and of the past and the various neo-Nazi parties being pink list killers, how should I believe it that the Nazis of World War II persecuted the pink list killers only 80 years ago? Huh? Have the international sorority and fraternity of pink list killers forgotten how the pink list killer Nazis like Jutta Rüdiger and many others supposedly persecuted their own? Or is it simply all a lie? Because so many pink list killers have become neo Nazis and neo-Nazis leaders today, which I've shown you in many videos, which I just showed you here. I have problems believing the compulsory narrative. The Freemason authorities are imposing on us all. Today, 
in Pharaoh's perfect dictatorship. So again, I'm not saying that it didn't happen. Of course, how can I? It's compulsory, so I'm not doing this. I'm only saying I have problems with this because it doesn't fit. There are so many pink list killers who are really important Nazis like Jutta Rüdiger and also Baldur von Schirach probably and many, many, many others. So I have a problem with this because um, it doesn't fit, you know. So um, again, I'm not saying, I'm not uh, denying it, you know, because uh, I cannot, it's not allowed, you know. But I'm only saying uh, I'm having problems with it because there's something wrong with the whole story, you know. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just, it's, it's stuck in my neck, you know, because I can't swallow it down, yeah. No matter how hard the authorities are pushing it down, you know, and shoving it down my throat, it, it, it doesn't work. You know, it's, it's stuck in my throat, you understand? There's a huge discrepancy in the narrative which they forcefully tried to shove down our throats in this perfect dictatorship. And I have a problem with this. And let me tell you, I hate Nazis. I don't hate the Germans, but I hate Nazis. The Germans are also a victim. I hate the Nazis because they killed my grandfather in 1942, first of all. And second, my family is now in the, in the fourth generation of Nazi terror. So first, in 1942, my grandfather was killed by them. Then my father, the next generation, he, um, he, he was traumatized all his life because he lost his father when he was like four or five years old, which he never got over, you know, over it. Then I got terrorized for 25 years by the organized Swiss Nazi and the Swiss Nazi authorities, of which I've given you all the proofs in my videos. And number four, the fourth generation, my children, all their lives, they have been terrorized by the Swiss Nazis and the Swiss Nazi authorities. So my family has been suffering for 80 years under the Nazi prolongation of the Nazi Templars. So I want to get at the, to the bottom of the whole thing. Do you understand that? Therefore, the Ukrainian government, just as the Russian government, have produced so-called PSYOPs or psychological operations for psy up for the propaganda to attract more men from all over the world to come and fight in the Ukraine war. Ex Miss Ukraine takes up arms with the very same psychological effects using the sexual ingredients as the Nazis did with their BDM Bund Deutscher Mädels and those very sexy Nazi legs of the Nazi cheerleader girlies making the man's blood to be concentrated in his loin and groin and pulled away from out of his emptied brain. You see, the problem is that God gives man a brain and a penis, and only enough blood to run only one at a time. Here you can see ex Miss Ukraine Anastasia Lena and who now is uh, supposedly in the army. Now, wouldn't you like to share 
a manhole with this one here and forget that there's actually a war going on for the rest of the war. And on the other side as well, the Russian side. So here you can see Anna Kramtsova, who is one of Mr. Putin's personal bodyguards. Well, there she is again. And here it says, a male colleague said that Anna Kramsova was a member of the National Guard first and a woman second. Well, what's this about National Guard first and a woman second? Second what? Well, because it's a psychological operation, a PSYOP, in order to give it uh, media attention on television and the newspapers, they did a beauty contest, you know, so everybody would watch it and know about it. And she became first and another time second as the most beautiful personal guard of Mr. Putin. And look at this here. This is probably the, um, the logo which they have on their badge of the, uh, of these, um, uh, uh, supposedly dangerous uh, Amazons or whatever. So we see red and white on the sword, the Templar's colors, and white here making a triangle, and red here on the other side, and all together, because this has an angle here, you see? So you can see it in 3D, and it is an inverse pyramid which is the pyramid of death and together with this here this is also death it looks like a uh, like a nine short you know a small pistol with a uh, with a good stopping power but this is of course a russian version something similar it doesn't look like a makarov uh, if I look at the boards, I think it's a 9 mil. Slow velocity, good stopping power. The, uh, it's called a 3.8 in English. 3.8 of an inch. So, yes, an inverse pyramid. And there is a concept of 3, yeah. So, does it say the concept of 4 somewhere? Yeah, of course. If you look at it in 3D, this is the downside of the pyramid, which is a square, which has four corners and four sides, which is the concept of four. So it does say square and compass. And because the highest levels in Freemasonry, they are Templar levels. And that's why we have the sword here, uh, together with the pyramid, because they all come from Pharaoh. We have the sword in the Templar's collar, so it's definitely a Templar's sword. And if you look at it in 3D, this angle here, like in white of the of the sword, it um, it it is 90 degrees. You know, if you imagine it in 3D, of course not in the picture, but it's it's in 3D because this white line here has an angle with this red line. It's not like straight, you know. You must see it in 3D. They, they always do it, you know. So, Anna Kramsova, she's definitely a pharaoh's nobility, you know, just luring us into the uh, Horus Matrix and uh, try to kill the patriarchy. That's why she has a crown here, you know. It's always the same, and this looks like a in yellow, like a castle or something. But there's definitely a crown, you know. All the signs are there, and they they never forget the signs. And look at the black nails, you know, black for death. It's also a thing. Pinkless killers and gothic they do this, you know. Paint themselves black fingernails, you know. Look at the details, hi hey, people. Look at the details because the big lines, it's all a lie. So, and this is what they did in the Ukraine just a couple of months before the Ukraine war. And this is all PSYOP, right? It's uh, 
psychological operation. It's propaganda. It's the same nice legs as the Bund Deutscher Mädel, the BDM. You know, it's it's not Photoshop, people. These shoes here, the high heels shoes, it's real. Only so the man, you know, they look at the legs because Pharaoh already knows there is a war going on. So this is the Ukrainian version of the Bund Deutscher Mädel with those nice sexy legs. Eh? They always do it, you know, they, they don't even change a thing because they know, you know, that um, the blood has to go through, um, through the sexual organs and the head and there's only enough blood for one, you know, to, to feed only one. You know? It's 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 sad, but you know, uh, most people are like low life sheeple, you know, and uh, so high heeled shoes. Can you imagine? Just a couple of months before the war, they knew Pharaoh's nobility. They knew it was coming up, so they gave the order to do this. Uh, look at their faces. Are they happy with it? Some are. And some are not. She is not. She is not either. But anyway, they did it anyway. Eh? Uh, she is proud. Probably Pinkless Killer. Also knowing what they're doing. And she is not happy at all. Uh, this is how Pharaoh forces us, you know, with uh, the, the whole agenda, the whole tie up. Uh, how they force us into a war. And uh, when it starts, there's no, no more way back. The Bund Deutsche Medal, the BDM. So what you just saw before, the Ukrainian women marching for the Horus Matrix, it's exactly the same as you see here, you know. The Bund Deutsche Medals to go and have the... Uh, their agenda of uh, kill the patriarchy, right? And with the square and compass on their breast here, as I've shown you. And all in white, eh, for the New World Order. Because it was the New World Order, the Republican system, the horizontal rule, that did two world wars. And maybe there's a third coming up. Oh dear, I did it again. I chopped off her head. Look at that. Because this is the most important part, eh? the, the, the legs and what you see under here, you know. I mean, why as a man do you need a woman's head if you got if you got this here, you know? And apparently, just as the Ukrainian women, it's all about the legs. Otherwise, the legs would be covered. And otherwise, the legs in the Ukrainian army, they would have normal shoes, normal boots. But no, they're having high-heeled shoes because they want you to look at the legs you know, so the blood goes down and empties your head. This is what they want, you know. And it's the same as Mr. Hitler said about the head. He really said, you know, a woman, she should stay in the kitchen, you know. That, that, that's all she is good for. That's what he really said, you know. She shouldn't, you know, be mingle in polit politics or in the male's affairs, she should just make a lot of Nazi kids and um, for the um, for the Annen Erbe and, um, and stay in the kitchen. Don't get out of the kitchen, you know, you, you may go to the uh, to the bedroom and just kitchen, bedroom, bedroom, kitchen, that's all, you know, and um, and this is just to uh, to make the man crazy, you know, so they don't think anymore. And they just run out, run after the legs, both in Nazi Germany and in the Ukraine, and probably also in Russia. Well, I don't even talk about England and America. Eh? And again, the same thing happening today in 2022, or this was 21, just before the war as 90 years ago in the black and white pictures. And um, so 
Yeah, I chopped off their heads again. I, I mean, what are you going to do with a woman's head anyway, you know? This is what you need, this here. That's why the it's all accentuated by the uh, high-heeled shoes. So you watch this, and it's all covered with heads, you know? So you really don't need this on top of it, eh? Just skip that. You know, it's like, anyway, afterwards, it's like, oh, honey, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. Okay, see you in the morning. I, no, shut up. You know, I'm going to sleep, eh? I had my share, and it's okay now. So, wouldn't you like to come and join Ukraine's Foreign Legion and lie with me in the trenches? Come on, boys, take your pick, because all is fair in love and war. Come on, we're not gonna bite you. So, for the psychological propaganda, they showed all over all the media in the world simultaneously a pregnant Ukrainian sniper girl by the name of Yevgenia Emer Emerald Stepanyuka who runs a big jewelry business, as you can see here. And uh, here it says, uh, em Emerald Yev Yevgenia. So this is, they apparently in Ukrainians or Russians, they do it the other way around. So this is a surname and this is a first name. And the logo, uh, we always look at the logo, people. The logo is E squared which is a bit of reference to Einstein's uh, E equals MC squared. So that means um, there is a number on one line and uh, the horizontal part, and then there is the vertical part, and then you get a whole, a whole square, you know, like uh, exponential. So there's the word square in it, which is the concept of uh, four. So we might think, where is the concept of three? Well, look, there are three horizontal lines because uh, the square and compass guys, they, they are for the horizontal rule. And we do find three horizontal rules here, horizontal lines. One is accentuated by this here. Uh, it's, of course, it's also Emerald starts with an E, and uh, Yevgenia also with an E. So, and there's only one vertical line, which they do a lot, because we are in the horizontal rule now. So they show that more in their logos and symbols, and there's only one vertical rule, because that's where they come from, which is bigger here. It's like, like the big root of where they come from, you know. So I guess the whole sniper business and all the media is a pretty good publicity for her business, eh? For the E squared stuff. She drives a big white Porsche car saying Emerald on her number plate, thus spreading some more international publicity for her jewelry business very rapidly. As the whole world could see this incredible story of a pregnant sniper woman, thus spreading her business publicity exponentially, as in E squared, and incredibly quick. It says she's also pregnant. And this is her nickname, Dark. I think the whole story is a bit out of the dark, I must say. Especially if I look at the nice, nicely polished fingernails in red for the Red House of Pharaoh, of course, you know, indicating where she's from, the Pertasser. And I'll explain this more later about the dark. So these pharaohs are spreading their businesses exponentially as in E squared, which for us, dumb humanity, the whole story resembles more 
another sort of spreading than their spreading of their business publicity. For us, that's more like spread them or squaring the circle, as the Freemasons always say. As most of the aristocracy, this sigh up sniper business woman most likely speaks French. How do I know that? Well, her nickname is Dark, as you can see here on her clean uniform. It says Dark. And in French, one says Jean Dark which sounds like Joan Dark, which in English is not the case, saying Joan of Arc, and not Dark, as in French. Here you can see it, Jean Dark. So the D uh, Dark in French, that is actually De Arc, which is nobility the arc and it means of arc of the ruling because arcos it comes from ruling of the ruling class so joan of arc it means she's of the ruling class and jean d'arc well it sounds like joan d'arc so probably an aristocrat who can speak french Otherwise, you wouldn't come up with the idea of dark, because in English it's of arc. So here you can see the English version, the Ukrainian Joan of Arc. There's no dark in it. Only in French there's dark in it, just like her nickname, Joan Dark. She inserts the magazine of her rifle so delicately as if it were some tweezers to pull out some hairs instead of eliminating the enemy. So here, here you see the magazine and at 6.15 uh, minutes into the video, you can see her doing it. As normally you have to slam uh, the magazine when it's inside, you slam it from the bottom uh, up upwards because with all these powers in a rifle it will uh, most likely fall out if you start shooting and uh, it, it will not uh, repeat there, there won't be a next bullet in the chamber because uh, it, it doesn't fit really well it's so precise you know you have to slam it so it's it clicks in you know and most people who really th this is one of the first things you learn you know when you handle a weapon I mean yeah, okay, well, you know what I mean. I'm probably not allowed to, to say it. but uh. So here you see the uh, the Templar's cross here of this channel in, um, in white, just as the Swiss cross, which is white on the red underground, as I... And this is the, uh, the channel. So here you see her everywhere. So if you want to see that yourself, and I saw some more videos doing it. I, I saw her doing it like this. So here's the title and here is the, uh, the channel. So you can watch it yourself. So here she's giving us all the finger with her business on it and her business ring. Like saying, I got you, made some good business. It just doesn't fit the profile of a rich, successful business woman very much bound to life due to her material attachment playing the role of a female sniper and on top of that being pregnant. This has all the Hollywood ingredients for any of their movies. It has sex and romance, heroism, glamour, indestructible and invincible main character, tension, war, excitement, total media attention and whatnot. The 
psychology behind it was most likely written by the Tavistock Institute for Social Engineering, aiming some lone excluded male somewhere in the world to see, thinking by himself, gee, if a pregnant woman can do this, I, as a man, can certainly do this as well, subconsciously seeing the shimmer of a reward, a white Porsche with his personal name on it as 007 or the saint, and lots of jewels and women, immediately being loved and accepted by everyone and not so alone anymore, becoming a hero with lots of media attention and all the nice local Ukrainian girls wanting to marry him. So here I read it for you, Tavistock Institute, top secret brainwashing think tank. The Tavistock Institute was established to wage psychological warfare on the masses. It was founded by John Rawlings Rees in 1947, two days after the birth of the CIA. Tavistock has reshaped modern society through an invisible army of shock troops. Virtually every major corporation, university, and think tank are linked to Tavistock. Many social movements of the last century have been Tavistock projects, including, uh -huh, uh -huh, I'm not allowed to pronounce this because of the censorship, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh, global warming hysteria, the anti-gun movement, and radical left-wing ideas. I would like to add also the right-wing ideas. I, even more, they invented the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, rap and hip-hop music. Most Americans and Europeans have been profiled and brainwashed by Tavistock. Therefore, the pharaonic-looking sniper girl by the name of Evgenia Emerald got married to some very big muscular bodybuilder type to fit the Hollywood narrative and the Hollywood agenda and Tavistock agenda behind it. Yeah, sure. Last name Emerald on top of all that, eh? Oh, what a beautiful story, with such a happy end, with Porsches, jewels, emeralds, and even the mystical Joan of Arc dragged into the very, very obvious psyop for psychological propaganda's sake. As Joan of Arc is the epitome of a woman leading an army and a man into war. As Frenchies so very much like chasing women and running after the ladies. The French army was reluctant to fight, so Pharaoh's nobility came up with Jeanne d'Arc and one of their own to sort of seduce the man into battle. Just as this Ukrainian Jeanne d'Arc with pharaonic looks and real dark it is. It's even written here, dark, Jeanne d'Arc. Right out of the medieval dark ages. Jeanne d'Arc or Joan of Arc 
was not a saint, because her first general, Marquis Gilles de Ré, was the first ever recorded French serial killer who raped, sodomized, and tortured over 200 young boys to death. And no god warned her of this monster, as she claimed to be directly connected to God. Through some sort of direct red line with the divine protecting her and her army. So here you can read about Gilles de Ré, it's even in English. Gilles de Ré from 1405, so that's the 15th century. Baron de Ré, uh, I thought he was a Marquis, but never mind, was a knight and lord from Brittany. Anjou and Poitou, a leader in the French army and a companion in arms of Joan of Arc. Oh, there she is. He is best known for his reputation and later conviction as a confessed serial killer of children. So there's a lot of dark stuff going on in France, I tell you. As, um, as I've shown you uh, before there in that dungeon, the Freemason dungeon, which was found just a couple of days ago. And in the Ukraine, they even made this patch to put on her uniform for this not really red-haired woman with her dyed red hair. Because there was this uh, red-haired woman who also led the man into war. Her name was Budika. She led the Celtic tribes into battle against those Romans. So you really don't think that this is all a psyop, you know? A woman who doesn't even have red hair? You know, the masters always use the same techniques, the same personalities, the same symbols, as it says here, dark, as a reference to Jeanne d'Arc. So why did the scammers choose the same name of Jeanne d'Arc for their little propaganda fairy tale? Well, because it's the very same story of seducing men into war by Pharaoh's nobility, like a medieval psyop. And Ark comes from the Greek Archos, meaning to rule, as in Joan the ruler, Joan of the Ark, or Arc de Triomphe in Paris, France meaning the triumph of ruling, which in this case is the triumph of the horizontal rule, as the Arc of Triumph was erected right after the French Revolution, when the horizontal rule republic was founded as a triumph over the vertical rule feudal system of the French king. And this picture here was taken a few days ago in Paris, where we can see Zelen uh, Pharaoh Zelensky with his wife. And you can see President Pharaoh Macron with his wife. And I, I don't know why they're smiling because, you know, you can't even see it, you know. So let's have a look at the logos. So here he has uh, a little bit of red, that's where they come from, and white for the New World Order, uh, horizontal rule, which we have today, and red for the Old World Order, where they originally come from, of Pharaoh's nobility of the Pertasser, meaning the Red House. So, 
of course, what strikes the eye is this here, and also why the hand? I mean, what 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 is he doing with the hand? But okay, unfortunately, we can't see the ring here. Well, this one he has white gloves because we are in the new world's order, the White House rule. And um, of course, what strikes the eye is this symbol here, which is of course a reference to NATO. This is the NATO symbol in a um, artistic way so to speak and i mean why is he here this one here you know why is he here well it's because of nato and the war in the uh, in the ukraine so there's a circle in the symbol as well for the the compass because with the compass you can make a circle so if the compass is here then where's the square well here it is of course this is a perfect square so it says square and compass, even in white. And white is the thing what the square and compass guys, what they did. They made the, the White House, uh, the bear hat, the horizontal rule for Pharaoh. And also here in orange, there's of course a big square. And this symbol of the NATO is of course also a... Um, uh, very near to the um, to the Templars cross of the Knights Templars who you know who put it all in place in the first place here. Yeah. Funny thing is, um, why does he have his ring in on the middle finger here? Yeah. Where as you're married, I suppose it should be on the um, on this finger here. Is this a Ukrainian tradition or? Okay, so this is very important. And, you know, talking about the Ark of Triumph, this picture was taken a few days ago uh, in December 2022, probably around the 15th or something, uh, in Paris, where also the Ark of Triumph is, and uh, also where Jeanne d'Arc lived and, and Gilles de Ré. So this, of course, is a reference to the NATO symbol. So here we can see the logo of the NATO military alliance and also put on a piece of cloth. And of course, there are four things here sticking out in this star formation, which is a concept of four which stands for the square, as I already explained to you. So there must also be the concept of three, and yes, here it is in the circle, which stands for the compass. So it says not only the uh, their logo of NATO military alliance, but it also says square and compass. So once more, the logo she's wearing on her breast here. Definitely a definite reference to the NATO symbol. And I'm very sorry, I, um, I chopped their heads off again. I sort of have a habit of chopping people's head off, especially when it concerns Nazis, just as the Nazi girls before of the Bund Deutsche Mädels. And um, I guess the woman having this on her breast She's probably also part of that uh, that same sort of uh, Nazi organization. I mean, anyway, this the NATO is a Nazi organization, and just as Putin's army, by the way, they all are. You know, Nazis won the war, and they st are still there, and they're everywhere. They are in Russia, America, England, Europe, they're everywhere. We are. Some people say we are in the Fourth Reich, but I say we're still in the third one because they won the war and it never ended. It is therefore that the biggest horizontal rule country of all times has all these horizontal lines in its flag to emphasize the horizontal rule of the Knights Templars 13 times. 
because of Friday the 13th, when the French king had these Templar Satanists arrested on a Friday the 13th. And therefore, the 13 horizontal rule lines are in the red and white colours of the Knights Templars as a reference to Pharaoh's White House of Upper Egypt and Pharaoh's Red House of Lower Egypt. After Swaziland, their most important base, the US, the second New World Order horizontal rule in history, and a product of Pharaoh and their Knights Templars to rule the world through their US utopia, people's experiments, literally assembled from all over the world into one New World Order mold. And if you refuse to honor that red and white horizontal rule flag by making your own fantasy flag, you'll get slammed to the ground. I've called this film the exclusion game, like here in France, where it's everyone for him and herself. Our masters don't want peoples who stick together, like in the Ukraine, apparently, which the whole world has witnessed during the Maidan uprising in 2014, or in Catalonia in 2017, where the Catalonian people in Spain, they tried to break loose from the government of the Spanish king in Madrid. Our masters want, therefore, one mixed race one single people, one single religion, one world police, and no more nations. As Mr. Hitler said and his Nazis, Ein Reich, ein Volk, ein Führer, meaning one empire, one people, and one pharaonic leader. And this is why the Netflix propaganda is presenting us how the new totally mixed race European will look like in the future by showing us that even a royal prince can marry a mixed race girl and be happy. But be aware, Prince Harry of Pharaoh's nobility went on many fox hunting safaris in Afghanistan with his Royal Apache ground attack helicopter. And also Meghan Markle is of Swiss descent from her father's side, about which I made a video some years ago which got, of course, deleted as usual. Here it says, the Landbote newspaper said, Kaspar Gladfelder was the actress's great, 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 great grandfather. He left Switzerland for America between 1738 and 1743 with the family settling in Philadelphia. Markle's father is descended from Kaspar Gladfelder. It was in all the newspapers in Switzerland. And Markle, the name, is being pronounced as Merkel, you know, like the uh, the German uh, president, the Bundeskanzler. And Merkel, as here, Markel is, of course, Mar or Mer. It means uh, the pyramid in pharaonic, uh, dem demotic uh, language, which is not a coincidence. So this is about Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex. And, well, they write a lot, but this is interesting. In 1999, she was admitted to Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, 
where she joined the Kappa Kappa Gamma sorority. You see, a sorority. Eh? I already talked about this, and let's have a look at the logo. Their crest, it has a pyramid in it, which is also the concept of three. So there must be the concept of four. And oh, look, there it is, the square. So it says square and compass, right? And there is an owl, a uh, Freemasonic symbol, the key, as in the Vatican. There's the concept of three fleur de lis, because that's them. The concept of three, as I told you, that's why it is a fleur de lis. So it, this organization is highly Masonic. So that means uh, Meghan Markle, she attended a, a Freemason based sorority. Well, they all, they all are Freemason based, all these fraternities, sororities and sisterhoods and brotherhoods. Like uh, in Germany, the Bund Deutsche Mädels. You know, it's, it's I mean, why, why, do, why do they need to organize, you know? And, of course, to be in the majority and to, to to control other people. That's why they do this, you know, all these sisterhoods and brotherhoods and to dominate other people. And we know what kind of people is in it. Eh? It's the elite. It's our masters. It's a lot of pink list killers. It's, uh, and they have an agenda for us. Eh? So, and again, I have nothing against mixed race people. So please don't apply your dictatorship laws on me by censoring this video. I just don't like these organized killers of Pharaoh's nobility with their secret fraternities and their various sororities. I'm only documenting and analyzing our master's agenda. That's all. Thus revealing their true intentions behind the media smiles. And therefore, as in this title of the film, the exclusion game is being widely practiced in the West in order to breed the perfect, obedient slave race, using methods as the Horus Matrix, social exclusion and constant police terror by Pharaoh's authorities. And concerning the Horus Matrix, I'll give you some proofs how the Horus Matrix was prepared by the witches of France and their masters just before the slaughterhouse of World War I. When France lost one and a half million men dead and three and a half million wounded, of whom one out of three disabled for life, which is also 1.2 million disabled. They call it La Grande Guerre, meaning the Great War. Well, I don't know what's so great about it, unless you look at the great success of the Horus Matrix and how the witches of Europe prepared it together with their masters. So just before the great war of the Horus Matrix, the witches of Europe with their masters of Pharaoh's nobility started to announce their mischief through the media available in those days. Just as the enemy within today spreads messages through Hollywood movies, as I've shown you here in this video and in many 
other videos. Here's the title, Secret Message Transmissions in Movies on Channel Homeland Security. Or through world events through which they spread messages, like the Notre Dame Cathedral arson, which I've explained in this video here and many other videos. So here's the title on the same channel here. So at the end of the 19th century and just before World War I, there was only the printing industry available to spread secret messages. But a newspaper would be too obvious because newspapers are for words and letters. And well, they didn't want to spell it all out for us about their evil deeds being in the make for the Europeans and their soldiers. So they decided it needed a visual to hide the message in a picture or caricature as you can see here and the hideous bunch started to create and spread the so-called horus matrix postcards so all the european witches got to know how to deal with the situation and send their man into the war so they could raise a new race of European males without the influence of their fathers, who were therefore meant to die in the Great War of the Horus Matrix, killing altogether 10 million European men who would never see nor raise their children. And on these nice colourful postcards just before World War I, it showed a combination of mainly two ingredients, war and reproduction. So here is the ingredient war of the guy, the French soldier in blue, and here two little babies with a helmet on, and the second ingredient here, a reproduction. So the babies seem to be growing in a field, you know, and just needing a little bit of water and it grows. So it just needs the woman giving it a bit of water. It doesn't need the man anymore. And she's saying it like with her finger, like, you know, we don't need you anymore. It just needs the woman giving them a little bit of water, which means they just need some food and they don't need uh, a father who's telling them, you know, raising the boys like, listen, boy, life is like this and this and this, you know, this is the Horus Matrix, there's no more father, chuck, chopped off. So we can see that the whole war, it was prepared, you know, the man had to die because mankind, we are a, um, we are just human livestock, you know, for these pharaohs. And we have a um, we have an alliance with the women, and also her dress is in red and white. You know, white for the new world's order, red for the old world's order. These are the colors of the um, of the Knights Templars, and a grand de poilu. So I'll explain that to you later. Just as that pregnant sniper a woman in the Ukraine, transmitting the Horus Matrix to all the witches in the world who have made the alliance with the snake on Pharaoh's head, thus transmitting the very same two ingredients for the Ukraine war, namely war and reproduction. Just as on the pre-World War I postcards in France, showing lots of babies growing on a field, 
and a French soldier with the slogan like Grand de Poilu. So, and notice she's having a red dress again of the Red House of Pharaoh of the Old World's Order. So, here you see the same words over and over again Grand de Poilu. Now, what does that mean? So here you see a little boy with a helmet, a little soldier coming out of an egg, which is really weird. So the egg has the pharaonic colors, red, white, and blue, which are also the national colors of the French flag. And here is the rooster. Um, in all uh, official documents, you see La Marianne, which is the equivalent, the French equivalent of Isis. You can see see her standing with a rooster, as Isis normally she's standing with the uh, the Horus falcon. Now you need to understand French to be able to understand the real Horus matrix sense of the message "grain de poilu." Grain it means the seed or like grain in English. As you can see, the woman sowing the seed here. And a poilu means the hairy one, and was, and still is, the nickname of the French soldiers of World War I. Here it says poilu. And poilu is an informal term for a late 18th century and 20th century French infantryman, meaning literally the hairy one. It is still widely used as a term of endearment for the French infantry of World War I. The word carries the sense of the inf infantryman's typically rustic agricultural background and derives from the bushy moustache and other facial hair affected by many. French soldiers after the outbreak of the war as a sign of masculinity. The Poilu was particularly known for his love of Pinard, his ration of cheap wine. The image of the uh, dogged, bearded French soldier was widely used in propaganda and war memorials. The stereotype of the Poilu was of bravery and endurance but not always of unquestioning obedience. So, Grand de Poilu means together with the picture of all the babies growing everywhere, the seed of soldiers or the sperm of man, and very much related to the Horus Matrix. So, here you see a couple of rifles and a gun here. A cannon with a baby on it, the French flag here in the pharaonic colors, red, white, and blue. Here you got the uh, the Red Baron of the First World War. So it's the um, the drums here for the war to announce the war. And uh, and here's like the sun dying away in the clouds of the um, of the war and the explosions. So you can see definitely here the two ingredients of reproduction with all these babies here and uh, war, Horus Matrix, just as in the Ukraine. Here it says again, Grain de Poilu. So now you know what it means. Here's a Templar's cross and here's the concept of four, which is us. So the European man and in particular, the French men are sent into their deaths and the French women are asked to reproduce and take the seed of man in order to reproduce mankind new from scratch. Not anymore after the image of God and with the help of their fathers teaching them, but after the image of something evil and make pinkless killers and drug addicts out of them. The Bunto Chamedas! So here it says here, originally, Cliché dangereux, Paris. 
dangereux, it means dangerous. Uh, you can see that. And cliché, it means like an image. But cliché is also, in fact, a um, the negative um, image of a, a photograph. The old way, like 100 years ago, or not even that. You, you got the negative of a photograph, and that's a cliché. And a... Um, you know, it's very important that they wrote their cliché dangereux. So we, we must go to the bottom of this to understand it, because it's a message, yeah? Otherwise, they, they wouldn't put it there. So in English, the word cliché, as you know, it also means a phrase or opinion that is overused and betrays a lack of or original thought. For instance, that old cliché, a woman's place is in the home. So it, it means a stereotype. So how can we um, refer to this, like looking at this at the Horus Matrix, right? that it is a phrase or opinion that is overused and betrays a lack of or original thought. So this means they come with a new idea. And not with the old stereotype, you know, we have babies, the men get raised by the, the boys get raised by the fathers. No, 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 we're gonna, that's cliche. Yeah, that's the evil ones, what they want to say with it. They say, we, we're gonna make a new type of man, you know, and we're not gonna have the stereotype European man anymore. We're gonna recreate him. And that's why it says cliche dangereux. It's again, another hidden message as I already did this 120 years ago eh? or 150 I suppose. Some other images say grande chou where chou means cabbage as in French slang and daily language un petit chou means a little baby and in the old days, and maybe not that long ago, you could hear the women say, you know, oh, Sam Petit Chou, you know, it's a little baby. Now they don't want any more Petit Chou and little babies. Now they want a Mini Cooper, so you don't hear that anymore. So a Grande Chou, in fact, also means just sperm of a man because you don't want to write sperm on a postcard over all those little babies. So they write grand de chou instead. It's more decent and everybody gets the meaning. This is called a euphemism in literature. And in other postcards, it says, La canne à papa pour repeupler, repeupler il n'y a que ça, meaning father's cane to repopulate, there's no other way, where the cane is, of course, a male's sexual organ. Just as this one here, with a red rose, which always stands for the red house, the Pertasse of Pharaoh, as the red rose is always a symbol for the nobility. And where it says, le fusil à répétition, meaning a repeating rifle, with a lot of babies hanging underneath the rifle or whatever they want to say with that. As we said in the army, this is your rifle and this is your gun. This is for fighting and this is for fun which is an old army saying and also the two ingredients of the Horus matrix war and reproduction this is not a coincidence that they talk about this in a Hollywood movie in another one it says on les aura which means we'll get them, referring to both the Germans and getting babies. It says, on les aura, uh, we'll get them, the babies 
I will get the Germans. Here it says Kamarad, which is not written correctly because this second A should be a uh, E. So with this pregnant Ukrainian sniper woman fairy tale going around the world, it's the same old Horus Matrix story where the masters and his sisters of Isis are going to do the same old great reset Horus Matrix, but now on the Eastern European tribes who are not very obedient to Pharaoh, where there are too many good women who defend their sons and husbands against the army and who refuse to take Pharaoh's poison into their veins due to the bug war. These Pharaohs even show human babies hatching out of an egg on a farm and as human sheeple, as they are literally breeding us. And can you imagine these postcards were only 120 years ago and now 2022 we've got this here the same idea behind the same people behind only far more sophisticated and advanced and this here is what the ultimate Horus matrix will look like after all these world wars and other butcheries, genocides and invasions of armies over the last 2000 years. And we can already see it happening in our days, how all people are alike, doing the same things, wanting the same things, talking the same things, having the same haircut, all looking alike and even think the same things, impregnated through political indoctrination and social engineering. The modern word, the Great Reset, means the same as the Horus Matrix, or rather the Horus Matrix is one of the techniques to enable the Great Reset, through which humanity has become just a mere product. Which reminds me of this here happening, about which I cannot verify its authenticity but if it is real it's real scary and would also fit in with our master's agenda of a great reset of their human livestock which the swiss klaus schwab in their base davos in switzerland has literally pronounced the Great Reset. Due to the generally applied censorship, I guess I'm not allowed to pronounce all the words here. So I'll let you look at it yourself and I'll put the links in the description. So read the text here and here you can find it on this video platform here. And you can read here and just look at the eyes. So this child apparently is two weeks old, which normally it should have still been sleeping the whole day. So again, I cannot verify if it's all true, all this. So I can take no responsibility for this. And here again is the entire title. But um, I suppose it's true. But again, I need facts and um, 
but due to the um, to what they're doing, what they want, and um, it's um, the it's likely to be uh, to be real. You know, the tendency is all going this way. I mean, they they are lying to us and uh, forcing us to take. Uh, uh, Pharaoh's poison, and um, of course there's an effect. You know that, that's why they're doing it. Yeah. So again, I cannot uh, verify its uh, authenticity, and um, you have to check it out yourself. So here you can see an image of the Great Reset, about which the Swissies in Davos, Switzerland, are actually talking about in 3D in real life and we all heard it and here another video and which is actually happening now I mean making these videos I um, I don't know if it's all true so therefore I will not pronounce all these words and here's the channel here's the title uh, so you can check it out yourselves. Considering the fact that they really talk about a great, a great reset and that they forced Pharaoh's poison into our veins and all this, um, I guess it's true. I mean, um, my deduction, you know, and um, academic deduction or any academic de deduction will tell you that um, there's a... Um, there's a big chance that it's uh, that it's true. I guess for the masters in Switzerland and their great reset, this would be the perfect slave race. And notice the Freemason black and white checkerboard, just as in the Freemason torture chamber recently found in France. And another video, just uh, read the text yourself. And there are many videos about this phenomenon, or maybe it's a scam, I don't know. And you just punch these two words in the, um, in the search bar and you'll find it. This is another channel name where this video is on. I'll put it in the link. So uh, I put the link in the description and uh, so you check it out yourself. Most of humanity are not asking themselves and that's why the question mark but our masters do know what they want us heading towards. And as we all know this is actually what the Swissies in Davos, Switzerland and their Swiss Klaus Schwab, what they actually said, the Great Reset during the World Economic Forum. And this here is what Swissy here during this here, what he actually said. I guess due to the censorship, I'm not allowed to pronounce it, especially this word here. Um, I mean, they can say all things they want, but we are not allowed to say certain things. But what is interesting here, he calls it a rare but narrow window of opportunity. A rare but narrow window, a window in time. You know, so it means they have very little time to execute their agenda or what they want to do. So this also means that they created it. I mean, he's saying it, you know, a rare but narrow window. They have very little time to execute their agenda, all the things. And I mean, if you put this in context with the videos I just showed you, I mean, it all fits together. Eh? So here you can see the babies sitting in the trenches. 
you know, here's the barbed wire, and here's well, and here it says des canons de munition. So I guess we all understand what that means. The cannons are the male sexual organs, and the ammunition here, the munition, is of course the sperms, like the two ingredients of their agenda of the Horus Matrix, which are war and reproduction. So 120 years ago, the masters and their European witches were already working towards the Great Reset through the Great War. And everything so great for them, the Great War, the Great Reset, and a great democracy by George Bush. Mission accomplished, a great democracy. And now they've got all the means to finalize their project. Bye bye, humanity. You were so dumb. Mission accomplished. As it says here, mission accomplished. In this struggle of the fittest, there's just no place for human stupidity anymore. End of party, game over. Here we can see some more babies and human livestock growing in a field of cabbages. This guy here, he represents the Grim Reaper of the battlefield. And he has this um, thing here as, um, you know, as a reference to the fact that they are breeding humanity. And this guy here, he has a rose around his walking stick, which is a, and you see how he's dressed, you know, this is the elite, eh? This is stupid humanity, they don't understand a thing. And um, funny enough, he only has three fingers here. And on this hand, he has uh, rings, it looks like a skull of death, a Freemason skull here. And he has it on his signet, uh, it's a signet ring which the aristocracy do, and it means if you want to transmit some messages, as Freemasons do and the nobility, they put a ring on the signet ring, on the little finger. And this is what it means. And uh, so the red rose means that he's a part of the red house of Pharaoh, which is the old world's order, the vertical rule, uh, where they originally come from. The woman has three colors here, white for the New World Order Horizontal Rule, blue for the war, and red for the Old World Order, the Red House, the Pertasser, where they originally come from. And he also got a, a red tie here. So saying like he's tied up with, the, with his ancestry or something of the kind, you know. They were already giving messages like 200 years ago, and even before that, which I showed you, which they did in stone before they had the uh, the printing presses and they showed it in stone like on the fronts of houses showing the um, the sun hieroglyph and the joining and all these things I've showed you in the uh, in the pharaoh show and here they even made a whole baby machine out of it the woman is in red for the old world's order the red house of pharaoh that's why it says here, Grande de Rose, it means the seed of roses. Well, that's the nobility, the roses, as I've explained to you. And here it's Grande de Chou, which is the normal European population, the uh, seed of the cabbages. They, they see us as plants or something they breed. And you see how the two are mixed, meaning the Jus Prime Noctis, how they rape our women in the castle and made the alliance. That that what's it, that what it means, you know. It's a little bit of European blood here and a little bit of um, 
the nobility's pharaohs, nobility's blood, it gets all uh, mixed here. It says Pio Inventeur. I don't know what Pio Inventeur it means an inventor. It says something about Papa. I can't read it. Of course, he's missing his daddy. Eh? He's, he died in the war. And here, you know, the babies come. It's all like, you know, this is the reset. You know, this is AI, artificial intelligence. And, and they, are not, they are there now. We are there, you know. And here that we're still dreaming of it. And why does he have a key here? You know, and it says here, repos, population. Repos, it means um, a pause, you know, like uh, repos. You say that to soldiers, you know, like uh, at ease, repos, soldier. Um, take a break, repos. And here it says, c'est jour de repos hebdomadaire. That means every week, hebdomadaire is a week, weekly. Il nous faut repos pulé, mon cher. So repos, it means um, take a day off, you know, a pause. Uh, repos pulé, it means reproduction. So this is a kind of a wordplay, you know, with uh, when the soldier is um, he's having a, a day off, you know, like three days uh, back um, away from the front. He needs to repopulate. You know, that's what it's all about. So they, the nobility, Pharaoh's nobility, they really see us as, as they're breeding us, you know, a machine. And now they really got the machine, you know. And uh, we're really there. And um, I think we're lost. I mean, yes, we are lost. You know, we believed all their lies and uh, humanity is lost. Bye-bye. Yeah. And why is it all in French all the time? As it says here, République. It's a, a French stamp from 150 years ago. Well, because the pharaoh's nobility could really grab Europe and starting off uh, in France after the, um, the Germanic tribes, they ransacked Rome and that was the end of the Roman Empire, basically. And they all came to France. That's why French became the language of the nobility. And therefore, the Knights Templars, they were born in France. And they made their utopia in Switzerland as they were chased by the, um, by, by the, uh, the French um, vertical rule of the, the French kings. So, and the Republic, the New World's Order Horizontal Rule, it really started in France, although the first New World's Order Horizontal Rule uh, happened in the United States only a few years, so in 1776, which was only, um, I think, how much? 13 years before it also happened in France. And of course, America is the biggest uh, horizontal rule, New World Order, and a big experiment. Who are not a people, because 250 years ago, there was no American people. They're a product of these ones here. So here you see four kiddies, which is the concept of four, which is us, humanity. And this, of course, in the fish, it's like a huge vagina hey, with a little bit of red here, the, the lips of the vagina, you know. And, um, and this guy here is, of course, of, by the nobility. And there are three here, the concept of three, which is them, our masters. And they're fishing like humanity, they're just fishing humanity out of the out of the ditch or here in Paris probably and you see this guy here it's like a saint you know and he gets he, he has the sun or she has the sun behind her head you know that's Amun Ra for the sun as their sun worshippers so humanity are depicted all the time no more than animals out of a ditch you know like a fish you can just fish them and uh, more up on the ladder, like it's the nobility concept of three. And on top of this are the saints and uh, ancient Egypt, probably, with the Amun-Ra, the sun, where they all come from. 
That's why you see here together the white dress and the red dress, meaning um, the white house of Pharaoh of Egypt and here the red dress of um, uh, the Pertasser, the red house of Pharaoh, together with the Amun-Ra, the sun, and here the same thing. So it's all in the picture, you know, they they transmit all the the information through the pictures, you know. And here the babies are being depicted as birds on a telephone cable. And um, so here you see Little Friends Village. It's a lovely country though, you know. And here you see the Frenchies, l'amour, l'amour, you know. Um, you know, that's what they think about all the time. You know, it's, it's, they, they started to behave basically as the nobility, as their masters, you know. Whereas in, in, in the Germanic culture, you know, it's, it's not really like that. You know, it's, um, you don't behave like that, you know, like, um, uh, chasing women all the time and it's becoming a bit like this you know it's, uh, due to the whole indoctrination all this so here's frenzy like you know mm, you know and it's something i really despise you know as a gentleman you don't behave like this you know um so there's a joke about frenzy you know about what does frenzy do when he has made love answer he goes home. And again, all these postcards are French. You know, they got French uh, stamps on it. And, um, you know, it's uh, just before World War I. They were really preparing the genocide uh, on the French man, mostly, and all the European man on, on, on the white race, so to speak. And therefore, here you see the sheeple. It's really a good name. And there are four of them, so it's a concept of four, which is us, humanity. We are the sheeple. And we are like connected, you know, we're getting milk by the animals. You know, we are animals. That's how they depict humanity. And here in red, with an umbrella, you see the nobility that comes strolling, uh, passing by, you know, on, the, on a road. Whereas humanity, they're just sitting in the grass. The nobility takes a road. Well, actually, she's also next to it. Well, never mind. <laughs> so the concept of four. Yeah, if I've explained it to you, and you see all the proofs of it, eh? the sheeple, the human sheeple, and the concept of four, the humanity is lost. You know, just look at all the proofs. It's it's gone. You know, just game over. And again, all the postcards are French because this is where World War I played. See, this is all here in French. Si tout de même l'on pouvait sortir, ne pleure pas, tu seras laide. Don't cry, you get ugly. Un peu de silence. So this is the master. Why is this penguin doing here? Oh yeah, he's in white and black. All right, Freemasonry. It's a reference to the white and red uh, checkerboard configuration. And this here is the whip of Pharaoh. It's another reference. And this baby here says, so, so this is the nobility, this one here. He's on a higher uh, level, just as no, the Freemasonry, they're on a higher level, they're, like they're teaching humanity, the, um, or like social engineering. Uh, indoctrination and this is humanity same thing it's always the same thing and here uh qu'est-ce que j'ai pris comme fessé oh it's weird you know here you see the ducks coming out of the egg just like the other pictures you know ah vivement la soupe on ne dit rien dans le coin on va bientôt s'en aller et puis maman va bientôt venir pourvu qu'on aille jouer bientôt Ah, chic, voilà le bon point. Si tout de même, l'on pouvait sortir. Okay, not, not very important what they say. So you see, it's every time the same, eh? The pharaoh with the whip is on a higher level. And also Freemasonry with the black and white uh, checkerboard configuration.
So here is a close-up picture of the baby machine we saw before and where I couldn't read here what the baby was saying. So here we can see it. It says, Bonjour, Papa. Hello, Daddy. I'm here. I'm coming out of the machine. This is what they want, you know, that the babies are going to be made in a machine, you know, like uh, artificial insemination. You know, that, that's what it shows. And we are there now. They already knew it was going to come, right? Eh? You're just falling into a bag. Yeah, I got him just like a cabbage, yeah? So here it says force virile. It's the same in English. Viril, it means virile. The virile force, you know, going into his loin with a, with a key and a lock on it. The virile force with a key and a lock. It means, this means he's going to be like infertile, which is, of course, the uh, what they're aiming at with the um, uh, pharaoh's uh, poison they want to put in our uh, in our blood like you know which will make us um, infertile which is already happening and here this is interesting you see two balls here, which is connected to, to the virile force two balls and look at this square and compass meaning they are the ones behind it and they are going to inseminate the women when the men are going to be infertile and i've seen it remember why i had to run you know in this uh why I, I, I went to this um um this site where they where, where they were doing rituals and I had to run for my life you know and you could see this uh, woman being um like a, a skeleton, you know, being uh, sterile. And uh, well, we are there now. And that was before the uh, they wanted to put Pharaoh's poison into our blood. And now we're there, you know. I already warned you, like, years before that. So, you know, this is also, of course, the, the Freemasons are, uh, they come out of Pharaoh's nobility, especially the higher degrees um over the, the 30th degree where they all have that um that crusader sign in their logo you know and um as they did in the middle ages with the um the use prime noxies when i raped our women you can see the same thing happening they're going to mix here the their their insemination you know like raping our women that's going to come here into his loin, you know, the virile force. And it, it's another way of showing the use prime noctis when they raped our women on the first night of the marriage uh, in the castles. And here too, she has a, she has a key hanging onto it here uh, in red hey, for the, uh, I, I wonder what this is. What is this? You know, it all has a meaning. Everything has a meaning and it's all in front in French. And this is also one of the reasons that the French, as the only country in Europe that could kick the American armies out, like in the after the Second World War, it's the only country because it all comes from there. You know that's why they have the power to kick the Americans out. There's no other country in Europe, in Western Europe, except Switzerland, of course, which can do that. And that's why it's all French here. And here, a lot of kids. So here, no babies. Oh, here's one baby. Oh, yeah. One baby and a lot of girls. Could that be the sisters of Isis, all the girls? Why, why aren't there any men? You know, why two in yellow? And this seems to be a boy. Two boys, a uh, one boy with a lot of girlies. Eh? Is that a sorority? You know, like the Buntotsa Middles. You know? And here says Sarah. All oh, has a meaning. And Sarah is a pharaonic name. As Sar, it means the king or pharaoh, also the queen. And Ah, like in Per Ah, the big house, it means uh, big or pregnant. So that means here, yes, Sarah, and we see a lot of women. Sarah, Sar Ah, you pronounce the word Sarah as Sar Ah. And Sar Ah, it means uh, queen, pregnant meaning uh, the lineage uh, out of whom all the um, coming out of a queen or all the queens are coming out 
So you see the probably here the lineage of this what they call the the sisters of Isis, the sorority, you know. And here the donkey, because I don't know. It's probably this is probably representing humanity stupid as a donkey. And what does the shadow give out here? It's kind of weird. What what is this? You know, this is not on the horse here. This here. This could be the ears, but what is this? And there's only one person riding it, not, not the whole bunch. It all has a meaning, people. And this is French again. It's old. It's uh, preparing things, giving messages, just as they give the messages today through television, newspapers, um, Hollywood videos showing that big obelisk every time and etc. And in those days, there was postcards giving out the messages and how to act in the future, you know, amongst themselves, like the um, the Notre Dame arson, you know, which was seen over the whole world. You know, these kind of type of things yeah, to, to transmit messages. Okay, I got it. Together with the word Sarah, Sarah, you know, the lineage of the um, the sisters of Isis. You know, this. there's only one guy. So together with this uh, basket here, um this must be a reference to moses you know and this must mean that moses he had an alliance going on with all these girlies you know just like the european women nowadays they have an alliance with pharaoh i mean if you're married nowadays with a woman you know there's a big chance you there's a divorce they're going to take away your children and she's going, going to call up the police because she's more married with the system and the police and the justice department as she is married with a man. So this is definitely the alliance of Moses and um, so Pharaoh, Pharaoh Moses and the basket as in River Nile, the biblical story together with so Pharaoh here together with the sisters of Isis and the alliance with the women the European women, as in Bunt Deutsche Mädels. So here you can see a lot of babies in a boat on the, uh, in the sea. You can see the, uh, the sailing boats in those days, you know, like this is the end of the 19th century. It's already a steamship here. So how do you interpret this? You know? Okay, I'll give you a hint. Look very well at the type of boats here. Gondola, gondola. Eh, remember, you know, this is like the pharaonic sunbark here. And the sunbark is related to death. You know, the men are dying at the battlefield and they have to make, rip, reproduce a lot of babies. Yeah. So we see this here. This is the sun bark. You know, there are no European ship boats like this, you know, going up. And here we can still see them in Venice. Yeah. And it's like an, uh, you know, he's getting out, you know, it's like an invasion sort of, you know. So after the death and the sun bark, you know, the, the man going, up, going over to the other, to the other world, like, you know. And they need to see it to make a lot of babies, you know. It's again the two ingredients death and war with the sun bark and reproduction, a whole lot of babies. Um, these are very non typical European boats here. Uh, I've never seen one like this, you know, and really going up on both sides. It's typically the sun bark and the gondola, gondola, a nice Venice. Here you see a lot of babies growing in a tree because they are masters, our pharaohs, nobility. They see us as animals. To which I must admit, you know, it, it does have something, yeah. There's some truth in it. If you look at the stupidity of humanity. No wonder they despise us. So here they're even cooking the babies. How could they? 
Oh, you see, it's again, it's French. The République Française, the French Republic. This is La Marianne, what I told you about. This is the, um, the equivalent of uh, Isis. And she, usually she's standing with a rooster. As Isis, she's hanging on to the uh, Taurus sun, the Horus uh, falcon. And so it depicts, you know, how they look upon humanity. You know, they just see us as something they can dispose of and, and cook the babies, you know. Or maybe like cooking them like in a laboratory, which is happening now. Well, anyway, humanity is cooked anyway. It's, it's finished. And here, this is interesting. You see a lot of upper class babies, you know, with a monocle. And the monocle is a circle, so it stands for the compass. Each one of them has it. So where's the square? Well, the square is in the wall behind it. Oh, you think that's far-fetched? Well, don't you believe this? You know, they are obsessed with it. They're absolutely obsessed. Here's the red flowers for the, um, for the red house of Pharaoh. And the, uh, the upper-class babies are in, a, um, are in a little bag of a newspaper in which in uh, the 19th century they would put like candy in it. If you'd buy something, they didn't have plastic bags in those days. Or some, um, some chips you could buy somewhere. That's why the Americans call chips uh, French fries, because it's all French, yeah. And so it says square and compass all over. And they all have a monocle, they all have a hat, and they're all dressed in white. For the new system, the horizontal rule of the white house. So means the nobility here wants the white house. And in a way, they're far better off here in the, uh, in the bag here as uh, the human babies uh, were, you know, like being depicted as all sort of animals and growing on a field. Uh, these ones are, they're not growing on a field. They're not depicted with animals. There's no reference to animals. They are like nicely in a white paper bag, you know, and here's black. It's a, it has a black ribbon around it. Now, what does that mean? Eh? And there's one red here because it always shows one a little bit of red because that's where they originate from. From the Pertasser, the Red House, uh, the Old World Order. YouTube's wars look nice and makes you feel going there. There's no blood. There are pregnant women with Porsches and sniper rifles. Wow, let's take the airplane, homie. We need to go shredding the narrative, people, because they're all lying to us in this devilish mouse trap. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I'm not there. I have died with honor. Valhalla awaits me. They have turned it all around now. Paradise used to be for the brave in the old times of our ancestors. Now, with this Christian influence, paradise is only for obedient cowards, all in advantage for our pharaonic masters. And with brave, I don't mean to go and fight in Pharaoh Zelensky's foreign legion. Get orders from some nobility officer and get killed randomly by the machines. The songs of my ancestors have not faded into time. I still sing them in this heathen heart. Of mine. Here, look, I read it out loud for you. How West plans to rebuild war ravaged Ukraine. So, look 
how they are already preparing for the time after, as if it were all a big plan with the war included and all. Here it says, High Level Conference on Rebuilding Ukraine and Civil Dialogue by the Civil Society Europe, co-funded by the European Union, of course, and the European Environmental Bureau and the colors of the Ukraine behind it, like a splash of blood. So the EU is already saying they will help rebuild the Ukraine with a modern martial plan, just as the one after World War II. It really seems that they have been knowing from the very beginning how the war will develop, what will come afterwards, that in fact it, the whole war has been a big setup. So here we see Ursula von der Leyen, nobility. I saw his face, but I don't remember who that guy is. This is the Chancellor of Germany. And here it says, International Expert Conference on the Recovery, Reconstruction and Modernization of Ukraine. Well, what do they mean with modernization? They mean a total control society, just as we see it in Europe. And, um, you know, with these ones ruling over the Ukraine, they're going to dictate all the rules by these things here, recovery, reconstruction and modernization. And modernization, it means the execution of the entire Freemason agenda with pink list killers and um, a forced um, pharaoh's um, bug war poison into their veins and uh, etc. That's what they mean with it. So the whole thing is the typical Ordo ab Cao, order out of chaos. And chaos is the war and rebuilding Ukraine is the order after the chaos. It's all been planned, you know, like this. It's all a plan, you know, just put it together. And the concept of four, it's all square stuff here with a little bit and a circle here for the, um, it's a perfect circle, eh? And it's not the way like usually a puzzle piece is going to be fitted like this, which is usually not like this. Well, anyway, it says Ukraine invest, your investment matters, general partner, ICC, rebuilding Ukraine with the private sector, international investment fair. It's a whole fair for them. It's like a circus, you know. So who's going to pay all this? Well, the Ukrainians have no more money. And neither do the Russians, because the oligarchs stole everything. So it's the American and the European taxpayer who's going who's gonna to pay everything. And how? With higher gas prices, how a pet higher petrol prices and everything, higher, higher taxes, everything. And these one here, you know, all the, the business sharks all ready to find, you know, to to get more money and earn more money for the pharaonic companies with the Freemason logo on it. And it's all going to be paid out of your pocket. Right? It's all prepared. It's Ordo Ab Cao. It's a complete setup, just like the Second World War. The EU rebuilding the Ukraine. And we all know by now about the Nazi roots behind the EU, with former Nazi generals building the EU after World War II, after the very Nazi principles of Ein Reich, Ein Volk, Ein Führer, or in English, one EU empire, one European people and one EU Secretary General, making all former sovereign European nations 
subordinate to the EU. So, hey, dear Ukrainians, let's have the next Maidan uprising in Brussels or in Strasbourg. And I'm already giving you all the necessary intel for your next post war uprising against the EU dictatorship. And I know you will, because you are smart enough to understand that you have been betrayed. Therefore, Pharaoh Zelensky allegedly asked the Ukrainians in November 2022 to leave the country before the winter because the Ukrainian state can't provide enough energy for the winter of 2022-2023. It says Ukraine's Zelensky asks Ukrainians to consider leaving country before the winter. Therefore, his pal, Mad Vlad, had to bomb all the energy structures in the Ukraine, like electrical power plants. Make Russia Soviet again. So, with already 11 million Ukrainians who left their homes, and maybe even as much as 15 million, the country will be empty soon and ready to invite another Ukrainian foreign legion of Muslim guest workers like Turks and Arabs to so-called rebuild the Ukraine by the EU in post-war Ukraine. Exactly the same schedule as after World War II in Europe. It's getting boring, really. Pharaoh is always using the same techniques over and over again. And no, I have absolutely no problems with immigrants, as I am an immigrant from Africa myself. And actually in France and in Europe, mostly in France, I met a lot of nice Arabs and other Muslim people who took me hitchhiking. I made some Turkish and Chechen friends. So I have absolutely no problems with immigrants. I'm just documenting again what our masters want to do with the world. And amongst all this, just don't lose sight of their Freemason agenda of Pharaoh's nobility and their alliance with the European witches. And you'll know what the real planning behind the screens will look like. And the Bund Deutsche Mädels! Europe and America are the global witches universities where immigrant women and their daughters get taught all the tricks to dominate the man, how and when to cry, when calling the cops, how to kidnap his children, how to occupy key positions like being social workers and what not, and how to seduce the Bund Deutsche Mädels. So now 11 million Ukrainians with their wives meeting Western witches and Western pink list killers. And with their Ukrainian daughters attending Western schools, being processed through the West, her witches' universities. How to dominate 
those uneasy Eastern European men, while the pharaonic masters take care of the whole setup politically, militarily, logistically, and money wise. Unfortunately, those Western witches do not resemble the stereotype witch but they are far more seducing like these here and mind you this is happening today as this modern picture from Switzerland the base of the Nazi Templars is showing us at the same time the Swiss finances of Nazis as they financed Hitler, Putin and all the Russian oligarchs in Geneva, filling the safe vaults of the Swiss Nazi Templar banks. One of the Swiss seven heads of the Swiss beast dares to visit Ukraine on October 20th of 2000 and 22 and says Kiev already feels cold a chilling message saying Kiev is as good as dead by the Swiss masters behind Mr Putin and the red dot here together with the Swiss cross means and is transmitting that he is part of the old world order, the Red House of Pharaoh's nobility. And the red dot is also in a circle, standing for the compass, which is the concept of three, who are our masters. And you can see the Swiss flag is in a perfect square. There's no other country in the entire world except the Vatican, who belongs to the Swiss, with the Swiss guard and the Swiss police watching over the Vatican, that has a square flag. If you compare with the flag of Ukraine, it's long like any other flag in the world. So basically, only Switzerland has a square flag, because the world is being ruled out of Pharaoh's base in the Alps, meaning to say there's no other country like Switzerland which, which needs this distinction of a completely other flag. And at the same, same time, it says square, like in square and compass, in the Knights Templars colors, red and white, and which also refers to the red and white house of Pharaoh. Here, December 2022, at the Pharaonic US Congress speech, Pharaoh Nancy Pelosi and her Cleopatra look, giving a pyramid to Pharaoh Zelensky, the ruler over the Ukraine. It shows the color blue for Pharaoh's war crown, which is also transmitted through Pelosi's blue war dress, and white for the new Republican horizontal rule, four times for the Freemason concept of four, for the square, and where the base of the pyramid is where the Ukrainian slaves are, who need a reset Horus matrix for their disobedient characters. And of course, Nancy's dress portrays the same colors as the pyramid, a lot of blue for the war and a little bit of white for the Republican horizontal rule of the Per Het White House. The whole Congress pyramid is in a triangle for the concept of three, referring 
to the compass and the pyramid's side for pharaoh's hierarchy and masters of humanity so altogether the gift and its message transmission to the whole world says square and compass of which of course both pelosi and zelensky are freemason members there's no doubt otherwise you wouldn't even get your one single foot squeezed into their high security freemason congress where it smells everywhere keep all normal americans out here it says u.s house of representative and we all know what they mean with the house eh? like the white house it's a pharaonic house the whole thing it looks like a temple it doesn't look like a house it's a palace and it means a, a royal pharaonic house a descendants a lineage that's what it means it's not the house a representative well we all know what they're representing well in, a, in any case they're not re representing the normal americans who can't even get in here they are representing ancient egypt here put in watching cnn and thinking by himself man it's so good to be part of this international freemason brotherhood conglomerate and see my dear friends pelosi and zelensky here on telly in my own kremlin and oh look there's my good old friend biden as well in the congress waiting for zelensky oh what a beautiful world so i've already explained you what this means in a previous video called the swiss beast uh, home of the devil number nine here in this channel like five videos back it's of course a um, equivalent ukrainian equivalent of the uh, fleur de lis of the french kings in yellow on blue same thing and it's the crest of the um ukrainian king thousand years ago volodymyr the great the same volodymyr name as this one here and volodymyr raped more than thousand women so it is the crest and symbol of the rapist nobility if you like and as i've told you that they also transmit secret messages with their ties and here of course the unmistakable blue and yellow colors of the ukraine and if that message wasn't enough yet pharaoh biden had to double up and overdo it for his zealous ego so he chose his tutank amon tie out of his egyptian closet with the colors blue and gold giving the message transmission a double meaning for all the truly initiated presented and watching tally like his pal mr putin that in the u.s congress the descendants of pharaoh's nobility are gathered while the dumb slaves only grasping the blue and yellow ukrainian colors if the sleeper would grasp anything at all which i doubt very explicitly at more or less the same time and also very much related to the ukraine war and its consequences for the german people on december the 7th 
2022, there was an alleged coup d'etat in Germany by the Prince Heinrich XIII of the Royal House of Reuss of a 700-year-old noble bloodline of the vertical rule Old World Order, living in the castle of Weidmannsheil. The word Heil in its name, as in Heil Hitler, here's the name, Weidmannsheil, same castle. Heil, it means hail. So here you can read some more about the uh, castle. Here it says, Das Jagdschloss Weidmanns Heil um 1907. Unfortunately, it's, uh, it's all in German. So there you go, Weidmanns Heil. Bunt Deutscher Mädels. So here you can read some more about the, uh, the prince Heinrich the 13th. Prince Reuss. Yes, it almost sounds like Ross. No. So there he is. A lot of red. We know what that means, eh? What he is transmitting. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's a, a, a theater, probably where they all gathered. And. Um, at Stalwitz Castle. I think that played a role in the uh, Second World War. I don't remember what. Um, there he is with some more, with his mother and some more nobility, also with a red tie and a red hat and a red umbrella. That's the castle again, the uh, Weidmannsheil. It's a nice looking castle. So, this is the old world order, the old vertical role, and um, I re they were very much uh, implicated in the uh, Second World War. And of course, the first one as well, you know, the uh, Prince uh, Emperor William II, who said, well, now, now there is a war, you know, the entire European aristocracy. So here you can see the film The Nobility World Wars on the same channel. I made that a year ago. And um, as I told you in this video here, The Nobility World Wars, we can see here with the, the, the coup by uh, Prince Heinrich XIII, another attempt by the old world order, vertical rule of Pharaoh's nobility to bring back a feudal system. And as usual, by using German nationalists, whom they will dispose of after use, as in the night of the long knives in 1934, when Hitler and together with Pharaoh's nobility had all the German nationalists murdered. Be warned, people, we're sliding back towards a new total control feudal system. So, this here is the Prince Heinrich, the 13th, although it says here um, 17th, okay, this is an ancestor, and Prince Reuss uh, with a Templar's cross and all that. And look at the logo here. We see two times in black the inversed pyramid of death as they had in Auschwitz. And, um, but I guess the the uh, average German nationalists who are all here and listening, and um, they don't even see that. And this guy here, so that's the feudality of the old world order. They're trying to mobilize here 
all the German nationalists, just as it happened in uh, World War II and just before. So we see here the ancient quarrel between Pharaoh's old world order, vertical rule, feudality, whom you can see here, and Pharaoh's new world order, republican, horizontal rule, nicknamed democracy, <laughs> in which both parties try to mobilize the Germanic tribes for their own behalf. So I know for sure that this policeman here, he's initiated in Freemasonry, he's a part of the nobility, and he's assigned with this special task to arrest him and treat him well, because they are of the same bloodline. So he's trying to, you know, to be friendly with them, and uh, because it's a very special task. Normally, when they arrest one of the concept of four, the people, you know, it, it all goes a bit rougher, you know. But uh, here, here's respect, and you can see this, you know. So before there were only three parties, you know, there were German nationalists who are the ones who, who don't have a clue at all what it's all about. Then there was the vertical, the ancient uh, feudality, nobility in Europe as the German emperor who needed two world wars, you know, to try to get back in the saddle or to stay in the saddle against the, the Knights Templars horizontal rule of the Republic. And then there is the, the new system of the democratic horizontal rule by the Knights Templars, who also by the nobility. And nowadays, there are also the immigrants who are the fourth uh, power in this uh, struggle. And they have been especially invited by the New World Order Freemasonry horizontal structures in order to, to make the old feudality and the German nationalists angry and to provoke them and also to have a, a power, you know, as the old feudality, they have the German nationalists at their side and the new horizontal rule, they have nobody at their sides. So they invited the immigrants uh, to have them uh, at their side. So nowadays there are four parties and it's getting really complex. So here they are. This is the organization having done the alleged putsch or coup d'etat. They are called Reichsbürger. Now I'm going to explain you the word first. Reich, it means an empire which comes out of the German word rich. It's almost the same. You take the E away and you get rich. Because an empire, the nobility, they are rich. So this is why an empire became the word actually for rich. And Bürger, it means the citizens, coming also from the nobility and the word Burg, which means a castle. So it means um, the, um, the rich castle or something. And they even have their own passport here. And it says Deutsches Reich. It says the German Empire. And they consist of two parties. First, the Pharaoh's nobility of the old world order, the Red House, the Pertasser of Pharaoh with their vertical rule, and the German people who, who don't understand a thing what it's all about, actually. And the nobility, they see the German people as their property whom they've raised, whom they've taught everything, whom they kept alive, you know, and, and they did, you know, they had the organization, everything, and feeding the people, giving them a job, uh, telling them how to build a nice house and everything. So it is true. I mean, they invested a lot of time in making uh, the European nations in general. And then came the internal quarrel, you know, uh, as I've explained to you, uh, with the Knights Templars who wanted a horizontal rule and um, to also become a part of the cake. Yeah. 
So, and then these ones who are in Freemason lodges and the, the Republic, the democracy of today, they don't like this because then they are going to lose all the power. And this is also one of the reasons for the uh, final solution. It was not because they really, they hated the jaywalkers. No, it was because of the internal struggle. As the, um, the New World Order horizontal rule with Freemasonry and democracy, they were really putting the pressure and, and on the, uh, the, the, uh, the feudality and the German feudality, which was actually the last real feudality in, uh, in Europe. As the French feudality, well, they lost their heads. My ancestors had to flee to uh, first to Prussia and then to South Africa. The English feudality, well, they, um, they made an alliance through the um, Order of the Garter with the uh, Knights Templars and the Constitution. That's why they're called the Constitutional Monarchy. But the German uh, feudality, they refused. And this is why we had two world wars. And so it's, why it's quite complicated. And um, you can only understand it if you're part of the nobility yourself. As I myself was taught with it through all my youth when I had a certain age. And uh, I'm the only one in the world that's explaining it. Yeah? So these guys actually, they are a very tiny minority. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, and moreover, the German nationalists inside the Reichsbürger, they don't even understand what it's all about. I mean, they visited me really because of my videos, which is quite obvious. Um, when they saw the first video, the Pharaoh show 10 years ago, well, I made it 12 years ago. Why well, I, I published it 12 years ago on YouTube, I made it a long time before. And uh, so they came and visited me two or three times. And uh, they also wanted, I had, to, they wanted to sell me also a passport. And in the end they didn't. And they, uh, they almost stole my money, which I paid for it. They finally sent it back and... Yeah, well, I mean, I didn't tell him, but I knew what was going on. But we gave him a nice uh, meal and a, a nice food dinner, actually, two times. And, and um, yeah, they were welcome and we talked, yeah. And, uh, but I, I didn't tell him everything I knew about, you know. And, and these were actually just the German uh nationalists who visited me who, he, they didn't understand a thing about it or the real powers of the german nobility behind it and which is now coming out with prince heinrich the 13th of reuss so yeah well i just try to explain a little bit so this is a minority right they're really no danger but for them, for the, the New World Order, I will also come out of Pharaoh's nobility. It is a danger. The idea is a danger. Nothing more. Just the idea is a danger. Because they want to eradicate the idea of the feudality as it has been replaced by the democracy and the, uh, the horizontal rule of the Republic. So they just want to eradicate the idea through the means of uh, dictatorship, what it is really. And um, so they're, I think they're quite harmless, you know, they, they didn't look dangerous to people who visited me, you know, more like Germans who, who are not happy in the system and they see their land disappearing and they're being lied to by the, uh, by the politicians and they, uh, they're looking for a, an answer. And many of them, well, actually not so many, they thought this was the answer. The German Empire, like during the First World War, and you see, you got all the symbols, and with the crown of the the German Empire, you know, with the um, uh, with this um, obelisk on their helmets and all that of the First World War, and um, so it's just a tiny, tiny, tiny minority. So why all the fuss? So how was that again? with their protecting the minorities all the time. Apart from Pharaoh's nobility in the coup d'etat, 
the people's part of the German Reichsbürger are definitely a min minority in Germany. So why all of a sudden this German white race minority is not being protected by the state and its continuous we must protect the minorities propaganda with which they slam the Europeans and Americans with incessantly and instead of protecting this tiny white minority pharaoh's state over germany even attacks and criminalizes this tiny white minority meaning that the states protecting the minority propaganda is only valid for a certain choice of minorities and not for other minorities because it's not a general law and a sort of decent behavior based upon moral and basic human rights as our masters are selling it to us all no the protecting the minorities politics is an agenda and a demographic tool for their Freemason Ordo Ab Cao of the horizontal rule, which is the same as their predecessor's technique of slave control called divide and rule by Pharaoh's nobility of the vertical rule. So here it says protection of minorities and uh, this is the united nations i'm not going to read it for you i just can't hear their lies anymore you know so you read it yourself well you know what's in it so this is what they want and they call it the königreich deutschland dein ist das reich well, it says yours is the empire well it's not going to be that theirs eh? well we know what you know here you see this uh, downwards pyramid the pyramid of death and the scales of uh, Ma'at, pharaonic stuff, and a crown, and a lot of things, you know. But, you know, basically, we are already in the, in the vertical rule, uh, feudal total control system back. Officially, it's still called a democracy, and... Um, and the horizontal rule and the republic and you know all the blah 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 you know but in reality it's a total control system and uh, so where politicians are really behave like emperors and all this and they really think that i mean look at putin and look at zelensky with the pharaonic hammer and uh, and so forth etc so officially it's still called a democracy and the new world order horizontal rule but basically in reality we're already back in the old world order feudal system of the vertical rule well i've already told you everything about it in my videos the last 12 years i could tell you something new here but that would take too long now other than that my ancestors of the house of saint croix rose du plessis had to escape france due to the new world order revolution and first escaped to prussia before sailing to south africa uh, my surname ross might be somehow related to the house of Royce, but I'm not sure, as I've got all relations with the family, or rather the family casting me out, having been totally excommunicated for the last 41 long and exhausting years. So here you see that name. Royce, 
I have a feeling it might be related, but I'm not sure. And actually, I hope not. So here you see that strange logo again. It looks like a big ant you know, trying to eat us. And here's twice in black, the inverse pyramid of death, just like in Auschwitz. I know for sure that in Berlin, Germany, there is a concentration of Ross surnames, a whole nest, so to speak, and exactly written like this here, H-R-O-S-S. -S. Honoring my Nordic name, Ross, I'll promise you that I will show the kind of bravery of our tribal ancestors and their religion where only the brave will go to paradise. Swissy has terrorized me for 25 years of my life, during which I was forced to live as a coward. For the love of my children and to finish my life's work here with my historical videos for us all and our children's future. Over a period of 25 years, the Swissies deliberately raped my freedom and they raped my human dignity. So Swissy wrote 25 chapters of my life. And I will promise you, Swissy, that I will write the final chapter myself. A Swissy.